Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Survivor Cook Islands Rewatch Countdown Podcast. I don't have the intro down because you may have noticed that I am not Rob Sesternino. I am Taryn Armstrong, and I am here to fill in for Rob as he moves across the country. Uh, and I am here to talk about Cook Islands, the 19th best season of Survivor. Uh, according to you guys, and we'll talk about how wrong you are over the course of this podcast. <laughs> With me to talk about Cook Islands is Matt. How you doing, Matt? I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy to be diving in with you. And you should have just said, Taryn, controversy, 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 because that's what that's <laughs> that's what Jeff probably would have said to intro this. But hey, that's you know, we'll, 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 I don't know if there's any controversy over this season. I don't know. Why no, it's it's like in. the least controversial season ever, right? <laughs> basically, basically. Yeah, yeah, totally. With us to talk about the least controversial season ever as well is Mari. How you doing, Mari? Ooh. <laughs> Hi, Taryn. Hi, Matt. I haven't oh, seen hey, you in uh, forever. Oh my God, Mari. Yeah, I, I knew you looked familiar. I wasn't sure who you were. The <laughs> rustling wrap up. What? Uh, the yes. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the Cook Islands podcast. Um, yeah, to say that this is not like, why are we at 19 here? Like I am mm -mm. befuddled. I am baffled. But I am here to talk about one of my favorite uh, seasons. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I can be here. I'm glad we can add a little bit of light to this controversial season. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I'm honestly, I'm not too surprised that Cook Islands falls around here. It's always been one of my favorite seasons. But it's always been one of those seasons where I say I love it and other people are like, hmm. You're one of those. Rude. Like it's it is a little bit of uh not only a controversial season because of the casting twist format, whatever you want to call it, but also mm -hmm. um I do think that it has its detractors in terms of its entertainment value, which has never really been my issue with it at all. Uh and and I will say, having rewatched it for this podcast, I fell in love with it again. And I feel like it holds up really well. Uh, and I was very excited to to watch it all the way through. It's uh, it has such a great storyline all the way all the way through the season. So many great characters. Uh, there's so much to love here, Matt, about Cook Islands. Yeah. And, the, you know, the thing that I really love about this season is just this great underdog story, which we get to, which. I mean, I knew that I, I had a soft place in my heart for this season. It was my first one watching in real time, something Mari and I have in common. Yep. Um, I think this twist probably has something to do with the fact that so many people watch this for the first season tuning in. But man, this is an amazing season, in my opinion. I ranked it pretty highly, but we'll work through all of the positives and negatives along the way, Taryn. Yes, and I, so all of my my feelings for this uh, season came from the stop, from watching it when it came on. Ooh, what? How many? I don't even want to date. Was like fourteen years ago, 15, 15 years 15 ago. Fifteen years ago. Fifteen years ago, and like Matt said, this was my first live Survivor. Up until up until this one, I was just watching like reruns on the Outdoor Channel, <laughs> and then they announced this, and I watched it live, and. I will say that I can kind of agree a little bit with the detractors on the rewatch because once you know what's going to happen, it is just a pagonging, but it's an, an interesting pagonging. That's the, that's the whole thing. And uh, that's why I think it, it still is ranked very high. That's why I still love it even after the rewatch. But um, I definitely did see a lot more stuff that, uh, that I was like, okay, eh. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but I, I, I love the, just the through storyline, big characters from this season. I could, you could argue that more people should have been brought back from this season to be quite honest. I, I would agree. I would think so. Um, but uh, I, it's, it's a good season. I think it, I think it is a great season that I, I am a little um, saddened that it's not a little bit further up in our right. rankings list here. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is one of those seasons, uh, which happens a decent amount when I'm younger. But when I when I was younger and I watched it for the first time, I was like, <laughs> best season ever, uh, <laughs> because it was so exciting. And, and I I loved I'm a huge Yule uh, fanboy. Mm -hmm. um, I loved Yule. I loved that he was 
uh, like so unabashedly nerdy um, and would talk about right. percentages and elephants and whatever. Yeah. Um, and so watching him was great. Uh, but in addition to that, it was, I think for me, the first time that it really like hammered home different ways of playing the game. And I loved how representative it was at the end, uh, the strategist, mm -hmm. the competitor, um, and really uh, sort of divvying out what, what, it, what it meant to be one of those things. And, and these were two people at the pinnacle of those, uh, those kinds of gameplay, uh, you know, types. Um, and uh, and, it, and it, one of, it was one of those seasons that made me think more about what, what it meant to play the game and, and in what different ways you might play the game. Um, and, uh, and that was always very interesting to me. And, and I, I just I felt uh, it's, everything about Cook Islands is, is so poetic uh yes. it's it, like it follows a storyline that that could have been written uh out as, as opposed to right. something like you know you you play enough reality shows that don't have a script that play out however they want to eventually you're gonna get you know uh a good one you're gonna get shakespeare right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> eventually <laughs> shakespeare will come and that for me was cook islands yeah, and we and just to that point that things could have gone uh, so many different directions, and I love how how the season ended up unfolding. But mm -hmm. just the fact that it didn't go this other direction that was really dark, where we saw the the I two four get taken out at the end was it was pretty mm -hmm. miraculous. We'll dive into to all of that, but I this is this is why I love Survivor to begin with, and while it's evolved so much since, it was nice to kind of have the seeds planted for what the next what uh tw 27 seasons of survivor would be which is a pretty cool thing for this season yeah and i think m most of the things that i i find that i i dislike about the season is more of um what what it lacked when it comes to characters outside mm -hmm. of the main storyline i think it was a fairy book storytelling ending that the underdog triumphs and all of that. And it was really great, but I feel like we missed a lot of actual character development totally. um, because I, I guess that we'll get into it a little bit later, but um, starting off with the premise that it started off, it didn't dive deep enough into any sort of way of, of what they really wanted to go with when you break the tribes up into ethnicities. Like, like breaking the tribes up into ethnicities and then kind of ignoring any type of substance to come from it mm -hmm. kind of just on the rewatch made me think like you guys could have gone deeper like it could have been even deeper because one of my <laughs> one of the things I found after I had to complete the whole rewatch and I was actually watching the reunion I was like Parvati was a boxer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, a model boxer a you didn't model remember boxer. she it, no look, i saw that i saw the type script the chiron said boxer but i was she like she's a boxer we we got none of, we got none of that i, I felt like the actual in-depth character work was a little shoddy no okay i shouldn't say shoddy it was take it took a back seat to the strategic gameplay which is why i'm pretty sure a certain robot loves this season mm -hmm. <laughs> um and the strategic gameplay was entertaining i liked it but i just also feel like we could have gotten a lot more if that makes sense yeah, totally. I think I think my biggest fault with this season, uh, apart from the premise of it, uh, is the editing. Um, and 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 it's it's a different kind of uh, sort of complaint about the editing because I do feel like it was it was well edited in a lot of ways, and I'm going to point those out as we go through. There are a lot of uh, interesting, subtle things that they do to really reinforce the underdog storyline um, yeah. and and make it very compelling. Um, but there are some things that I think they missed. Um, I I believe this is the first twenty person cast they've ever done um, on mm -hmm. Survivor. And I do not think they were ready for it. Uh, I don't think they knew what to do with this many people. Um, and a lot of the characters are under edited. Um, specifically, I mean, the major, major faults, uh, I think, obviously, Becky and Sundra, uh, who are major parts of the entire game. And I realized, and I knew this was the case, you know, ahead of time, but I realized by the end of my rewatch that I was like, 
oh my god we've seen nothing of, of sandra and becky <laughs> like yeah. almost especially sandra who is so under edited um but uh but the under editing of certain characters i think was was a massive uh flaw in terms of um th now i think the editors would probably tell you they didn't need to show those people because we saw the people that mattered and they were very compelling and the storyline was very compelling and i think that's an, a compelling argument um mm -hmm. but i think that this is one of the best casts um yes ever yeah. uh because a lot of people say sure it's got you know great you know main characters but the other people are very forgettable i don't think that's the fault of the other people i think that's the fault mm. of the editing because a lot of these yeah. early characters that go out early or that don't get much of an edit great characters um i mean you know i i could name every single one of them and they each have a yeah. compelling and interesting storyline right. that could have been investigated but was sort of passed over uh in favor of the more long-term storyline which again they only have certain a certain amount of, of time um this is a you know a 16 episode including the reunion season um so they already did have a decent amount of time although one of those episodes is a recap episode uh mm. so right details. i was like what <laughs> yeah and that was spoiler a... alert i didn't watch it i did that... Oh, I did. And that caught me so off guard because I don't, I probably didn't even watch in the real time. Who knows? <laughs> oh my gosh. But no, this is the one thing that I, I think is so interesting about this season is that up top, when they start out, they do touch on so many of the stereotypes. Like here's what people think when they think of Asian people, when they mm -hmm. think of black people, when they think of like white people, even there, all this comes up. And I think that that was good that they started out by stating the stereotypes i think a lot of it might have been like uh like risk management like okay we know what you're gonna write in the in the blogs were blogs a thing back in 2006 probably yeah, yeah. um yeah and zenga pages and myspace mm, but yeah. you know i, I think i think that jeff they had were... a blog at some point i mean by yeah. by oh, heroes totally. versus villains jeff had a blog i read it every episode yeah they, they they shut that down at some point he was probably getting a little spicy <laughs> with that but talked about how know, disappointed he was with cole be uh read it in the blog all of us all of us there jeff, jeff thank you for that blog we, we still think about it every single day um but you know it it's just like they they dress the stereotypes um but they did that and didn't really dive into like what they mean they didn't dive into a lot of the cultural conversations and i'm sure we'll talk about some of those things but uh -huh. i when i think about this season and the cast i think of pro wrestling too, because in pro wrestling, not everyone's a main eventer. Not everyone is, yeah. you know, is, has their name in lights. A lot of people, their job is to just kind of be there and fill a spot. And, you know, it depends what you want out of your survivor seasons, not the most exciting cast all around, but I think everyone did their job. And I remembered all of their names, which probably says something about this season. Cause I can't say that for every season. Yeah. Well, it Oh, I, sorry. Mm -hmm. I I do I do think that um I mean to to talk about this. So this is this season yeah. mm -hmm. is divided by race. Um yes. and uh and there are uh four tribes. Four um, tribes, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um but 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 to you to you guys' point, they don't really dive into it. it's they they touch on it in a very surface level way and the fact that they don't really mm -hmm. dive into it and that you know jeff brings up in the reunion um you know nate talks about how he's called a race trader and, and all of these things about like these much deeper uh conversations that uh i assume were being had on the island and i assume you know were being had uh while it was airing uh they don't really dive into it which really adds to the perception that i have that i think is obviously the truth which is that this is just a gimmick that they were using um to attract yes. to get headlines um which is a, a really like uh, morally in my opinion <laughs> not great thing to do um now I do think that uh, one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite casts of all time is because it is one of the most diverse casts. That is the mm -hmm. sort of like great byproduct of this gimmick. Um, but but the fact that they really had no intention of diving into any of these issues uh, when this is the forefront, this is their gimmick of the season and they're not really even going to dive into it. Uh, it yeah. really it really rubs me the wrong way. So mm -hmm. I, I so. 
you divide the tribes into to four four tribes by ethnicity. We have the Hiki tribe, which is black, African American. Uh, we have Rara, which is Caucasian or white. We have Puka, who is Asian American, and you have Aitu, which is like Latino. So my my problem with this, not only if it's if it's just a gimmick, it was like it was a gimmick, and then they were like, oh God, but we have to kind of like make sure nothing happens. <laughs> so I think that yeah. th that was the panic that made it so um, they didn't they didn't address anything. They tried to address everything while addressing nothing. So it came up to just a, a very surface level, marginalized view of race and ethnicity. And not only that, this is the difference between casting a diverse cast and again, telling diverse stories. On BB Can 9, we not only got a diverse cast, we mm -hmm. got diverse stories. People like me who are not like big into Survivor at the time, when you are, when they announced, oh, the tribes are going to be split up by race, I said, great, finally mm -hmm. some diversity. Like that was my yeah. first thought. My first thought wasn't, this is unethical. My first thought was finally, we, everybody gets a shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think that is that is a good way to kind of view it if you want to put it out there. But Survivor never really addressed what they wanted to get out, you know, of that gimmick. And like Taryn said, it might have just been a surface level gimmick. And before we move on, before we move on, Matt, my only other thing yeah. is not only do you break the tribes up into race, but then you don't even let it simmer long enough that, you know, it doesn't become about race. Like survival, Survivor literally introduced tribalism into the season and, and then let it like thought that they could, I guess they thought that they could mitigate it by swapping early, but they- By didn't. integrating. Yeah, by yeah, by that's the word early. that Jeff Probst used. They, they integrated, which is a very, very <laughs> so much racial, yes, rich, racially charged term. But, but that's they, my thought process is they, especially on the rewatch, they did it so early that it it kind of throws it all out of the window of actually integrating because now they definitely have to rely on their original tribes, which shocker is also <laughs> they're the same ethnicity of them. So th does that make sense? How do you introduce tribalism? I think you try, you're kind of trying to prove the point that, oh, anybody can win. You can be diverse. It's who you, who you are, not what you look like. But then you don't give those tribes enough time to create bonds within them, to create like people animosity within them in order to that once they do merge or integrate or swap, whatever you want to put mm -hmm. it would actually um break up those tribes you, you do you does that yeah. make sense y'all yeah that makes that makes sense and i i think that there's just a bigger point, you know, I, I think it's fair to say confidently that this was not meant to be an educational effort. That's not what no. Survivor was going for. And it's fine. It's a TV show. We get that. But at the same time, um, I, I think where the season has those gaps that we're talking about is just when it comes to production and when it comes to the mm. editors and even when it comes to casting. Um, but casting is a whole different story just to focus on the edit you can't expect, and I have no clue what the breakdown of the editor's demographic breakdown of them is, but you can't expect people who aren't necessarily representative of those backgrounds to be able to tell stories effectively of those backgrounds. And I think mm -hmm. one of the really sad things to me to jump ahead is that one of the last things we hear in the season in that final tribal is just Yule talking about representation and wanting to represent Asian Americans and I don't think production was listening as they edited that. I don't know what happened. Maybe someone moved on after they they put that in the episode, but I just don't feel like production was really listening to these conversations and diving into um, the meat of what they were talking about. And at the same time, again, it ended up being very surface, but you know, the we we could have gotten into so many of these beautiful. Um, the, just the beautiful dynamics that were coming up. I think of Cowboy and the Bad Wind, for example. Yes. And that's something that still to this day, people make fun of when in reality, if you just go on Google, you'll see that that is something that is just a traditional, traditional approach, a traditional form of healing, which Survivor couldn't take 10 seconds to have Cowboy let us know that, or were those 10 seconds, you know, better used 
I, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even want to think what they chose over some of those more meaningful cultural conversations, but mm. it's, it, it's, it's rough to watch the, the edit. And, and there are so many, um, so many of these small moments throughout the season, even where race does come up and it echoes back and um, they just don't dive into it, which I don't know if it feels lazy. I think they thought they probably did a good job with it, but uh, they, I think they thought wrong, guys. Yeah, it's 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 also, I think, uh, yeah, obviously a very tough spot to put your contestants in uh, totally. where like and this is something that's touched on very early in the season. And it's uh, sort of repeated throughout uh, that, you know, I now have to represent my my race my background like where i come from um and you know like this team needs to represent and in the case of some of the tribes they were you know from very different backgrounds very different cultures uh but they were sort of all grouped together um mm -hmm. and, into one and they're all supposed to represent one thing um and uh and that that pressure uh, must have been enormous, more so than uh, than normal, uh, which is already pretty enormous uh, if you are somebody that is normally unrepresented. Uh, so, yeah. um, like, I, I I do think it's it wasn't entirely fair on the producers, and I don't think they fully understood uh what they were doing um mm -hmm. because i you know and now i think they understood what they were doing in the sense that i think that they knew it would cause big headlines i think they knew it would be controversial i think totally. they knew that they were doing something that was maybe a little morally gray um, but i don't think they understood the nuance of what they were doing and i think that's part of why they didn't know how to uh, represent it on the screen yeah and and but I also have to kind of disagree in a sense because we've heard from a, from Big Brother, Survivor, a whole bunch of different reality TV shows where normally the person who might be the one to two minority in mm -hmm. the house on the island say they still feel that pressure. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? No matter where you're you're going, if you're on TV as a minority you are going to feel that pressure to represent your, you know, your race because it's unfair. And that's how, that's how it's perceived. That's how it's perceived yeah. in regular society when you go into your office as well. So the, I thought the, the at least the good thing here was mm -hmm. you have four other people who look just like you, you know, you know, quote, are, are right. supposed to be in your tribe and know like at least a little bit of where you come from and and again that's me looking at this twist as a positive twist because mm -hmm. it is it it forced them to do diversity it forced them and again they could have used it optimally by also sticking in those tribes a little bit longer each tribe had some divisions in it you know what i'm saying like um Flicka was on the outside on on the Raro tribe. She was just really not like gelling with a lot of people and, and Jonathan to a certain extent as well. Ozzy had them throw a whole challenge to get rid of, of Billy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like uh, we, uh, Cowboy just was not generationally like the other people on his tribe. And we, if they had stuck in those tribes for maybe two more tribals, those type of um, rifts could have gotten open, opener. Like it, the the black people might have lost. Uh, I'm gonna say black people. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Hiki tribe could have lost two more times, but at least it would have bonded them together, or or you know, caused a, a rift. If we had kept in those tribes a little bit longer, once they once they swapped, it might have been easier for them to find other people to um, make a more. Uh, alliances with but because you know you only you were only with those people for seven days you know what i'm saying you are now put on a tribe where it's you know this tribe this tribe and this tribe people group into their minor into their ethnic background for necessity that is like the main mm -hmm. thing that's why on big brother or on uh, survivor when there's only one or two black people there's only one or two um minorities or underrepresented groups they 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 um they bond together because it's out of necessity and that's what i'm saying how they created tribalism in their show and and and, and because they created that because they put them in there um first and then didn't even give them a chance to kind of like not like each other then they automatically went back to what they knew 
which just happen to be people who are ethnically like them. I, I just find it really funny. I just find it very hilarious yeah. that they accidentally created segregation in their show, but then tried to pretend like it didn't happen. Every every little snippet that we got about race um, after the swap was, oh, it this shows that it doesn't matter what your skin color is, you can do it. It's like, they made sure to put that every single chance they got, but they, you cannot tell me there weren't other conversations happening on that beach. Mm-hmm. And we saw, we didn't see any of them. Like we saw none of them. So yeah. I, that's just my, that's just my two cents, like watching the rewatch and thinking like this could have been executed so much yeah. better. And that's what I'm just angry. And then again, we got no backstories. Like the only backstory we got pre-merge really was Christina being a cop, which was awesome. I loved hearing that. You know what I'm saying? Again, I don't mm-hmm. know the occupations of half of these people. Where did that come from? Like, why didn't we yeah. get any more background? And I, I really think they were so focused on not trying to step in on a landmine that they created <laughs> that they just they just took that part of the story out. Yeah. And I I think to build on that too, just to talk about the casting a little bit, I can't, I have a hard time truly knocking it because these might've been the most interesting characters ever. And we just didn't really get to see that, didn't get to see the character development, like you were saying, but just to put um, another light on it, something that I can imagine would be challenging for anyone is being told you are the representative. So Maybe you're careful about what jokes you're making. Maybe you're careful about uh, how you're representing because the way that it's edited could potentially be really offensive. And it's funny because as a Black person, like looking at the Hiki tribe, the Black people, as Maurice, <laughs> as we said, um, but, you know, looking at that tribe, um, I remember loving and just laughing with them at the start of the season as that was Mm -hmm. established. But something about when I was watching it this time, I was thinking to myself, like, what about all those people who don't know Black people? Like, we're not just going around making ML, uh, Martin Luther King references, MLK references. We're not uh, just people who don't like being told what to do. As I think Nate mentioned, like, I don't think anyone really truly loves to be told what to do or any group. And so this, these, this dynamic puts people in a really tough situation, but especially for 2006 in a world where like, what else is on TV? Flavor of Love was on TV. <laughs> um, I was also watching that. And if you're, you know, we don't have those deep conversations happening in 2006, which uh, just makes things that much more difficult, which is, you know, it, it, it's, it seems like it's hard to navigate. I can't knock people for being maybe a little bit more boring than they, they would have been if you put them in another season where they didn't have that added pressure. Yeah, uh, I I do, though, agree with Mari in the sense that uh, I do think there are some positives that come from uh, some some byproducts that are positive that come from this. And and again, I think that is that uh, and Jeff mentions it in the reunion. You make sure to mention it, uh, that this is the most diverse cast uh, in the history of the show. And I think it will (laughs) remain. I think it will retain that title. Uh, I know that Fiji right after is a very similar makeup. Mm -hmm. um, But uh, but, you know, after that. Uh, they kind of go back to the regular formula for a while. Yeah. Um, what does that I, say that you won this one and Earl won Fiji when you have diverse cast? Yeah, uh, mm, <laughs> yeah. There's some. I have questions, but I would I would just say to that point that the thing that stands out to me looking at this season. 15 years later now is just the fact that the conversations that they were either attempting to have or starting to have or brushed over, those are conversations that our world needs now. Like a year yeah. ago, you know, everything after the death of George Floyd mentioned, just explicitly mentioning that there were so many conversations where people said, we haven't talked about race before. We haven't, you know, just taken it. the huge dive yeah. into this. And to me, that's one of the things that's so powerful about this season, because I don't think that it's an educational piece that I would put in front of a college class, like watch this and learn about race. But at the same yeah. time, it could really be used to to accompany a lot of really meaningful conversations and mm-hmm. to kind of be a jumping off point, which we still need. And I wish more people loved this season. Oh, well, I'm glad that we get to talk about this now, but I wish more people loved this season so that they would go in and rewatch and talk about some of the things that a lot of us just haven't had conversations about around this season and in general. Yeah. And I mean, 
my my thought process is i i still feel like they sh they could have if we're going to get this narrative this this you know continuous narrative of mm -hmm. no matter where you come from you can do it which is true yeah. but you if you're gonna explore it explore it all you know what i'm saying explore right. every single second of it like when matt's saying like oh when the when the, when the hiki tribe got back to their um their tribe they were making lots of jokes it was funny they're like we're all from the city we don't know how to do any of this yeah. and it was really funny uh, sundra and rebecca had a great rapport and they were really like opened up. And one of the things I saw on the rewatch once with the swap happened and we got, got a whole lot less of Sandra, it, it just really seemed like she did uh, her demeanor switched a little bit um, to a little bit more quieter once being on that, that, that uh, a new tribe or like again with the puka tribe with the with cowboy talking about how he's he was an immigrant if i remember correctly he wasn't a first generation the rest of the rest of them were first generation so or or you know or you know they weren't directly immigrants um their parents were maybe immigrants and they were born here you know whatever the makeup of, was of, of the rest of the puka tribe um but like that that's something that I, I wish they had delved more into because Cowboy just, they just kind of said, oh, the, the jokes are offensive. And, and yeah. Yule was like, well, you know, if you do this, then they'll apply it to all of us. And, and I mean, I don't, uh, I don't prescribe to that because you should never, I feel like no matter what race you are, you should never have to um, kind of like, be the you spokesperson know, yeah not not just be the spokesperson but kind of just dumb yourself down to be palatable mm. i i'm not for yeah. that um i'm not i'm not for trying to please everybody i feel like if you are yourself and you're your authentic self like cowboy you should be appreciated for your authentic self but just like you'll point it out that's for him that's not something that's cool he does he didn't feel like that that representation was good and i mean that is something that i'm pretty sure a lot of asian americans have a lot of discussion about within their communities and it would have been really nice to get a few more tribals of that or just a few more tribals of just them kind of trying to hash that out maybe more explanation maybe cowboy explaining that like we got we got none of it i i felt like and i just feel like we could have we could have gotten way more stories, but they, they were afraid. I think they were really afraid of what to show out there. Um, and it, and it's kind of sad, but I, I like this cast. Uh, this cast is, is amazing. Um, I think we have a lot of people that I, I wish we kind of seen back. Like we got a, a, a I know we got a plenty of returnees, but I think there's a lot more people that could have returned. I agree. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, ethnicity aside, tribes aside, I think that um, the gameplay was stellar. I don't think you get more top notch for what we saw with the gameplay. Um, and again, the only thing missing was a little bit more of a human element. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, talking about the cast, um, there are what we got Candace, Penner, Parvati, Ozzy, Yule are all returning players. Um, mm -hmm. Candace came back. Candace has played three times. Penner's played three times. Parvati four times. Uh, oh, Ozzy okay. four times. Four. Yule now twice. Like uh, this is a heavy hitter, uh, all new player cast to, in terms of returning players. And like Parvati, one of the legends of the game. Yule, a legend of the game. Ozzy. Mm -hmm legend enough right uh yeah. like uh he, oh, he has a reputation as the, that caught co the competition challenge beast uh penner is yeah. is still one of the you know a top character of the show mm -hmm. um and uh and and there really are i think a lot of other uh interesting um players from the bunch i mean i, I thought nate was really interesting um we didn't get a yeah. ton from him but he was a Why great didn't character we get any more nate i don't like he was, and also he, he was kind mm. of like, he, I saw him pop up on my TV other places after his season, but not on, not on survive. Maybe he didn't want to come back. Let's just, I'm yeah. going to assume. And, and Nate has, Nate I mean, it sounded like he had a rough things. experience in the reunion. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I, like J Jenny, like, why didn't we get more Jenny? Oh my God. Uh, Jenny yes. ruthless. Yes. Yes. Savage. <laughs> Jenny. Those words. Oh, synonymous. Oh. I love Jenny. Come on. And then we get and, more Jenny here and more Jenny later. Like, <laughs> yes. Uh, Maybe yes. who knows? It could happen still. 
It's not it's very true. Very true. Yeah. And Cece went out really early, but I really liked her <laughs> energy. Like, mm-hmm. oh, and she was beautiful. Oh my God. She, she was, was a, me- she was a messy queen. She was a very messy queen. She, uh, we, we will we will definitely dive into and probably have an hour of this podcast about Billy yeah. Garcia <laughs> and the play by play of that situation. But she is the one who decided to actually ask Candace about yeah, that situation as if she needed to. So, yeah. ooh, Cecilia, thank you. Oh yeah. man, it's 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 really fun. I I mean, again, I think the cast is just really excellent. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, and and that's part of what keeps it interesting to me all the way through. I mean, if I'm looking, you know, when I think about Cook Islands or prior to this rewatch, when I thought about Cook Islands, um, you know, the memory is the I two four, uh, yeah. <laughs> and and the comeback, and then the fl- flip penner, uh, Aussie immunity streak, uh, final tribal. And uh, it, it surprised me when I rewatched this that pretty much all of that takes place um, in the final like four episodes. Um, yeah. And there's a whole 10 episodes prior to that uh, that yeah. I thought, considering the fact that I had mostly forgotten about the storyline there, would be kind of a drag to get through. But I actually did enjoy uh, most mm-hmm. of that experience. I feel like the pre-merge was actually much better than I would have imagined, um, given the fact that I didn't remember a lot of it. And I think <laughs> a lot of that comes down to even prior to the mutiny, OG I2 uh, was was really fun. Um, the, the dynamics on that tribe were really interesting. Now, Raro, uh, eh, uh, you know, ups and downs, had some interesting characters, the strategy a little bit less interesting to follow. I think the ep- uh, the, the episodes where they go to tribal uh, are probably the the worst of the season for me. Um, but uh, but I did have fun in this pre-merge. Uh, yeah. And and I think that, uh, again, like a, a lot of these characters are still a big presence, uh, have a big presence early on. You have a lot of cowboy, you have Billy Garcia, you have, you know, the rise and fall of JP, you have... Uh, yeah. Jenny coming into power a little bit. You've got uh, Nate and Parv. You've got uh, Flicka and uh, and Cowboy. Cowboy. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like here in this uh, in this premier. Yeah, and I yeah. for for Raro, that's the that's the sad thing because um, which I I'm, I can't even refer to them as original Raro. There's a swapped Raro. I don't know. Swapped Raro. Um, yeah. <laughs> integrated Raro. <laughs> Integ- integrated. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. Like, I think there was so much there that we didn't see because we didn't get an explanation as to what was going on until they were at that double elimination. Like, because Jenny, Jenny doesn't, if I, if I remember correctly, Jenny doesn't point out the, the Raro five, the five that they thought they had until right before she leaves. And I'm like, why did we not hear any of this? Because as I'm watching my TV, I'm screaming at them as to why they're not voting out pinner you know what i'm saying why aren't they voting out candace mm-hmm. who just mutiny like why are they you know i was wondering why were they voting out stephanie like what were what were the reasons why are you voting out stephanie if they're original if there's three original hiki you know what i'm saying and it's because not only did we get that man versus woman split initially because that was one of the only things they really showed us we got that man right. versus woman um split but after the jp vote out we then got the formation of that five but we we got nothing from them until they're they're dismantling and so that's why when you're when nate and when jenny are like okay get rid of stephanie okay get rid of rebecca you're like why why there's no this doesn't make sense you're leaving an original tribe whole intact here (laughs) yeah it is very confusing yeah and they don't give a lot of explanation and i feel like part of it is because ultimately it won't matter to the overall story and they want you to focus on and root for i2 uh they don't want you to be too invested in raro but um but i was definitely that again the the under editing um of uh of raro was definitely uh a, a, a sore spot i think um in this yeah, and, I, and yeah. I think it also added to what nate said he experienced after the show because if you're looking at its surface level you're like, Nate, why are you letting them vote off your original tribe? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Why are you letting them vote off your original tribe? You guys came in three strong, but we we, we don't get the explanation until it until it's done. 
Yeah, and there was there was definitely some stuff there. I think Jeff pointed out one tribal council. Well, you know, you're getting rid of this person for this reason, and this one for this one, this one for like, what's what are you doing? Which, in retrospect, I don't feel like that logic that there's separate logic for how you're getting rid of people <laughs> ages well because that's just survivor nowadays even though you know we go back to survivor and you can vote people out by in alphabetical order if you want maybe that's what jeff was hoping for there but you know i i i guess there's just some some moments i think of nate in particular just because you mentioned him where he was really going after stephanie and it was like (laughs) why are we getting out the people who are strong? Are we getting out the people who are weak? I just don't feel like there was a true theme throughout the season of why people were being targeted or like even within individuals, why they were targeting certain people. So that it felt like it was all over the place and like we yes. didn't have enough information was what it really seemed like. Yeah, and honestly, like the the Brad one to me was so, yeah. it felt so, like- Oh my God, f- Like yes. out of nowhere, it's like he sat at, or he did the puzzle in a challenge and it was like, that was so annoying. You're yeah. good at puzzles, <laughs> excuse me? No, you should have been <laughs> swimming. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, we hate Brad now. Yeah, We're exactly. voting Brad out. Like. <laughs> Yeah. When did this happen? And and so at, as part of our our light reading outside of the yes. show itself, um, Candace said in in one of her like interviews uh, during quarantine that one of the reasons that she mutinied um, was so that she knew where I 2s plan was going. Like her when she was on I two, her Jonathan Yule and Becky were tight, and mm-hmm. she knew what their plan was to do next. Was once they get to the merge, they wanted to get back to Brad. Yeah. She said one of the reasons she wanted to mutiny was so that she could uh, put that in the ear and kind of get brad gone and i'm like oh well that's makes that's a lot nice more sense yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and and i but actually it, i actually noted that that when when yule finds out that brad was uh, uh voted out he has a very yeah, like exactly mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah yeah Oof. um man all right well let's no let's, motivation let, yeah let's, the let's surrounding let's, <laughs> let's dive in a little right. bit deeper here um and maybe uh maybe kind of go through some of these episodes um you know, we start we start the season off. I always love a good um, opening where uh, they're like scrambling for things. Um, <laughs> we see Penner steal some chickens, uh, and and then and then Flicka just accidentally lets them go. Uh, and and Penner's, I don't I don't know if I can forgive her. <laughs> she screwed up my chickens. They were those, mad chi- about those, chickens. those chickens those chickens really had they should have been their own character cast <laughs> on this season because those chickens were were like at one point Jonathan is called chicken man I think which totally made me think of chicken George and I yeah. wondered like I don't know I don't I don't know if if who's better Jonathan Penner or chicken George I'm, I'm still wondering about that at this point so. Yeah, it, them scrambling. I love a good marooning. That's what they call mm-hmm. it, right? I, yeah. I love a good marooning. Yeah, and, we're, we're <laughs> Jeff's cutting his promo on the boat as yeah. everyone freaks out, like very casual. It's, yeah, it, I admire I, that. I do love. I love that setup, and then I also I do like that. You know, it often does sort of reveal some early character traits, like that that Penner does steal some chickens uh, from the mm-hmm. other tribe, and um, like and and Yule was you know trying to be a little more like proper about it um and uh, i can man, never tell what's going chicken. on it, like, no you have to you have to look it's just Mari, to me. <laughs> there are a number of moments where i would recommend going back and just slowing it down to like really point five speed if not a little bit slower just break it down yeah. play by play moment by moment you know the only thing is, i remember was is one sundra sundra holding the machete like i'm like girl please. <laughs> yeah i didn't like that somebody <laughs> but other than that i love the marooning i love uh like immediately you get billy talking about isn't this the opposite like we're rowing <laughs> said my my family uh rode uh she's from puerto rico so my mm. family rode so i wouldn't have to why are, why are we here um we again he, he had a lot of jokes i again it, it was interesting to see interesting to see how each culture kind of dealt with their like their jokes within each other like mm-hmm. like um for Hiki, 
speaking as a black person myself, shock or surprise, it wasn't, it wasn't like uh, surprising to me that we, that they used humor to kind of be like, yo, what are we doing? Why did we decide this? Why are we on an island? All of us are from the city. We don't know what's going on. We'll figure it out, you know? And again, seeing like uh, 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 Puka's tribe, like cowboy, you need to cool it <laughs> they were like immediately yeah. cowboy c- cracked a joke on the on the um the paddle thing they're like nah, 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 no 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 jokes not. no That's jokes we, right we don't now. know like we don't know these editors we don't know what they're gonna do with this please just don't don't joke don't mess this up for us yes. like yes that was the energy at that from from the boat ride over from exactly jump yeah from the so jump. i i love seeing them all um interact and of course uh raro tribe original raro they're like uh poverty was like is this kosher (laughs) (laughs) breaking people up by ethnicity i I don't know if this is right (laughs) yeah oh my god part i just want to point out poverty from the very beginning and i and i look i don't know how they go about filming everyone on the boats but poverty had a very serious like game time look on that boat she like she was ready to to play or she looked ready to play that game I don't know but I I just want to point out I could see everything that these editors love about poverty Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. the very beginning from the from the jump and (laughs) you know we we I mean it makes sense that she was she was brought back but wow like poverty is such a star I don't know where they found her and I mean, I think she, she was she was one of the main characters of the season. And I think she mm-hmm. got, you know, a lot of confessionals over the course of the season. I think part of why she's not the superstar that she is in future seasons is just because, you know, the Adam Candace romance, which starts early in this first episode, uh, is a little bit overshadowing on top of the mutiny. There's Penner there. There's Yule. There's Ozzy. There's so many other huge characters. Um, and ultimately, she does fall a bit short. And so a, a lot of people find her uh, first season a little bit uh, lackluster, a little bit like uh, underwhelming, especially if they saw her first in future seasons or if they're just remembering, like, I don't remember her standing out a little bit like Boston Rob in Marquesas, um, mm-hmm. where like you might not remember that he was a big presence, but you, you go back and watch. Boston Rob was a big presence on Marquesas and Parvati yeah. is a big presence here in Cook Islands. Yeah. and. There are definitely moments where you can see uh, and hear um, this sort of like very uh, intelligent, emotionally intelligent sort of like uh, you know, uh, vocabulary that she uses, the way that she talks about the game and, and how she uh, you know plays with other people. She's very playful in confessionals, but when she's serious about mm-hmm. manipulating others, um, I, I'm getting I, I was getting tastes of what I was hearing in Winners at War, um, you know, yeah. 15 years later. Uh, it's yeah. it's all there. Yeah. yeah and I mean, and- she's sorry <laughs> no go I, I mean there's so much to say about poverty right I mean, and i think yeah. one, of, one of the things that that just comes up with the, i don't know if she was being positioned as this incredible cunning game player yeah. and i think that you could talk about gender in that case you could talk about who they were trying who they were really ascribing that character to i, think I mean we got way too we, much adam oh oh, oh. yeah <laughs> i I don't look, I don't know if Adam had to be there in the first place, but that's another story. Um, but Parvati, man, I like I I think that when you talk about people and their first season and how they did on their first season compared with others, and you know, you're thinking they weren't as great. What, what isn't that the way it's supposed to be? People are supposed to get better at this over time and show up better. I mean, you're not watching Star Wars like, oh man, the first step, the first movie was was so much better than the rest. Like that's how you get things canceled. So <laughs> uh, thank you, Parvati and Yule and Penner and Ozzy and Candice for actually getting better over time. Actually, I, yeah. I don't know if, if Yule and Yule and Ozzy truly got better over time, but that's that's for debate. Well, that and that's the well, thing. It's, it's hard when you start at such a high point, right? Exactly. That's it. <laughs> Parvati was lucky to get the camera time she did. Like they, you know, they clearly favored her. They like giving her the camera time because, um, you know, obviously they they like giving her the camera time, but they didn't give her like a lot of the strategic edit that you you know we said we could point out there or the social social edit that um that she got in further seasons, but at least she got picked because again, Ginny is sitting right there, (laughs) purple. You know what I'm saying? Sundra is sitting right there. Becky, like mm-hmm. even Jeff said, Jeff said, oh, I thought you were just a tag along until I watched the episode. And <laughs> like, yeah, you'll be like, Jeff, well, even in the episodes. Um... Yeah, like, 
it, so I mean, so I'm I'm glad Parvati. Uh, she's a great player, and she she got the camera time that you know a lot of others just did not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, also in this first episode, this is honestly one of the things I remembered most from Cook Island. Is one of the things that stood out to me as a kid when I watched the season was uh, Matt, as you mentioned, Cowboys tech uh, technique, um, sort of um, that uh, to to get rid Bad of headaches. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, that's what it was. Um, because I got headaches a lot as a child. <laughs> and so um, I tried to use this on myself multiple times. Uh, and I was, and I, 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 honestly, I don't remember now because, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, I'll say I felt I like it worked. I was inspired by this too after um, watching back, I think, some point last year. And I don't know the technique. I don't think I was doing it, but yeah. I know I wasn't doing it authentically or the right way, but <laughs> it, I, I, I could see how this could help your headaches. At so. the very least, it made the bridge of my nose hurt, uh, which distracted me from my head hurting. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you never know, whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, but this is sort of our introduction to cowboy. Uh, and it's, it's, all, it's, it always is funny to me watching Brad, uh, like wearing the hat, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where did he get that hat from? Yeah. Who are you trying to look you for? Like, he's he's just like going up to, mark. <laughs> I just picture him going up to production. Like, please, please. Like, could you, I just need a hat. I can't, I can't be on camera like this. My, is he a model too? Probably His modeling career. Fashion, so, yeah, yeah let's he said go with he was that. a fashion um director or something. Yes. Again, we don't know because they didn't we don't tell know. us. <laughs> <sighs> um, uh -huh. all right. Well, uh, we are also going to be introduced to uh, you know, one of the twists of the season. Obviously, the season prior to this was Exile Island. Um, the first uh, time that Exile Island was introduced, uh, the season prior to that was Guatemala, where the Immunity Idol was first introduced. Um, and of course, the uh, first real version of it, the, the God Idol version of it that Terry Dietz had, uh, was in the previous season. So this is nothing too new for, uh, for Cook Islands. It's still a new concept, um, but uh, it is the second time they're going to do it. Um, every uh, immunity challenge, somebody is going to be sent to Exile Island where there is a hidden immunity idol. This immunity idol will be good for playing after the votes are read. Um, and it is good up until the final four, which is even more powerful than you might uh, initially assume, because this is also going to be the first season where we're going to have a final three instead of a final two. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Penner is going to be the first person to uh, get sent to exile island uh they picked the chicken man uh for stealing those chickens yeah. and they yeah. really did not have the strategy down quite yet about exile island because they still looked at it like a punishment um but having the first crack at this immunity idol was actually massive uh and uh and could have been very good for penner but he is not going to be able to figure it out with just one clue remember when idols were harder to find than uh just wandering <laughs> around in the jungle they actually had to dig in spots uh based on clues mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i and he so he since he loses the challenge they get to pick who goes to exile and, and immediately nate and Seku <sighs> they jump out they're like oh, yes okay, okay okay chicken man. what was yeah, that yeah chicken man and then yeah and then know. jeff jeff is like i noticed the men uh mm -hmm. going out uh and making this decision with no consultation honestly i've watched this so many times yeah. i okay what i think happened i assume happened is that seiku and nate just stepped out they were like we need to get they a better did. look we need to get we need to we need to make sure that we know who's who because we they mm -hmm. how are they supposed to know who's and then the women just didn't come like sundra they didn't, Becca, they and, didn't and, seem and Rebecca, bothered yeah no, we just they lost yeah <laughs> <laughs> they were just like we're gonna stand over here and let you make that decision you think and then we it care who goes to thing. exile island right now we don't even know any of these people it's just pick it out of a hat <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, i think it's just the type of thing that happened and it happened so fast that they probably didn't even know what was going on and then it it kind of uh it helped further divide the tr the tribe even though i have a feeling that the gender I'm divide already, which is a yeah. whole other thing to talk about with this season the different the gender divides on the different tribes yeah um, but the gender div divide definitely um didn't help uh, nate and seku's case there yeah, it's and interesting I think nate and Sorry, I was Go just ahead. gonna say I think Nate and Seiko picked Pinner. It was a good 
good job because all it was is it, they gave them something to go off of you know mm-hmm. maybe they felt like it made amends with puka that they sent their the chicken sealer <laughs> the to, chicken man. to <laughs> exile island yes uh, well it's interesting that uh you know with with five people five person tribes um obviously the gender divide is going to be uh imbalanced um and it, yeah. that is mm-hmm. the case here on um on mm-hmm. uh, hiki uh mm-hmm. where they mentioned that there is a, a gender divide. It is uh, Rebecca and uh, and Sandra um, mm-hmm. versus uh, Seku and Nate, with Stephanie a little bit in the middle uh, because she yeah. feels like she's she's Rebecca and Sandra are closer uh, to each other than they are to her, and so they kind of Nate and Seku see her as potentially the person they can get to flip, um, mm-hmm. but that's that's not going to uh, end up happening here. Yeah, Stephanie is, uh, Sandra and Rebecca are both from New York. So they said they instantly had a connection. You could see it. They spent most of their time together from what we saw in the first episode. And they just really clicked off the bat. Stephanie um, said that she felt a little bit outside of that. But Seiku and Nate, just the both of them are just kind of like, (laughs) between Seiku being bossy and yet sleepy. And then Nate- just being Nate, it was it was gonna be a divide. No I what. I no. feel like we missed out on the Seiku and Nate duo. Uh, like really? I wish that we could have mm. seen more. I I really I thought they were fun. I liked. I I would have wanted yeah. to see more of Seiku personally. Yeah, yeah I mean, there would have yeah. been a lot a lot more uh, laughs. And I you know what? I do wonder what Black History references we would have gotten beyond the first episode <laughs> if he'd been around. That maybe it would have been an educational season. Yeah, maybe bring him back. I, There's still time. I, I just want to say that uh, Stephanie. I really like Stephanie. It, um, she reminds me of like my mom, my aunt, every like black woman in my life. I, I loved how um, she brought that auntie energy to the island <laughs> <laughs> personally. And I just think I it, you can't simplify it like Nate. Nate says, oh, black people don't like to be told what to do. No, they just didn't like Seku telling them what to do because well, yeah. it was very annoying. <laughs> it's, I mean, one of my favorite Seku bits is that he's like taking charge. He's like, let me start this fire. And then he's like, he does like three strikes Oh he's like, I got to take a nap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's, well, like on a, on a more serious note, I was wondering, was he, the word that they threw around was lazy, which is something that we've seen given to a number of black men mm. on Survivor, you know? And I think you know, it's just, it's like, what, how could you, you, you didn't even put that much effort in to make the fire, dude. Like, come on. I don't think he was that. Maybe he, I think he it, probably put in a little bit more effort. Like, yeah. I want to give him more credit. Yeah. The edits, I, the edits are often exaggerated. I'm sure he did more than three strikes. He was probably uh, at it for like a half hour and so. then decided. But I, and I think, but I think part of it too is that like he was also kind of like trying to take charge, uh, but then also mm-hmm. backed up. Um, but you know, you, you can never fully trust the, uh, the edits on these because, because no. again, it might, might have been the perception of the other uh, other players that he was um you know he was maybe lazy or whatever but that doesn't mean it was the reality and and because he was voted out it sort of you know yeah, victor's and, right and again, history and so uh you know they sort of portray it the way mm-hmm. that the people who voted him out thought it was and he i think he had very good points when he originally approached stephanie was like oh they're tied da, 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 mm-hmm. you know you're the third wheel but then he started overextending his um overstating his importance to the tribe and i was like mm, <laughs> this isn't the hill you want to go on he's like he's like i he's like i if you if i go y'all don't have fire she's like we don't got fire right now <laughs> <laughs> like what are we talking about here and then on top of that you're going to tribal so you're gonna come back with flint you're gonna come back with fire so you don't need to be here for this to happen like he just kept overstating his value but we didn't see any of it he's like oh I, my work ethic around camp you took a nap that's what we saw uh, the, the challenge you didn't exactly. do too great there so it's just like yeah, the, no. these points in your mind math not mathing they don't they don't they don't add up and it's like did look sake who did have you ever made a fire? Maybe look, <laughs> in his defense, though, I feel like he could probably uh, make a fire with some matches, which you can't say for everyone uh, on that yeah. tribe. 
well, we come into episode two, and uh, they are going to finally be able to make a fire. And this is sort of this. Yeah. This, this is where you might see, have seen the start of the redemption arc, uh, if it had lasted more than this episode. Um, <laughs> so uh, I too, though, is killing it. Uh, they're getting lots of fish because of Ozzy. Um, and Ozzy is uh, starting to show what a superstar he is on the island, providing for his tribe, um, although he doesn't get along with Christina because she's a cop uh, mm -hmm. and he's a know-it-all. Um, those, that's the, the his, his, his typical cop versus know-it-all uh <laughs> battle mm -hmm. um, yeah just just swap him out this week <laughs> him and Stephen fishback could definitely cover this season <laughs> i think that'd be great um I, this episode was the episode i think that we got the most like character yeah stuff in the whole season and it's episode two <laughs> and then they're like ah oh, no, no more of that like <laughs> yeah i mean this is and this is where yeah. uh we we see yule and becky uh are gonna bond um now we don't really see how we see so we hear sort of why um yeah. that uh th i mean they're both sort of lawyers uh he he says that he uh he trusts her he like she doesn't need the money so <laughs> like i feel like that oh, yeah it's part of why i feel like i can trust her he's she says that he's um uh sort of like a brother to her mm -hmm. um they're they're both korean um yeah, i was and... about to say karen come on now exactly yes. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say karen come on <laughs> they said it you can say it <laughs> yeah um so uh so you know this this bond in particular this is going to be the, the strongest uh bond i think in the game um, apart from maybe the Adam and Candace connection, but even then, I mean, do you see him flirting with poverty? I mean, I saw her uh, slide yeah. slipping into that situation, and everyone was okay with it too. Yeah. So you know what? I'm okay with it. But yeah, like Becky, Becky works in nonprofits. You could trust someone who works with the nonprofit. They're not gonna uh, backstab you and compromise all of their funding. So you know, good <laughs> logic by Yule. And yeah, it, I think that that dynamic was really interesting because it goes back to what we were talking about with diversity in this season. And one thing I wanted to comment on when Mari, you mentioned just the diversity is that yes, there is great diversity with this season, but also there there's more that even more that you could do to represent different groups and different perspectives and one thing that's notable here is that you know we do see the two korean people on this tribe coming together and aligning and literally uh almost seeing each other as family like mm -hmm. um becky calls calls yul uh her opa or her opa. older brother yes. mm -hmm. and so i think that that's uh, that's something else to look at like how how did these different dynamics and these like subgroups within the larger groups play out and how could you know this been different if we had even greater diversity like people from right. completely different backgrounds all across the board well um, and this is where my this is where my biggest gripes come from episode two because they gave us a taste they gave us just a taste of what could have been and then they yanked the plate from us at, at like once they start getting going they we got each tribe just talking about their different um reactions to each other like you guys said you got ozzy and christina fighting over how to catch a chicken or because christina's a, a cop and mm -hmm. i would also just pause and mention that Ozzy is very lucky he was an underdog because I felt like this episode had villain edit over it but then they were like yeah. well, let's kind of protect him and let's push JP as the real villain mm. like it could have gone a whole different way I think if Ozzy was in more power but we'll come back to that yes. um but we got Adam and Flicka arguing as well like this is why I'm kind of incensed that they really swapped the tribe so early because we did not get to see these divisions take fruit and take hold. And I really, am, when, we, when we get to the episode, I'm going to say it was the kind of the downfall of at least two people's games that um, they didn't trust their gut. And then they relied on, you know, relying on their original tribe. So yeah. I, this episode is my favorite. I, I think it's my favorite when it comes to like wow. pre-merge, honestly. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so uh, one one thing that interested me was, um, you know, Penner is, spends, he, he's the first person to go to exile. Um, and and I, I sort of didn't realize until I just now, like when we were coming back to it, because later in the season, Penner never really fits in. 
with his oh, original tribe. He thinks yeah. he does, but uh, he never really does. And I, and I, I, you know, there are certainly potentially some reasons for it personality wise. Um, but uh, the fact that he was absent uh, so early um, for, I would imagine, you know, at least a day or two, yeah, two um, a day or two, yeah couldn't have helped uh those are very formative days to make those bonds um and and because part of it too is that he never really realized how on the outs he was with those people uh Mm -hmm. and so he comes back in after a couple days away um and immediately is like what are you guys doing? Why haven't you built the shelter yet? And it's it's just not a great, I think, impression. Um, and it's these are probably the seeds of if anybody, you know, I, I know some of the questions from the feedback form were like, why didn't anybody ever like Penner? Like, why did he, no, nobody seemed to get along with him. I have to imagine this is part of it here. Uh, this mm-hmm. is not a great mm-hmm. first impression. It's not a great sort of like initial few days of bonding for Penner with his tribe. Yeah, right. especially looking at the personalities on that tribe. Like, they really don't like being told what to do by Penn. Mm-hmm. And yes. I think <laughs> something that I look at now, which actually says a lot more about the, the characters, to me at least, is just the ages of different people. Like, I think Parvati was 23 or so. Like, we had a younger mm-hmm. cast, and, and you have that generational divide to the point of, and this was shocking to me on a rewatch, but Parvati called called Penner Papa Bear when he was riding back on the boat. Uh, A few episodes later, calls him a filthy, miserable rat or something to that effect. But it's just like so amazing to see how things shifted. And honestly, maybe Penner would have been in a better spot if he'd somehow taken on that Papa Bear role um, and, you know, embraced it and like, oh yeah, kids. Like actually it's getting a little creepy. but. He was the Papa Bear. He just was, he the, was. the tough Papa. He was a tough Papa. Tough, he wasn't pop, the tough squeezy daddy. Papa Bear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's true. If you take, I think if you take Pinner away from that tribe, that average age has to be like 24 or something like that. Like, like, yeah. That was a very young tribe minus Pinner. So yeah, he comes back and I was kind of with him. I'm like, y'all, y'all ain't got a fire. He said, y'all ain't got a floor. And Adam was like, we don't need that. It was like, wait, what? Are you sure? Because like, the, you know, the sleeping arrangements don't sound too nice, but you know, that just goes to some people when you get to Survivor, they say, oh, I want to conserve my energy so that we're good for the town. Conserve my energy. That's a good segue. Uh... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> because back at I2, um, uh, Billy is conserving his energy uh, strategically mm-hmm. and not doing any work. And oh. Ozzy is sick of it uh, and suggests this is, I mean, it's honestly like, I think this is my first impression of Ozzy, right? Uh, this is the first time I really notice Ozzy in the season is he wants to throw the challenge to get rid of Billy. This is a five person tribe. Um, and Ozzy wants to throw the challenge to get rid of Billy. And I immediately was, I, I was like, I don't like Ozzy. I didn't like Ozzy Thank at first. You. I was like, yeah. this is, what are you doing? Not only is this kind of feel mean spirited, but it's a terrible idea. What are you doing throwing a challenge this early? Uh, surely it's not that bad already. And if it is, then, then there's something wrong with a social game going on. Right? Like, uh, yes. like this is, this is a lot. Yeah, and this is like, a- you, got <laughs> you got you like just looking at the knowing how far Ozzy would get like maybe it would have helped to be friends with Billy and keep him around uh maybe Billy would have made it to uh, like to the jury I'm I'm assuming he wouldn't have well, who knows maybe he could have made it to the final three who knows but you know it would have been nice to you know keep those people who could be in your corner around but that's not what Ozzy was looking at he didn't he he wasn't a survivor fan going into this season and i think that's pretty pretty clear he was kind of just mm. picked up and and thrown into this group of people and making some decisions that might not have been great for his game which makes his game that much more impressive i'll say overall mm, i don't know the so the fact that he stayed in the game i mean the fact that he made it so far well yes he off the you know physical his physical yes. aspect so again i this could have been like uh uh the joker's origin story if if ozzy's uh time out there had went a, a tad bit differently because same i rewatched this i was like oh 
I don't like that. And I, and I agreed with what Pinner said in like the, um, the finale, like he comes off very arrogant. He comes off very entitled. And then JP was there and JP was feeding it. The both of them were feeding into that. And they're like, yeah, let's get rid of Billy. He's dead weight. We don't need him. And this is where I say that the edit, when I, when I tell you they bubble wrapped Ozzy in this edit throughout this season, that's what I noticed. They they really did. They protected him um, better than the Rock's finisher or the stunner. Oh. Like they okay. protected this man. Um, and so we get that dual JP, Ozzy. They're throwing the... The, they want to throw the uh, competition. Then we get Christina like in the back, like, I don't like this. I don't trust Ozzy. And I loved how they went to Cece. Um, I, I think it was after immunity, but Cece saying, I get where Christina is coming from because in her line of work, she's a police officer and she mm-hmm. has to trust her partner. Your partner has to have your back. So Ozzy doing this makes her not trust um, him. And I love that, like just that tad bit of context. It, it was amazing. And so again, this this thought process, like, hey, we're on the second, you know, it's day four. Let's, you know, uh, throw the challenge to get one of rid of one person on a five person tribe. Just it makes absolutely no sense, especially when you guys are like good, like you guys are beating, you know, beating everybody. And you're like, yeah, let's just give it up and get rid of one person four days in. It it was, a, it was amazing to watch though. I'm, I'm glad they did it. It was a, it was a stretch. <laughs> like they really had to go out of their way to make sure that they threw that one. And I like, honestly, I don't, I, I don't appreciate when Jeff kind of goes in and points out some of the obvious things. He didn't really point out the fact that Ozzy was very much so not really performing in that challenge, but I really wish he would have called it out more. Just angry at Jeff, like, come on, Ozzy. I know you, I know you could do better. Come on, come on, Ozzy. I'm not a fan of an angry Jeff. <laughs> I, I, look, I, I just like messy Jeff. That's me. So mm, that's true. Well, this, this mm. really is, uh, such a big episode um, where we get the Yule and Becky bond, Jonathan uh, sort of or seeds of uh, of not fitting in as much, uh, Ozzy throwing this challenge, which leads to I2 losing the challenge and choosing Yule to send to exile. Um, oh, with, snap, yeah. Yes, very, very important. Oh, uh, the yeah. reason they chose Yule now, uh, Puka had been doing very well in the challenges and they uh, saw Yule as their strongest member. And so in order to weaken their tribe, they decided to send Yule to exile. That is a huge stroke of luck for Yule in this game. And it is going to uh, be uh, very, very, uh, you know what? It, it comes back to help Ozzy in the end, uh, but it's going to come back to haunt some of the people uh, who did not have a choice in this uh, as uh, Yule is going to find that idol on exile with just the second clue. Um, he lines up the, the thing and he digs in the sand and he finds the idol. Um, we learn in the recap episode that he then destroys all evidence. Uh, he burns the note yeah. and he sends the box mm. away in like a coconut uh, into the ocean uh, so that nobody will ever that. know. Um, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I was very surprised at how much they didn't seem to know that he had it. Uh, I thought for right. sure, like, oh, mm-hmm. they'll know after the second clue that it would have been obvious like how, they, how where to find it. Um, but not the case. Uh, they were not able to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah to me, it's mm-hmm. go ahead, Mari. No, I was just gonna say because I think Jonathan goes back in after him, if I remember correctly. I don't know. We'll see and when we get to the next episode. But um, and he's digging and he's like, it's not here. <laughs> it's like and the same, the same, you know, we end up getting the same three or four people that that go. So yeah, I feel like they should have known earlier, but at that point, you're still in your original merge tribes. Not as much information is flowing. So it, it, once the reveal happens, you, you know, it, at that point, it's like, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. That you'll part, have it. <laughs> part of me wonders, though, if it's just a situation where, like, if they had seen this season or other seasons that we see after this, maybe they would have suspected more. But I... I, they just weren't looking out for, I, I, I honestly, I can't defend their decision-making here. I still don't know <laughs> how they didn't pick up on the fact that you'll probably had that idol slash definitely obviously had that idol, but I, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I want to think that they just weren't thinking that way because of where Survivor was at the time. And like, now we could look back and easily judge them. But I think in the moment, it, it I would like to think it made more sense that they and- didn't. Yeah. Question you'll- and and you will obviously, you know, we didn't we'd never really see him explain any of this on in the episodes, but he he must have done a good job of of lying and convincing them that uh I yeah. looked and I looked and I couldn't find it. Uh, Cuz they 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 say later like, "Oh, he was only there for like mm-hmm. a, a day, so how could he have found it?" I think, yeah. Yeah. I think they said well, they I, just and, thought and that he was there. That's not a that's long probably time. part of it too is that they it probably got a reputation of like I was looking all day. I've been looking, I've been there three times. I've been searching. It's so mm-hmm. hard to find. How could he have found it in one day? Well, it was hard to find cuz he found it and it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh so you goes off to exile but that's not the that's not it for this episode either because no. uh at Ooh, the wee. end of this challenge um candace <sighs> candace says uh i feel really bad for you guys and billy says i'm next uh they're taking me out next and she says oh well, we love you and he replies i love you and he gives <laughs> this is my favorite part of it the little smirk at the end of I love you. That's kind of like, hmm, yeah, I love you too. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry to this man. I yes. am sorry to this man because I just think like if I'm to, to focus on Candace for a second, like if I'm in Can- Dr. Candace Cody's shoes now, mm. I'm I'm going to very sparingly be telling people I love them. I bet that she's she's probably not dishing that out uh, she, too she often say, these days. We. She said we. <laughs> you don't want to come close. This is easy to misinterpret. But, oh, man, I, I just... Uh, one thing I'll, I'll note, so in terms of other readings, I was so curious about how Candace felt about Billy. So I read uh, her EW interview from last year where she was talking about this situation and Candace mentioned the fact that she actually did meet and talk with Billy before the season started, before the cameras were rolling Mm -hmm. to an extent. Uh, Obviously this wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened in one of the huts. uh, The pregame hut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. One of the, whatever you, pregame huts. Yeah, that sounds Mm -hmm. like a fun place. That's what they, that's what she said. Yeah, Mm -hmm. look, look, but that, look, that, that's it where I'm like, maybe they, Maybe they had a conversation and a deep bond yeah. there. Like, I want to give said, Billy the benefit of the doubt. She said they agreed to watch each other's backs. Yeah. So, I, which makes it a little better. I don't I think know. Little, okay, it makes a, a little. It makes more sense why he was saying I'm next. Like, I like because yeah. they to had her, something yes. there, and yes. then it makes sense why she would. Well, we love you. Um, mm-hmm. and then I guess I guess it makes a little. Maybe he then thought like, like you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And uh, after our conversation, she now has fallen in love with me. I mean, maybe, but it also could have been, maybe she said, I love you the first time they met. You know, you never know. We don't have those details. (laughs) I just, it's it's tough. It's so rough though. And I I just feel this need to, to not laugh at Billy that much because it's so sad how much the survivor editors just had a field day with this one like oh every chance that they get and we'll we'll dive into some of the different moments along the way but they love a good reaction shot and they loved a good reaction shot every single time that this I mean, came up it's pretty rare that you see Jeff just like full on like what what? What? <laughs> what? Hey, who? What? Can? Candace? Who? Like, are you, who do you think? Do you think they're talking about Candace like, Cameron from Full House? Right? Because like, 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 there's no is, like there's one Candace. Clearly, Billy had not mentioned this in Confessional, right? Like the the, no. the cameras. Nobody on the crew knew. I I. This is my opinion. This is my guess, mm-hmm. right? Nobody on the crew must have known that this happened, uh, and they had to go back and find it in the footage later, I would imagine. And so when Billy brings it up in Tribal, uh, just to go through Tribal very quick, obviously Billy tries flipping, they've tried flipping CC, it doesn't work. Um, uh, they talk about, is Ozzy a leader? No. Uh, Billy says, hey, they threw the challenge. JP's like, yeah, we did. We want Billy gone. And he says, uh, well, here's my problem, Jeff. I fell in love. It's love at first sight. Oh. Uh, and Jeff's like, oh, oh, okay. Well, you mean? Uh, I in love with Candace. Wait, what? Ca- Candace from the from the Rara tribe? 
Excuse me? It's like, yeah. He says, yeah, we mouthed <laughs> that we love each other. So, <laughs> wait, are you serious? And Jeff must be out of his mind in that moment. Just like, are, are, are you, this is gold. I've, this, I just won the lottery. Are you kidding me? Uh, why he did, probably why thought he was having a fever four? dream. <laughs> It's like a fever dream or something. Like, what's going on? This is gold. Yeah. He oh says, my gosh. Lo love at first sight. It's a rapport thing. I'm dead serious. <laughs> She's my prize. That see, that's look. I don't look. She doesn't belong to you, Billy. Mm. But maybe she. He's. I think he's figured that out by now. Um. But Jeff was asking some question questionable questions. Like, how do you think that Candace? who you are in love with would be in love with you. Like, what is the rationale? What's her reasoning? What is the, like, oh, whew, he was, he was really, he was really caught off guard because I would like to think that Jeff might've found a better way to phrase that other than like, <laughs> come on. What are it's, you yeah, I mean, it's, it's delusional. One of those situations where it's just like, no. you immediately go, that's impossible. But then you go, wait a minute, I guess, wait, do I have to, okay. How do I <laughs> approach this? I mean, that's not clearly not true, but I can't just say, I mean, what if, it I don't could know. Be. Exactly. <laughs> and like, you see that going through literally every single person in that tribal's mind uh, where like Ozzy is like, well, I mean, I guess, I mean, if it's true, it's true. Right. And, and JP is <laughs> like, I mean, and JP is the one who's having it the least. He's just like, yeah. I mean, guys, are we really? I mean, I guess if it's true, but it's not. I mean, come on, it's <laughs> not. But I guess, I mean, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I mean, it's not. Yes. And this, so uh, I forgot about this completely. So on the rewatch, I was just watching. I was like, oh, we love you. Okay, great. Sure. And when they got to tribal, when he said it, my face looked like Jeff. I was like, what? <laughs> and then I think in my notes, I was like, oh my God, Billy thinks Candace loves him. What is happening right now? <laughs> like, I was completely, I completely forgot about that. And it was Oh, I'm sorry. It was funny. I do feel bad uh, for Billy, but Billy's taking it in stride. He says yeah. he, he doesn't run from it or anything like that. They did not need to keep hammering us over the head with it every time they got, but it was just very, very hilarious. And I just, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I, I know everybody there couldn't believe what they were hearing either. Oh, it's, uh, it's one of the, there's so many like, big memorable moments from the season and this is definitely yeah. one of them um so uh of course billy's then voted out uh we head into uh, -huh. uh episode three where uh we're gonna swap the tribes uh swap the tribes up into two uh we're going into raro versus i2 um and they do they do this in a somewhat interesting way here they uh they i believe randomly draw for captains um mm -hmm. and it's two uh female captains two male captains and then they pick one person from a different tribe who then goes on to pick another person and then they fill out four new tribes of uh all women and all men um and then they combine uh one of the all women tribes and one of the all men tribes and uh, it's very complicated um but uh but like yeah whatever works I liked it. Yeah. I liked the idea behind it. And I I don't know. I think it's a cool little function just to make sure you mix up the tribes rather than going completely random. Mm -hmm. But what did you yeah. what did you think about it, Mari? Yeah, I agree. I, I liked the it was very complicated. I wrote it all down. I was like, okay, let me yeah. just make sure I followed <laughs> this. Um, but I did like it because it made sure that he was like, okay, well, make sure it's somebody who's not represented on your tribe. You know, it, it evenly broke everybody mm -hmm. out. And then I, I like the randomness of just the eggs to see which uh, men's group ended up with each women's group. Again, I thought it came two episodes uh, too early. I think this mm -hmm. would have worked great after like another two more episodes so we can get those tribe divisions more like even again even a lot of the conspiracy theory is they didn't want one tribe getting decimated shout out to the hiki tribe because that's what it looked like it was going um yeah. but even if you lose two more of the same tribe you're still sowing some division within the other ones so i would have loved to see that more but uh again great the only note I had was uh, the sister on the end. Yeah, <laughs> that's who I'm choosing. I'm choosing the sister on the end. Yeah, there was, there's, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah Flicka. Flicka's great. I like Flicka. Oh my God. I, I don't, well, I don't. But, I like Flicka. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna I say. know, I'm like, can I even, I don't even. I, I, uh, gosh, yeah, she's she's great. I, I'll just point out, because we didn't say it, a uh, quote that she did say, the whiteies at the, fr-, which was not yes, called was- for and very offensive. <laughs> and hilarious. Candace. Candace was one who's like, oh, oh not gonna go there. Which mm. I wasn't gonna lots of love it. for Candace yeah. to not do that. We don't, we don't need that. Yeah, Why? you're good. joking again. Like uh, the the uh, Raro and Puka were not having the jokes. Mm. Uh, I think, yeah, no jokes. Like, I'm in, I'm in, tri- I'm in tribe. No jokes, I guess at this point. <laughs> No, no ethnic jokes, please. None. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the post swap Raro uh, has uh, JP. Um, it's got uh, Brad. It's got Nate, and it's got mm-hmm. Adam. And uh, these four big guys. Uh, they we're gonna quickly see that there's a bit of a gender divide. Um, but uh, they very quickly are very like pleased to see like oh we've got all the big hunky guys uh, or at least most of them um, we're gonna dominate um, and uh, and we do see that in the immunity challenge it is the weight carrying one and they do dominate they very easily win this first immunity challenge it's gonna be one of the very few that they end up winning overall um, okay. but uh, but Parvati loves the fact that she's got all the hunky guys to work with um, she's gonna work on Nate for starters uh and then see where she can go from from there Mm -hmm. and of course we got our arbitrary like once the tribes are mixed we got our our, oh it's a melting pot it's america again you don't see color you don't Uh, see color mm. that was from that was a quote from it's just not not great i know uh but also um i think we 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 just discussed this on bb can nine was it really that they outman them or was it that the strategy was wrong for i2 i2 mm-hmm. decided to load up on nate and adam um mm-hmm. and not distribute the weight evenly like uh Rero did Rero gave each person a weight and then you know then they started to load up on um yule and um who was it yule, yule and ozzy were together in that challenge i think Mm-hmm. I can't remember, but either way, then they far- they started to load up on them, but they had evenly distributed the weight. We got uh, um, Sundra dropped out. And so I, I just think, I- yes, they got out muscled, but they more than like, they more got out outplayed because they, they just didn't, they didn't um, do a good strategy for, for distri- distributing the weight. Mm-hmm. Um well, uh, so we also see on I2, uh, we, we see early on, uh, Becky is going to pitch the alliance here, uh, Candace and Penner, her and Yule. Uh, that four-person alliance is ultimately going to run I2 for a little while. Um, and, uh, and Penner tries to bring in, uh, Flicker, Fli- Flicker, uh-huh. Flicka, <laughs> Penner and Flicka, uh, Flicka as the fifth person, but she's not into it. She's there to make friends, doesn't like her original tribe, doesn't really want to be with them. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, she does seem like she, she's, she's into Penner, but she seems like she's not super into Candace. Um, and so, uh, she's, she doesn't know if she wants to be in on it. Um, and then uh, Yule is going to tell Becky that he has this idol, um, and that's really going to solidify that. But this this I two tribe and this alliance is very interesting to me. It's uh, you know it's Becky and Yule who are very tight, um, working with Penner and Candace who are the opposite of tight. Um, but Penner thinks he's tight with Candace, but Candace mm-hmm. secretly hates Penner and doesn't want anything to do with him or this alliance. But she's willing to be in it because she's got numbers for now. Um, they Tribalism. tried, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and so the people running this alliance are very strategically focused, right? Yule, Becky, and Penner are all very Penner. strategic, mm-hmm. um, and they're having to appeal to very sort of like more social, outside of the box, the alternative option, as uh, uh, Flicka calls herself. Uh, people, Aussie, yeah. cowboy, Flicka, people that don't really care about the more strategic element and care more about mm-hmm. like, who am I hanging out with? Who do I vibe with? Um, and watching Penner and Yule try to pitch to Cowboy and Flicka um, in a very strategic way, like Penner trying to explain strategically to Flicka why it makes sense. Um, and she's just like, I don't care, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very interesting to me watching these dynamics. 
Yeah. yeah. And especially looking back at that, again, that time too, where it, I don't remember that, especially standing out to me in the real time, but it is kind of jarring to see so many people who are definitely making decisions that are not in their best self-interest or in the best interest of their own games long-term. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if like, that's, that's one thing about Flicka that stands out to me, which is just, she was really going off of vibes a lot of the time and about how she felt about people. And, uh, you know, there's something to be said for that. I get it. You know, you have to gel with people, but no, this is not the game. This is not the time we did not, yes. you don't need to do that. Save that for like big brother. Or yeah. Something. And I don't know. yeah. And this is where I, I was talking about where, where, um, cowboy and Flicka we're in good with Sandra, Ozzy, and Cecilia. Like Cece mm -hmm. and Flicka look like they had a really good bond. Again, I, I also don't understand why Yule and Pinner didn't think about bringing in Sundra first, because again, once we get to tribal, Sundra's the lone person from her original tribe. Like you, they kept saying, we need one more person. We need one more person. Oh, Flicka. Like, but she's, she's not feeling you, but they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't even consider Sandra up until, up until this point. It wasn't until much later. So again, this is where, because you swap so early, people are going to crutch onto their original tribes when what's good for your, you and your original tribe may, uh, differ you know and because yeah. the original tribes were based by ethnicity oh well now it looks like the raro the white tribe and the puka the asian american tribe ganged up on on, on the other people like that <laughs> you created this look survivor this is what you did by, yeah. by uh bl breaking them up in ethnicity so yeah, yeah and I, just to like take that even a step further for something that i don't even i don't even know where it would come up but thinking of penner um, and just the character that he is, there are a lot of moments and I remember not loving him in the real time. I realized it's just because of some of the comments like, okay, uh, we're going to, you know, team up with the Asians and yes. they do that. And it like, it sounds really <laughs> offensive, but then if you think of like Jonathan Penner and him referring to himself as the lone Jew without a tribe, mm -hmm. like, I mm -hmm. think that that explains the character a lot, but it just kind of makes you feel uncomfortable along the way, especially when they don't effectively address race uh at, really at all along the course of the season and you you still have this awkward feeling like oh someone's mentioning race like what i don't i don't know what to do yeah. this is really and real quick, uncomfortable and this is why i was like i wasn't off offended by that because this is what right. you introduced to the game mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. because i'm sitting here i'm trying to go by the the tribe's names but it's just way easier <laughs> to refer yeah. to their ethnicities because that's what you did you introduced mm -hmm. this element so i'm not going to get mad at jonathan for referring to them like that because this is what no. you've reduced the game down to and then you you did nothing <laughs> with it so i that's why that's why i'm just they they did not know what they were doing here. They did not th think this all the way through. <laughs> they really mm -hmm. didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a very key vote uh, and a key moment in the season as uh, basically what happened is they had this alliance of four, uh, Yule, Becky, Penner, Candace. Um, and, you know, that's that's all well and good. You have, you know, potentially, you know, you, you just needed one more or whatever it was. But Candace is going to get shipped off to Exile Island um, after the immunity challenge. And now they're down one of their numbers. And they basically have three. They basically have three people left. Mm -hmm. um, and they are uh, uh, surrounded by a bunch of people who uh, you, you have Cece and Ozzy. Um, you've got Flicka and Cowboy. Um, you've got uh, a lot of people here that uh, are not going to be like immediately into uh, what you want. And obviously, uh, you know, Sundra is there. She We mentioned that she is kind of the potential swing here as uh, the lone representative of her uh, tribe um, mm -hmm. in uh, on this on this tribe. Um, and so uh, even if they do pick up Sundra, they need another person on top oh, of that yeah. they need uh -huh. flicka or um uh or or cowboy, cowboy. they need somebody um mm -hmm. and cowboy and flicka are being very resistant because it doesn't make any sense for them to for go them. along it with no. this uh -huh. um and so we i i really loved this segment of just watching penner work on flicka 
totally fail. Uh, Yule <laughs> works on Cowboy uh, with a lot more success. Um, still not perfect, but right. uh, we then see Cowboy and Flicka talk. Um, and we see that, uh, that Cowboy does seem to be the one that was convinced more so than mm -hmm. Flicka. And he's kind of convincing Flicka to go along with Yule and the rest of them. And this is such a key moment because it's a huge mistake for Cowboy and Flicka. They end yeah. up giving Yule and Penner and Becky and Candace the numbers here. Um, and they're going to run through this tribe with those numbers until the mutiny. Uh, and I re I just really enjoyed this, uh, this whole segment and this whole sort of, uh, episode here um as uh you know when you think about key moments in yule's game it is it's it's flipping it's or it's at the very least making sure that he has a uh, cowboy uh, making sure that they have um uh, uh sundra or, or they don't have sundra here um, but they yeah. do have cowboy and uh and flicka um at and that's that's what they needed and becky was the person on the other end of things um ozzy's right. gonna say at tribal when he goes to vote uh, says, becky didn't try to get to know him at all um and uh yes. and cowboy says Be becky's a princess out here um and they're all gunning for uh becky and that would have been devastating to yule's game if uh if becky had gone there so um definitely some uh some important and interesting uh strategy components here in this episode yeah but I, this is kind of where i really gained more of an appreciation i think with yule and the strategic elements of his game it's it's no surprise even on the rewatch you just kind of expect it but penner i don't think penner had any business being around as long as he was in this game and it's yes. so impressive <laughs> to see him just hanging in there and convincing people even though no one really seemed to to love him but, or yeah, really uh -huh. particularly like him from a lot of people and it's amazing because we go along and penner just is, gets this reputation as being untrustworthy and a backstabber before he even truly backstabs people thing, which yeah. i think is like very also really questionable <laughs> yeah the, uh, the amount of times the amount of times yule says like <laughs> everybody doesn't trust penner yeah. i don't see it but maybe yeah. they're on to something i guess like i don't know yeah. <laughs> very questionable and i wonder here too because i think we we learn we see it throughout the rest of the season did Ozzy and Sundra have a bond? It looked like they had a bond that was not addressed in the show. Am I crazy here? Or am I inferring things? But it seemed, especially during the I24 stuff like that, that I mean, you and Becky, of course, we I were think, given their story, but I, I think feel by like default, missed something. Okay. I, I, I mean, that's the vibe I got, at least, that it was yeah. like, we know Becky and you are together. So by default, we should sort of pair up. But I mean, ultimately, she does uh, cast a vote for Yule um, over Ozzy. Yeah, over Ozzy um, yeah. So oh, that to me, true. I mean, granted, you know, you can definitely vote for the person you're not closer to. Um, yeah. But uh, but it definitely did seem like, honestly, if anything, it felt like she was closest to Becky. To Becky. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah. by extension, mm -hmm. I think she would also be closer to Yule. Um, yeah. and, and they did seem to have some issues together with Ozzy sometimes. So Yeah, um, I just really wish we got more of the opposition's thought process in this episode episode in particular because it was great work it was great work to see Yule and Pinner like work on their original tribe members and I think the simple fact that Becky was the vote is what helped turn cowboy you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. because Yule was like she's on our side like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying um so that was great but I would have really loved how the other side thought that like it was Becky and it was all all good you know what I'm saying like I I, I really wanted to know what their thought process was, but we didn't get it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm stop. I'm gonna stop complaining about what we didn't see. But yeah. I just had yeah. more questions as I, I rewatched it the second time. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get uh, one of many Aussie confessionals when something doesn't go his way. Uh, he's like, "Well, I'm gonna stop providing then. Uh, I'm gonna stop feeding them <laughs> every <Yeah>. time, <laughs> every <laughs> single time." I mean, what else is he gonna do? I don't. Yeah. I don't know what else he can do. <laughs> Guys, I would like if somebody would like to tabulate like the confessionals that <laughs> Ozzy has in that that sweep of like the I24 stuff. I think he does not have a lot. Mm. Uh I think they bubble wrapped the hell out of him. I'm sorry, guys. But they, like they really did. So yeah, here here in uh. episode four, they have one of my least favorite uh segments in the entire season, and that is uh Cowboy knocking over the nest, uh, which was just like oh Cringe. my god. I do not want to see this. I do not want this to have happened. Uh, like this was, this is heartbreaking. 
Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. That was that was one. I, I was very much like, I, I can't watch this. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I, and then they like they this. showed the clip of Ugh. it later. And I was like, stop, please. They, yeah. As if that was like an important moment yeah. or really a notable moment. Even I was very I was especially confused when, they, like, when no. they showed it. This, this is this is an example of like what's wrong with Survivor. They should not be interfering with nature uh, for a TV show <laughs> like uh, like this is this is when all these real world world concerns come into my brain. Um, and yeah. I'm like, eh. <laughs> Maybe they were just trying to up the controversy, though, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> this, was this was it. The they were like, we didn't really know how to touch on the race thing, so we just decided to, you know, show you people knocking birds out yeah. of their homes. But hey. Yeah, this this wasn't fun. It was like, well, what, so what was the, they wanted eggs? That's what they were like, cowboy, come on, man. Like, this was so, it was so sad to sit there and watch, uh, like, again, like, it really was. And poor Pinner. Pinner really was like, mm like crying because that's, yeah. that's i would have so had the cool. same response i really yeah, would have really yeah. wasn't yeah mm -hmm. um this is probably one of my least favorite episodes overall in the pre-merge uh, i feel like not a ton is gonna happen okay. here we get it's one of these raro uh losses um and uh we're just gonna see from that the, the, the guys are feeling comfortable jp's uh getting a bit demanding um mm -hmm. then uh nate says let the king sit pretty um but uh but at the end of the day he's not gonna sit pretty um the uh the women are gonna get to work uh they're gonna end up flipping multiple people here they never really explain how it happens um but ultimately uh adam parvati uh both vote for jp nate does not they're gonna show later that they did approach nate and he just shut it down completely it seemed like yeah. Parvati was shutting it down, probably just went along with it once, uh, I guess, maybe Adam was on board. I'm not entirely sure how they got Adam on board, but it really did not. The voting lines did not represent what we were shown in terms of guys versus women. Um, and so uh, I do not know why Adam flipped exactly. Um, I don't know why Brad flipped, uh, but it's going to be a seven to two vote for JP to leave. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you, you, we have to, we kind of, uh, okay, uh, thanks, bye, JP. Uh, but you kind of have to wonder, like, what, what were those other conversations that were going on was, because the thing that confuses me is Parvati was sort of just like, yeah, no, not, not a fan of this plan, like, whatever. And may, I wonder if Parvati also pulled Adam along or like how that happened. It, yeah, because like at the time it was like, oh, she's working on Nate, but but mm -hmm. Nate's not the person that yeah. flips with her. If she's the one that flipped, we, we still just don't know. There's just not a lot of information here. Ultimately, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, I did think that JP was uh, an interesting enough character, uh, but, um, you know, one of these that's uh, going to be out uh, early and we're not going to see much uh, from him here. Yeah, he and was, I, he was, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, he was just I, taking it on, by the way, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie, but mm -hmm. we, we could touch on that in a, in a second. Mari, what were you? Well, gonna yeah, that's uh, that was what I was going to say. It was like, mm. JP acted, he like, he was too arrogant. He was, he was too cocky, but he was just as arrogant and cocky as Nate and um, Adam were. Uh, the difference is uh, they could cut him because they had, three more other guys I mean Brad was there Brad seemed like the one who was the most like close to the girls this uh Ginny did great work here mm -hmm. I I really think Ginny did great mm -hmm. work here totally. because Stephanie literally just <laughs> like put her neck on that chopping block oh, and Stephanie. And yeah, poor Stephanie. And Jenny had to be like, uh, 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 uh. Like, like, <laughs> so, move your head, move your head. Like, yeah, because, I don't, why did yeah. you do that? What was I don't going know. on? I don't know. It's like, you never moment make of weakness. Yeah, never make people's job uh, easier. But I, I guess like, as we go to see further along, I think her subconscious brain was like, we need to get up out of here. <laughs> Well, her like <laughs> her conscious was like, no, I want to stay and play, guys. I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that, but I really want to stay and play. But like her her forty <laughs> slips were like, get me out of here. Yeah. I know, and it's the type of thing too where it's like, did you really have to stay? Because that takes a lot of energy. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just like her thing. Maybe she's used to going in front of people and like announcing her mistakes. But for me, I don't. I look. I'm not. 
I'm gonna maybe maybe apologize to people on the side. I'm not gonna go in front of the tribe and and talk about the fact that like I messed this one up. Oh wait, no, no, no. I don't want to leave. I want to be here. Don't don't get me <laughs> yeah. wrong. Like uh, that was just I was just I was just being accountable. But I want to be here. Totally, mm -hmm. clearly, I still want mashed potatoes and gravy. But I totally <laughs> want to be here. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Stephanie. Oh. Well, we get to the following reward challenge, uh, and this was the the first of many uh, sort of back and forth between Penner and Jeff that I enjoyed. Um, I, I like that Penner just like has no qualms about uh, like yelling back at Jeff uh, or yelling at Jeff during challenges. Um, it's uh, he says, uh, "Hey, we'll have to wait a little more." Um, uh, that's what Jeff says, and then uh, Penner's like, "That's a, that's a bad pun, Jeff." Uh, and oh. J Jeff, Jeff is ignoring him for now, but he's going to start to yell back, uh, later. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, then Adam gets an octopus stuck on his foot. Uh, and then this is, a, this is another one. My, you know, it's another Raro loss, um, and, uh, another, uh, sort of like very sort of meh kind of episode for me. Um, yeah. but, is this uh. I'm I'm just wondering, is this the most octopus heavy season? There are a lot I, of octopus. Lot of, yeah, a lot yeah. of I octopus. I didn't I didn't know like I don't want an octopus to like grab me and latch I was, on and just like suck the life out yeah. of me. But at the same time, it's like what it's clearly harmless. I was like, mm -hmm. if I had an octopus stuck around my ankle, like wrapping me. I would not have been as calm as Adam was. Like, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I've got this thing. I help? I want to just like uh, peel it off. I would have been like, um, guys, gotta chop off my ankle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this is also yeah. the episode where Cowboy, Ozzy, and Flicka are gonna go to explore, um, and they end up uh, walking right into the other tribe's camp. Uh, at which point, somebody, I'm not sure who, mumbles. Oh, it's the three we can't stand. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't even I catch missed that. that part. Yeah. I yeah. missed that too. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking, like, is this allowed? Like, wait, what? Like, can they just? Well, do it reminds like, it reminds me what? of uh, in Guatemala when something something similar happened, uh, or not similar in this sense that they were accidentally stumbled, but it happens occasionally. Uh, and then uh, cowboys going to talk their ears off uh that's uh they're gonna be like okay can we uh, can we go now yeah. um and so weird how do you handle that i've been like dude like come on like y'all shouldn't even be here like why you, you don't even go here <laughs> like, yeah what is happening? and while they're gone uh we're gonna hear from yule that uh the solid four is still in place they're still looking for a fifth but they've decided that they want somebody that they can rely on, somebody who is reliable. And uh, there's one person who stayed back at camp outside of the four person alliance. And that person is Sundra. Uh, okay. She is clearly the reliable option um, yeah. of the other of the other three. Um, and so this alliance of five is going to come together. And this uh, should have spelled the doom of each of these three, uh, if not for a potential mutiny uh, on the horizon. Um, and, uh, and that's it. The, the five is locked in the I two five, uh, l a little bit less known, uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the I two five is, is locked in here. Yeah. And I just like, I'm glad Sandra was able to get in there. It, you know, we didn't see it. So it looks like, oh, you'll pull Sandra in, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I would like to think that after she saw the, the vote, she's like, okay. I need to change. Yeah, my I mean, she allies. was. Yeah, I mean, underreported, <laughs> but she was on the yeah. wrong side of that previous vote. Um, yes. And right. uh, Yule and company decided to go with Sundra over, which you know isn't the hardest choice in the world, even if she didn't vote with you. Uh, but over Cowboy and Flicka, who did vote with them, they decided, yes. you know what, we'd rather have Sundra, who didn't vote with us, uh, than Cowboy and Flicka, um, yes. and and that's the way that it's gonna go. Yeah. So some work had mm. to have been put in there definitely mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah you could see the, like to the point of under editing you could see like sundra I, I i think was really in the game and and like but we didn't get to sort through see much it, yeah. of it and so that i i, I feel bad like i it's, and sundra felt like a fun character with a fun mm -hmm. personality yeah but we didn't really get to dive into it we did get moments we got quips but mm -hmm. look i i that's this is this is where, um, with Sundra and Becky too, uh, there was definitely more going on that we we just didn't get. 
And, you know, you'll talk about that a little bit after the season, especially with Becky, but um, I, uh, look, I, uh, this is, I'm like Mari, I'm going to stop complaining about the things that we didn't get to see. <laughs> um, yeah. That, but they're gaps, they're gaps in like, yeah. in the logic of what we're seeing. So how could you not acknowledge them? Exactly. And at this point, Becky and Candace and Sandra, you know, were hanging out more too. Like mm-hmm. they were like, oh, they're, they're the girls. So they were like, they were hanging out more and Flicka didn't, again, didn't really get, um, along with them not not get along like she just wasn't as tight as the three of them seemed or what was kind of presented uh once we got this uh the i25 but let me just uh i would just like to correct myself before my mentions become a shamble Uh i'm sorry this was Uh the episode with the weight distribution talent on the reward the other one was the 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 chasing one yeah the chasing one yeah which in the first time we saw this or maybe or maybe the palau season that this happened it seemed like it took longer like well that's what it seemed like they they really just dominated um because okay, that yeah. one, i mean that one was that one is really about like pure strength and endurance uh, yeah. there's some strategy to it too in terms of how yeah. who carries what bags but um but it is it's very similar to the other weight challenge uh yeah <laughs> so, sorry my bad you just said the weight challenge i was like yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, yes guys i know it was too different these were a lot of challenges to keep up with but mm. yeah so one caught that and now they're like going back like oh my, i don't sorry <laughs> at mari talks too much with it with the number two <laughs> mm. um yes well uh we're gonna see the penner is gonna realize the idol must have been found otherwise he's a complete moron uh because uh, he can't so find this here. thing uh-huh. um yeah. and uh and again it's uh as i said one of these episodes raro is gonna do what they're gonna do uh they talk about how uh christina is the new jp uh she's she's too too uh-huh. bossy um, but they're still going to vote out Stephanie because uh, she talked about, you know, wanted some potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah. So I just want to ask Matt real quick. T- yeah, come on, please. So Stephanie says to Nate, oh, man, I wish I, you know, I had some mashed potatoes. What happened here? <laughs> but with her wanting the mashed potatoes no, or with, Nate? With Nate was like, let me tell, let me tell you. So. I don't know why Nate was so quick to sell out Stephanie every chance he got. <laughs> he and, kept, I don't know and he kept saying like, oh, yeah. I mean, she's she's my girl, but she wants mashed she's potatoes. Hungry. She's like, hungry. Yeah. She's hungry. How could you? Yeah. It, but like the, the thing I worry about for Stephanie is how she's going to. I, I, I bet that she still hasn't had mashed potatoes and gravy, especially being <laughs> scarred from Try that not. moment. She just, was, she was hungry. It's Survivor. But also she was just making a comment about her favorite food. I understand that's a thing mm-hmm. that survivors like to talk about, all the foods that they wish they could eat. And, you know, maybe, like, I, I don't know how she could have done this differently. Maybe not <laughs> admit that she has any human human faculties at all i don't eat i don't eat i'm not hungry i i feel great i'm not tired i'm not lazy i don't need rest and i could build fire that's what she should have said that's what that's what confused me because i thought for i was prepared the second this happened i was like wait because she wants potatoes you think she wants to leave i was prepared to go absolutely in on 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 nate about that uh but then she does say like yeah i was talking about and i was like okay Mm -hmm. uh, well that okay well i guess if you're saying that you were talking about wanting to go um but like why didn't we hear that why did we just hear the potatoes (laughs) exactly and this is and the reason why i asked matt that is because i wanted to know if he would just dump me for uh over some mashed potatoes or not just oh i (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to make sure do you have my back you have my back harder than nate has stephanie's back Pro- even if she wants mashed not. potatoes yeah <laughs> probably not no, no you're gonna you're he- going you're going but it also feels like nate i don't know if he was lo- it really did seem like he was looking for an opportunity yeah. to get stephanie out because yeah. i know in that original tribe like and i don't remember all of the different things that they're talking about but if she made that comment they would have just laughed about mm. it like that's yeah. I mean, I, and I, it kind of felt to me like this was that was a comment that she would make to Nate, and I don't. Just I, Nate. I got the sense that Cut it might have also been like yeah. the racial dynamic too, versus like, oh, I'm gonna go up to like uh, Christina and tell her that I'm, I want mashed potatoes and gravy. She's like, oh, great, like, thanks. Yeah, thanks. yeah. and I I think he sort of maybe at this point was in the new alliance. Uh, yes. He had yeah. been hanging out with exactly. people, you know, closer mm-hmm. to his age probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and just was like, you know, well, if, if she wants to go, 
And I, I don't yeah. want her to go, but if she wants to go, then here we go. Um, and oh, she wants and to I think, go. Oh, didn't she They were go? really digging in. They were really digging and asking, like, so let me get this straight. <laughs> she she wants mashed potatoes <laughs> and gravy, right? Okay. Yeah. She wants. She wants. Uh, okay. She oh, wants to great. leave. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun and fact. I, and that's what I'm saying. I think that was exactly it. I think by this point they had had their five. They knew who they whose yes. backs they were they were keeping, and they were just they didn't care who what order they went. They weren't like the I two tribe where they're like, okay, well this is the order. They were just mm-hmm. like, oh, whatever happens. And we didn't get that, so that's why it looks like Nate betrayed her over some mashed potatoes. Well, so I'm not gonna sit here and and continue to bury Nate because I don't think that was the case, but. Stephanie Stephanie said she confirmed two things she said I said it to Nate because I thought I could trust him and and we got that but then she also confirms like yeah I you know I wasn't there mentally and that's why I'm saying her subconscious was just pushing through the surface because Mm -hmm. she just did not care yeah all of yeah and she wanted uh to get caught she's like (laughs) she's like the killer that that messed up because they wanted to get caught (laughs) on purpose she was like oh I'm gonna go back to the camp and talk about some food and they're gonna want me out like no I mean and to be fair and we joke about it but like you to be that hungry and fantasizing about mashed potatoes and gravy I don't even love though them in particular but I could see I could see you know really craving some out there on the island so she's human it's cool I you, just Stephanie. really wish the show didn't just hammer home like because of this one comment of mashed potatoes and gravy Stephanie went home because I don't think I it was that simple <laughs> and from where who's making them ma- no I don't this is look I have questions and I need to find Stephanie to get answers mm. <laughs> well uh Stephanie is voted out there we head into episode six this is the episode where uh win or lose both tribes are going to tribal council um and yeah. uh, we also learn in this episode that uh cowboy loves the idol uh he loves the immunity idol and he loves to bring it to every challenge not just the immunity challenge he loves to bring it to reward challenges as well mm-hmm. um and uh and uh, penner is not a huge fan of this he feels like that's disrespectful it feels yeah. like it's a little bit braggadocious uh to be bringing the immunity to uh to every challenge uh, and this is a point of contention here I I I honestly hadn't thought about this like I or don't remember thinking about uh, this uh, uh. at any point but I mean in my you just bring your thing just bring it with you why not it's yours like if you're if you're the WWE champion you're not going to leave your championship in the locker room just because it's a non-title match uh-huh. right so well, in wrestling. my mind it's yeah, it's like, come on, that's the argument. Taryn, we, let us go- drop our references. <laughs> you, so you have the championship. You keep it with you. You like to show it you off. Bring it everywhere. Bring it around. Cowboy would be great. Do you WWE. bring it? Do you bring it shopping? Do you bring it? Uh, yeah, like, uh, you're going everywhere. out on. You're going out to dinner with somebody on a reward challenge, yes. and you're bringing. You're everywhere. bringing the belts. Just you like Mr. It. or Mrs. Money in the Bank, you have to bring the briefcase everywhere you go. You never know when you'll need it. With all these twists, just bring it. Come on. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this wasn't like, tw- we would really get some twists like many seasons, 20 seasons later. But at the same time, like just, to, you know, it, it's a good workout at the very least. That thing looked a little bit heavy. Yeah, well, you know what? Proximity to the idol uh, has, has done something for Cowboy because he's going to have a dream. Yes. And in this dream, people were kidnapping people with rope and became mm-hmm. they became invisible and he couldn't defeat them. And so a shaman lady came and had all kinds of credit card applications. And she asked yeah. if he had an Ameri- American Express card or, or a visa. And he said, what, what do I need that yeah, for? <laughs> and she said uh, I, that you need three of that and three of that. Three and three. That's how you can defeat the immunity idol. You can flush it out. And I woke up and I go, whoa, plan voodoo. Plan voodoo. This, so, the, I don't know if first? anybody, have you guys seen uh, Black Dynamite? Not in a while. Nope. Because nope. this, uh, this is straight, this is straight, <laughs> straight <laughs> from the conspiracy unraveling from Black Dynamite. The, the, the twists and turns in this dream um, are fantastic. The uh, three of that and three of that. Boom! That's how you defeat the immunity idol. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so to, to on top of this dream plan Voodoo, the person he goes to pitch this to is Yule, the person mm. who currently has, has the immunity idol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll yep. agree it's a great plan. It sounds it's great. I don't, why did MX come into this? MX is That's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not accepted in some, I, this is so frustrating. And I, I'm really disappointed that they didn't become the sponsors of this, this season or the show. Maybe that's what they were going for. I Do can you imagine want to figure producers. out how to defeat uh, immunity idols? <laughs> oh, an American your MX card. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Thanks three of that and three of that. Was this the first time like somebody thought of splitting a vote for the idol? I mean, it's it's I think it's canonically, yes, the first time we see it on an episode. It is right. one of those things though where it's it also it's kind of common sense. I mean, yes. uh, it yes. doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a dream to figure out this uh, this ingenious plan, right? Um, yeah. But I do believe that it is the first time that it is expressed that like this is how we would uh, defeat a, a hidden immunity idol. Yeah, because this was only the second season with the super yep. idol, god idol, whatever you want to mm -hmm. want to call it. So yeah, that yeah that I mean, great plan. Uh, Innovative. Yeah, mm. just no execution like you just kind of no. so it. yes so so cowboy thinks that penner has the idol because penner has been to uh exile the most at this yes. point um mm -hmm. or at least close to the most him and him and adam i think are probably uh, up there candace has been uh, at least once or twice now um and so he thinks that that penner has the idol he wants to split the votes on penner and candace uh and and i and i think that you know yule in the confessional um, I think this might be a little bit out of context, actually, because he says it's a very interesting idea. It's ingenious. And he says, he, uh, I know I know, well, I know that Penner doesn't have the idol, but it's a good idea to take one of Penner or Candace out because yeah. original Raro hasn't lost anyone yet. And Not that's given person. them too much power. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think I think that what he's doing here is he's saying, like, this is a surprisingly like good move from cowboy not only not just the plan because the plan itself again is kind of common sense but the idea that he needs to take out candace and penner because he doesn't want them linking back up with original raro that's a good idea um yeah. and if and if yule wasn't in an alliance with them he might have gone along with it but he is in an alliance with them and i think a lot of people think like oh Yule, like cowboy goes to yule with the plan to defeat the idol and then yule goes no i don't want you to defeat my idol and that's why he votes out cowboy I don't really think that's how it went. I think that uh, I think that Cowboy was always going to be on the radar here, and um, and he was gunning for for Candace and Penner, who Yule was working with, and so of course uh, Cowboy is ultimately um, the one to go. And Penner Penner wants Cowboy gone here as well. So uh, <clears throat> I think that's more along the realistic lines of how it went. Yeah, that and like he was just impressed by Cowboy's thinking. He's like this. This man might, you know, be different from me generationally and, and just like kooky in some kind of sense, but that's a smart plan. And I don't want him around long enough to come up with a smart plan to get rid of me. I think you'll actually thought of Cowboy as a, not a, like a strategic threat or at least strategically thinking. And, and this, this is this is one like, of the things I really like about bit. Yule actually is that he I think he's very quick to um, sort of admit to himself when he was wrong about somebody. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna see it later with Parvati when he goes, "Wow, I underestimated her." Um, yeah. And I think he probably has a similar feeling with Cowboy here. Where he's like, "You know what? I think I might have underestimated Cowboy. He's a lot smarter than I than I took him for." Um, and uh, and so. Um, we're all, we are going to see that Becky is going to pitch to Yule that Penner is sketchy. This is when Yule is talking about like, everyone says that Petra, P Penner is sketchy, uh, Petra. uh, and, um, and Becky and Sundra have both pitched, I guess that Penner should, should have gone at that point. Um, and they could have been right here. I mean, again, ultimately Penner and we're going to find out that Penner and Candace were both planning on, even without the mutiny, planning on flipping on them. Maybe yeah. it was the better idea to stick with Cowboy and, uh, and Flicka as, Weird as that might have sounded, um, that may have been the better play ultimately, and this might have been a wrong choice uh, by Yule. Um, but uh, but you never, you know, it's 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 a tough call here. But um, yeah. but I, I'm kind of inclined to agree. Ultimately, they weren't super trustworthy. That said, 
Um, mm -hmm. Yule's connection to Penner, I think, is what kept him from flipping. And Yule's connection to Penner is what ultimately right. allowed him to succeed later on. And Yule had a better connection to Penner than I think anybody. Um, so, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I think he went with his gut on that one and it ultimately paid out. So, um, yeah. you know, it's I think it's a tough call to say it was definitely a mistake. Um, but uh, it's mm -hmm. definitely, a, a, you know, something that you can think about. Yeah, I wouldn't put that on the list of yeah. possible what if moments, to be quite honest, because mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. once they brought in Sundra too, like mm -hmm. Cowboy, like you said earlier, Cowboy and Flicker were not needed anymore and they weren't trustworthy. They were wild cards, which Yule says the worst thing to a logical player is a wild card. So yeah. remove the wild card off the board, stick with your man Pinner, who again, Yule says he can predict all his moves. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see where this could be argued as a misstep. Yeah, and I, I also felt like Yule, at least at this point in the game, especially at this point, and for yeah. a while, you know, he seemed very much like he knew what he was doing. He had it together. He he was, you know, playing chess and moving all the pieces around. And I I I mean, maybe it's just the results oriented thinking, but eh. Yeah, you made a lot of all, all of Yule's decisions were great in this game. I mean, yeah, uh, as some people would say, but this was actually a, a solid decision. Just knowing what you know, who Cowboy is as a character, and that he wouldn't be that necessarily useful later on. Yeah, for, and and you you says at this point, he says everyone trusts me, and everyone thinks that I'm in alliance with them. Like I feel kind mm -hmm. of bad, but like this is the peak of. Yule's mm. social strategic game, or at least social game, exactly. um, when it comes to, you know, he is the center of this tribe where he's got Cowboy coming to him with plans to take out the idol that he has. Uh, he's yeah. got uh, Sandra and Becky coming to him about taking out Penner. He's got Penner coming to him about taking out Cowboy. Uh, he is at the center of everything, um, including his own alliances. Like, th this is the peak of his power socially, um, and mm -hmm. it's it's going to quickly evaporate with this uh, upcoming mutiny. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but this, I think, is a representative... Uh, this, is, this is representative of um, the, uh, the power that Yule holds in the game outside of the idol and the challenge wins and and the one move with penner because a lot of people you know when they think about yule's game yeah. they think about the god idol they think about flipping penner um they don't i think remember how much power he has in this swapped tribe uh and uh and and where he put himself um here yes and yeah, the only yeah. reason why he has this power is yeah. because cowboy and flicka yep. their yeah. misstep yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah, and and the thing is, like Yule, I think is definitely, uh, definitely, I would say Yule's underrated at least. But this is a place where, like Yule, I don't often hear about Yule's social game coming up. I hear about his strategic chops, and you know, we we see his social game. We see him perform really well in challenges too. Like Yule is a really great all around player. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just the fact of, of, you know, who he was up against in this season and that that wasn't, maybe that's why he's a little bit underrated, but um, he, he put in a ton of work. And even if you look at the, the quote unquote God idol or, or looking at just some of the ways that he was able to, to maneuver through that man had to do a lot and you have to, you should respect it if you don't respect it, because I don't, I don't know how anyone could keep it together that much. Like he really did keep it together. Um, mm -hmm. But especially at, at this point, like picking off Cowboy is is a sophisticated, um, sophisticated move in this game. When to Mari's point, we talk about tribalism and how other people were making decisions. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so they're going to take out Cowboy here. He says he's trying to expose the queen, the hidden immunity idol. Um, but it's not going to play out the way that he thinks it will. Um, and uh, and that's it for Cowboy. Uh, what a character, though. What a what a what a fun. I'm 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 definitely sad that we haven't seen Cowboy come back uh, at any point. Um, you know, the, yeah. the originator of yeah. Plan Voodoo, uh, the uh, the guy. I mean, he 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 brought a lot of uh, fun to the season and uh, definitely, you know, solid casting here. Mm -hmm. he did, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think my biggest thing with Cowboy is, you know, he did have like some some political takes that he that he threw in there or kind of political takes. You know, oh, yeah, I, I, I feel like he would have fit in really well with like the Occupy Wall Street movement or something <laughs> like that. Um, and I was so curious about him. that I looked him up and, you know, 
he, like everyone else, did an interview in, in 2020, except his was a video interview, um, I believe in Vietnam with, with some random uh, some random host. I don't know. You could find it if you look it up. But he seems like a very nice guy. There was nothing surprising, nothing shocking, nothing jarring. No one needed to be canceled. I, I like Cowboy. And he looks, the, he, he looks generally the same, which is impressive 15 <laughs> years later. Yeah. But bring yeah. him back are we bringing him back <laughs> we should no uh, yeah <laughs> well they then get to watch the raro uh tribal council here um and uh this is going to be the end of christina um and uh they're also going to be kidnapping nate uh which turns out to be i think an undervalued um, not undervalued, but like uh, this is very important. And I think they play mm. down how important this becomes. Because yes. I don't think without the Nate kidnapping, I don't think the mutiny happens, uh, as we've, yes. uh, I think, a little bit already discussed. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, th this is sort of the end of Christina's storyline here as uh, she tries to ask for a second chance, but uh, to no avail here um, and uh, is pretty, uh, pretty unanimously voted out. Um, and then Nate heads over to, uh, to I2 and he's going to bond with Ozzy, uh, which is, you know, kind of going to come into play a little bit later. Uh, and then uh, importantly, we're not going to see it as much, but he also talks with Candace and, uh, they talk about coming together with, uh, Parvati and Adam when, um, when the merge hits. Um, and this is part of what makes her feel comfortable, uh, flipping over in, uh, in the mutiny. Yeah, this was at the point where Survivor most felt like the challenge. In a hmm. sense, I was like, um, wait, okay, both tribes going to tribal council. Okay, cool. Oh, kidnapping a guy. Sure. Uh, mutiny. Hmm. All right. Message in a bottle. It's like, what are y'all doing here? Like, what is happening? Like production was, I mean, if you listen to the, the <laughs> urban legends, production was very he heavy handed in this season as to not offend anybody again with yeah. the ra with the racial makeup of the season and stuff like that i don't know if i believe that but i do feel like yeah. this is I, the, every time something like this happened like a twist happened where both tribes both tribes go to council or when they have to kidnap nate nate for the reward challenge or the message in the bottle the double yeah. i i just kept thinking to myself how many times has this happened before and how many times has it happened after to you know to just to try and waylay those conspiracy theories of like oh they did this because they were trying to maneuver a certain outcome blah 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 you know what i'm saying well, so i mean you know not to to naysay conspiracy theories too much but it's also oh, like naysay them. <laughs> right well, like if they were if they were that concerned why would they have this theme in the first place you know what i mean yeah. like if they thought that yeah. they would need to step in after one tribe lost one challenge to switch up the, tri you know what, like, then why would they have designed it that way in the first place? Like, are they, are we really thinking that they're that stupid that they couldn't have seen it coming, but also that smart that they were able to flip it on the fly and like mm -hmm. cover it up and nobody, you know, uh, really knows for sure. Like, I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. this is a this is a place though where I think of casting a lot because I mean they said it on on you know in in the first episode like we got with with the Hiki tribe uh, there are a lot of city kids mostly city kids like if you're going to cast city kids they're not going to necessarily be great on Survivor and mm -hmm. this is one of my big frustrations with Survivor and some of their casting uh, I won't name names but there was there's a Survivor much later on in one of the recent seasons who did not actually really know how to swim but he was cast anyway and it's like why are you going to cast people who don't really have a chance of winning and doing well in the game and that it's frustrating to see I think um and Mari I'm sure you could relate to this too but it's just like we want the representation we see to be strong representation and strong representatives and and I mean sometimes casting doesn't it starts with casting and it doesn't really allow for that to happen and so you know, I'm, I'm frustrated, frustration, Frustra frustration. Say. Yes. Frustration. And I, and I also think adding on top of that though, too, is I, I can't, I, I don't, I understand why there are conspiracy theories because especially when we get to the mutiny, like they could not, I don't think they could have posited that it would be four on eight 
at one point like I don't I don't know if they really accounted for that so I just I just think that because again this season left it it told a great story but it left a a few hanging questions there that it was just rife for people to just make Mm -hmm. up their own narrative or, or to come up with different ways to explain things and again this is also coming from from somebody in myself that did not I don't follow these people after you know their tribe is done after survivor is done I don't look up I don't research what the producer said about it you know right so maybe there is an answer out there as it actually was, you know, they had to adjust something on the fly. But to me, I, I just think that they had a game, it played out, it played out into a strong storyline. So they just focus on that strong storyline. And un- unfortunately, a lot of other stuff got um, got left in, in the dust. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I, I really feel like they should have definitely gave us more on the Nate visit because Taryn's right. That was the one thing that could have explained a whole lot (laughs) if they had just threw in two seconds of Nate and Candace and Jonathan like scheming, you know, Mm -hmm. but it would have made sense. Oh my God, to a lot of stuff down the line, but we didn't get that. So we're all stuck here um, scratching our heads until we read, you know, questionnaires 15 years later. But I guess I guess the part that I take away from this looking at the editing and how it was all brought together is that, you know, maybe Survivor, we as Survivor fans were just different back then and the producers thought, ah, it's okay if we don't explain to them how this happened because mm-hmm. people don't care. And yeah. you kind of have to think that that was their rationale because there are people watching back it's they didn't forget to include certain things and I mean from the tv perspective maybe they thought it'd be more interesting to to kind of have these things pop up unannounced and then we could connect the dots in retrospect Mm -hmm. no clue but you know clearly there was a reason those things weren't included it might have just been for time but they could have included you know tied these these um, knots more closely together, however a phrase goes that I'm definitely forgetting. Um, (laughs) And, you know, I think that, that, uh, that just reflects where Survivor was at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Flicka is going to be the one to go here um, uh, over, uh, over Ozzy even. Um, It it was, it's Ozzy versus Penner, it seems like, but Penner seems to want Flicka out. um, And ultimately we're going to see that Flicka is going to go. Um, and uh, this tribal is actually kind of funny. Uh, Jeff is like basically calls Flicka out for not being strategic. Um, and Ozzy says he wants to make everyone fat. Um, so, uh, <laughs> then there, yeah. Uh, then Good we get the Ozzy. mutiny episode, uh, where we finally hear from Penner and Candace that they do not really want to keep the six, uh, in play, uh, the, from, from I2 right now that, uh, Candace wants to go back with Adam and Parvati and, uh, Penner is willing to go along with that. Um, and they want to take out Ozzy next so that they don't have to face him. Um, and, uh, then they go to the reward challenge where, uh, they are given 10 seconds. If you would like, you can mutiny and you can switch tribes. Um, and, Candace does a little step forward. And then the countdown continues. And at the last second, One. Penner steps forward as well. And just like that, it's four versus eight. Yeah, that, so this was so, this was just a, like a ridiculous moment in that, <laughs> like, what? What if everyone just decided to right? mute <laughs> If they had been given, I think, another five seconds, they would have realized, everyone go forward. <laughs> like, we're merging. <laughs> ten, 10 seconds is not enough. Like, maybe 15 seconds would do it. 20, I don't know. But I, I was just, look, I, I, I really wanted that. And then I, I wanted everyone to, to mutiny from that tribe. And then, yeah. like, one person mutinies back over. And so yeah. we have, like, a one-person tribe. That could be a nice setup. And- and this is where in my brain, I was like, you know, again, I'm, I'm used to consuming so much like a modern era survivor. And I'm like, there's mm-hmm. 12 of them. I was like, normally the merge comes at 12, you know, or, yeah. or, or 10, but like 
that was much later because I realized this is the first time we got the nine person jury with the three person, the final three. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily know that they, they did. You could tell they had an inkling. A candidate said she had an inkling that the merge would be, be coming soon. Um, but they, you know, they didn't think it was going to happen that day or anything like that. So Candace stepped forward, Jonathan impetuously uh, steps forward too. My thought, my question to you guys is, who do you think should have stepped forward on the other side? Do you think anybody should have stepped forward on the other side? I mean, you know, considering how things play out, uh, I mean, Brad. clearly <laughs> Brad should have, yeah. right? Um, yeah. He, it, it had to have taken a lot of sort of like the blinders must have been on for him because mm -hmm. he really should have known that he was the next person to go. I mean, two people came over from the other side. They still voted yeah. him out unanimously over that person mm -hmm. over those two people um so he should he should have flipped over it would have been the i25 and uh and he's probably at least in the final five um yes. mm -hmm. so that would have been a good idea um yeah. in addition to that um you know R rebecca and jenny certainly you can it's, make a case that maybe they yeah. should have flipped obviously i think that um maybe not rebecca but jenny probably felt like she had more of a right. power structure on the yeah, rarer side um and she mm -hmm. certainly did um but it, it wasn't actually the case once i and because again i think it's once jonathan and candace switch over it takes a second to realize oh hold up that gives yeah. adam and parvati yeah. way too much power i actually don't have power anymore right. maybe i need to switch over there i don't even like my game is just completely screwed out of nowhere um that's that's what i'm saying yeah and it should have been and it should have been even obvious more obvious than any other survivor because hello <laughs> like now you have all four of the original rural are on your tribe of eight yeah. like um look, again rebecca and jenny you know thought they had the five they thought they had nate adam and 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 poverty right uh we again we didn't get that we didn't see the cementation of that so we're just looking at them as like girl do you not see these people coming like jump over <laughs> like jump over i was I, I you know rewriting history because i know what's gonna happen here i know nobody's gonna gonna go but i was really i was like come on brad come on brad like yeah, but I, I like, I worry too that like if they gave them 10 more seconds or if Jeff gave them 10 more seconds, like what would happen? How would things swap? Would we have Brad and Jenny go over with, with Yule? Oh, right. and, and then, you know, it, it's like we get back to the tribalism thing too, yeah. where wouldn't that be dark? Like that's if, something yeah, you yeah. don't want in the season where it's like, oh, okay. We have all of our original tribes to choosing to be together again uh i don't know that's not great that, oh that would have been hilarious we, we got a lot of questions I mean, about like bad like hilarious. why why haven't yes. they reintroduced the mutiny twist why oh. <laughs> have we not seen this again um and i and i think the reason is all of the things that could have gone wrong here yeah. uh -huh. um and especially if it was if it was a regular twist or if even if it was like once every five to ten seasons just the fact that it exists it's so powerful and easily a tool that if you are in survivor um and you have an alliance that gets split up in a swap or something like that uh mm -hmm. if you're like hey if there's ever a mutiny you know what to do um it immediately yep. breaks the game mm -hmm. uh it's i i think i think ultimately even though it obviously brought some entertainment here it needed to be a one and done it's just too powerful uh to have in the game um that uh, you know part of the balancing of the game of survivor is the swapping and and you know splitting people up and the, they can't control who's on which side um and so if uh, if they have the power to just like transfer every, all one entire alliance to one side uh you know things could get either very lopsided or just so messy um that like like oh so all of this alliance is over here all of this alliance is over here like it could just uh, or like hey there are nine people on this tribe and three on this tribe like it could just yeah. get mm -hmm. so bad uh they can't control that enough that i i think it's um may maybe if they were to introduce this twist again i think you would need to say okay first person 
to step forward gets to mutiny. Mm-hmm. Nobody else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, something like that. Oh gosh. And I and you say it could have been bad. This was bad to me. This was bad. The a whole alliance was on one right. side. Yeah. They yeah, basically decimated that that tribe, and then you had a, a four on eight situation. Which thank you by the you know grace of the challenges, you know they were able to pull those challenges out so that they didn't mm-hmm. go down to two you know but uh apparently the mutiny this was the third time the mutiny was introduced Mm -hmm. to survivor it's the only time that it was actually taken up and um and that's the thing it was earlier introduced in thailand but that was on like day 13 and nobody uh took it it was introduced on pearl island six days like into the challenge so on day six that's when they they opted for the uh, mutiny and nobody took it so i mean I, uh, Taryn, I agree. Like the moment that you start to give them that much um, power to dictate the movement between tribes, then that's where it just gets, it can get ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And I think the other piece of it too is it leaves me thinking like, okay, how does production to, to look at that have to switch things up because right. of how the numbers were switched up mm-hmm. and do I mean assuming that they have to I don't I I just really wonder about that aspect of things and when people talk about well they they you know added in the message in the bottle I don't I struggle yeah. to believe that they came up with a message in the bottle twist to then throw into the game but I could believe that the timing of that might have had something to do with like the balance in the tribes Mm -hmm. and yeah because it's it it doesn't like clearly the rest of the game could have been anything depending on what the (laughs) players decided to do um Mm -hmm. you know luckily it wasn't it wasn't more messy but you're right it was it it was not great this was a bad situation that that we had the balance the way that did and like thankfully it worked out because it it led to this beautiful beautiful season but yeah man very I, yeah. entertaining very entertaining yeah. Sh- shocking lucky. even like I don't even, yeah shocking I, I, think thing thing dis- I think another thing to just i think another thing to discuss here is uh was this the right move for candace uh and penner right um and i think i think no um i Not think that uh they were fine like the plan yeah. was for them to flip at the merge which would have been very good for them um because at the time uh yule and uh and becky and sundra were perfectly fine taking out ozzy next if they lost Mm -hmm. and the other tribe uh was perfectly fine taking out brad perfectly Mm -hmm. fine taking out clearly rebecca after that like the other rara would have had the numbers for adam and parv and nate those three would have had the numbers regardless because they were voting up brad next and then those three would have been tight they would have had the votes um and uh in i2 uh they would have had the votes to take out uh Aussie um and uh and that would have been that would have been great for them uh Aussie Mm -hmm. and the plan was officially Sundra after that um though they would have considered taking out Penner at that point was sort of the discussion um but uh, but either way I mean I think that uh if they had waited just a little bit taken out Aussie taken out Brad or even if it was just Brad Rebecca whatever it was I think that uh it's it's better to not make it obvious that you've already flipped um because basically what happened is they they helped solidify one extra number in Aussie for I2 and it's that one extra number plus Penner that helped uh solidify it now results oriented wise right I think I2 probably wins those competitions anyway um and I think Uh that Raro probably loses Brad Rebecca and Jenny anyway um and I think that it goes to the merge at the same time with the same people and Pen, uh, Penner probably still votes with Yule, uh, and it probably all plays out the same. But I do think that at the end of the day, it was the better move to just s- stay put uh, and and not broadcast your intentions. Do you? For, oh, Sorry, keep going. On. I think for Penner especially, like that, was, it was just a bad move. Yeah, I mean, Penner got reputation. Very lucky that he was not voted out immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wonder if Penner just did that. Was he, I don't, I wonder why he did that. Was that he afraid that without Candace, that like being that number, he would be out 
sooner? I mean, because I mean, again, we all knew Ozzy was next. They knew Ozzy. Yeah, was next. I mean, he had yeah. about five seconds, right? Uh, yeah. Candace steps forward. She's the person that he thinks is his yeah. pair, his duo, his mm-hmm. safety in this whole group, and he's like, "Am I supposed to go? I mean, we're gonna flip. Am I? If I don't go, is that broadcast? Like, am I not gonna be allowed in at the merch? And I'm stuck yeah. with mm-hmm. this crew with no with no backup, true. like, mm-hmm. and." just ends up going for it um and yeah. ultimately i do think it's the wrong call but i can understand why it happened yeah yeah it, yeah yeah it, it was it, it was the wrong call for them because they were they had the the numbers and this is why i just cannot respect candace's game because she, she wasn't thinking past so i want to go i want to go hang out with adam and, and parvati like great girl gowns beautiful gowns and all that but she really did not think that through and she she literally was like i just want to i just would miss adam and parvati i don't really i don't plan to go to the the final five with these guys i just want to be with adam and parvati and it's just like that's great it's good okay you know you're not going anywhere anytime soon and like you said like she ends up saying later she knew at the merge she was gonna flip so it's just like why <laughs> like why did you do- you just needed to get over there that right now like now yeah Yeah. get me over there and i mean if candace is the only one to go over i think that that also looks different than candace and jonathan going over because candace could justify well adam's over here i really wanted to be with him like it could it's just you could frame it a little bit differently Mm -hmm. um don't think that would have uh lasted past the season but that's another thing Mm -hmm. um and you know i i i i just don't i I think that Candace, uh, I understand her choice and Jonathan kind of just panicked. Like it really did look like he had to force himself yeah, to, to take that step. But mm-hmm. I mean, we, we would probably all do the same thing in the, in the same situation yeah. with a second to spare. So I think the outcome would have been similar. Just they would both be in a better spot, even if it was just Candace that went over. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mm-hmm. do feel like I, I, I think that because yeah. even with Candace just going over, they still have the the votes to take out Brad and, and Rebecca and Jenny or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, Jonathan is in a good spot with I2 because again, oh, now we're the I25, like officially we're together. If we lose, Ozzy goes home and then we merge. And then at that point, Jonathan could have actually really picked his side and then nobody would have been too mad at him, I don't think um because you know at he this was point, he's a, yeah he was a, mm-hmm. he was a swing boat boat and and they would probably be both be vying for him so yeah it, even so even if they if they didn't step or just one of them stepped off they would have probably it would have probably been better for them but just the fact that both of them went over is what was mm-hmm. the the decider and it's a big emotional hook in the season um right. because yeah. immediately I, I i mean from this point forward the i24 are the underdogs and they don't have mm-hmm. to try very hard but they are going to help this along but this the second you see it it's wait a minute all of a sudden four people it's yule becky sundra and ozzy versus eight eight yeah on the other it's like side a hockey team like and, they can just <laughs> and in, in, in addition like you're not I think I think as a viewer, you're not really meant to be the biggest fan of Adam. Uh, and no. to this point, you're kind of like not sure where to go on Candace. When Candace f- mutinies, you're like, how dare she for that <laughs> yeah. re- to be with Adam? Really? And now these people mm-hmm. are screwed. Um, and uh, and you're just like this. It's a big emotional hook uh, that will drag you across the rest of the season. Um, yep. And this is one of the few seasons uh ever where like the challenges all of a sudden mattered so much to me watching this Mm -hmm. every like there's no comparison to like no other season of survivor have like the challenges have never gripped me that much uh watching live for the first time not knowing that the i24 are going to survive this uh knowing that every single challenge was life or death for them um even the reward challenges the one that comes immediately after this i'm like come on like it mattered to me and it mattered to them too they win this reward 
and they are crying uh, mm. that in relief that like we can still do this we have hope um, yep. and and they bond together on the reward they see each other's families and out of nowhere they become this tight group that is uh, determined to not just roll over and die and, die. Um, yeah. and, uh, and over the course of the next couple of episodes they make sure to include the frustration in Raro. Uh, every <laughs> single challenge, they make sure to have plenty of reaction shots to people yep. in Raro. Oh my God, no, really? Mm -hmm. Like they are being frustrated as the overlords, uh, they're being beaten by the by the plucky underdogs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh and it's it's such it's such a great sequence uh in the season uh, it's it's one of my favorites um it's so much fun to just watch the i24 go undefeated in competitions from here but i think the thing that's that's beautiful about even that moment in the mutiny is that it really does establish the four and not just the four collectively but even though we haven't really gotten to know Becky and Sundra, they take on new importance and new life. And um, to your point, Taryn, about the reward wins, I mean, I think their their first reward win, they go on to, it might've been the Warriors Welcome Reward, um, maybe that might, I think that was the one where they were, they were just celebrated and mm -hmm. it almost, it, it put on this like next level of like, Ooh, this is important. This group is special. This group, they're the chosen ones. And I kind of felt like that was what I was getting at least watching this back. It all just felt so good. It felt so happy. And they get to send <laughs> Candace to exile. Candace. Who's yeah. like, I <laughs> waited so long to get back to Adam and Parv. And I may just mutinate and now I'm stuck here in exile. I can't even be with them. And you're just like, yes. Yes. She should have, she should have seen it coming. Yep. She should have seen it coming. I was and and you know, by the third time she's there, I'm like, am I supposed to feel sorry yeah. for her? I don't. <laughs> it's like, you know, you could at least have your little, like, you know, you could have your little setup, Candace. Like, get comfortable, figure it out, like settle in because you're gonna, you'll be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I love Ozzy saying mutineers are the first people to die. And I'm like, yes, like, come with it. Because I was at that point, I was hoping, yes, get rid of Candace or, or uh, Pinner first, you know? Yes, course, Ozzy's we, been. We don't get that, but, you know. He's been I, reading I some that. books. He's yeah. been reading some books. Yeah. I don't know which ones, but yeah. They're yeah. The, I mean, they weren't the first ones out, too, which is the, the interesting thing there. But that the tension just took a new took on a new level of weight with uh with that one i i love it i loved it i have i'm gonna go back and watch it again i this is like my favorite part of uh definitely of this season easily but i don't know how you could and we'll talk more about this for but i don't know how another tribe could match up to just this tribe and and not only what they did, but all that they represent for so many people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the immunity challenge here, uh, we get uh, uh, Penner going, oh, oh, please, Jeff. Like, what? <laughs> oh, please. And then uh, Jeff does my favorite thing, which he then commentates. Jonathan getting frustrated with me. Day 21. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then we get oh, you brilliantly hacking this um competition shout out to peridium for uh, highlighting how they they have the cannonball in the boat challenge where they're supposed mm -hmm. to line up the glass bottom of the boat with this target yule says forget all that i'm looking directly into this yeah. <laughs> this hole and we're gonna launch the cannonball like that which is just amazing like again when you're watching this even on the rewatch it's, it's great to see but nothing kind of beats that first time where they mm -hmm. they go down two buoys to one yeah and you're like oh god no <laughs> and then yeah. yule's like you know wait you know what Look, no let's do it like this and then, he, yeah. and then he figures it out right when raro is getting stressed out and they're like oh god and they're like stop looking at them let's do it this way and and Yule, Yule pulls it out, they win. And, and again, they send them, they send the, the new Raro to the, the uh, tribal council. And it's just, it's a great feeling. It, it really is. It's one of those things where you're like, yes. Yeah. And then it's like, now they got to continue to do it. It was like the playoffs for the I-24. Like if they mm -hmm. lost, they knew it was, it was done. Yeah. yeah. And so between Jonathan and Brad, the argument is, well, Penner can't go back. Now that he's mutinied, yes. they're going to be so pissed. Mm -hmm. He can't go back, but Brad can. Um, and I think that was a 
decent enough argument in this case right yeah. um but ultimately mm -hmm. we do see that penner does go back so not that yeah. true um and uh and they are going to end up voting brad out here um but not before uh jenny has a great line here she says they're gonna pick off i2 like zits that was yeah. unnecessary. <laughs> mm -hmm. They should have. They should have edited that. Actually, someone should go and edit that out now. It's just gross. Just uh, yeah. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Um, uh. And yeah, Candace talks about like it just seemed like they were having such a good time over here. I just really wanted to come over. <laughs> exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Like, Adam must be a good liar. Like again, Nate. The, it's uh, the smile. <laughs> this is to me this is where nate jenny and rebecca this is where you're like y'all wake up like yeah. wake up and you know what I mean? like the original row row there are four of them over here there are four of them over here but you guys are like no new row row not new new row row new row row <laughs> the middle group yeah row row. we're gonna stick together the row row five yeah or whatever brad, brad but, also no. says here uh he says uh jeff asked him do you trust this tribe uh, right. and he's like no i don't trust the entire tribe trust is a big word for me um it's like I don't, not a big hmm. word for other people uh and also if you don't trust these people why didn't you mutiny yeah yes. that was a, <laughs> right. yeah, I, yeah just like say you trust them yeah. and just move on like mm -hmm. okay jeff this isn't gonna be in the episode anyway sure i yes. like them the great let's go so I'll give them Brad. I will give them Brad. I will give you this one mm -hmm. vote where I'm like, okay, you guys thought you had it in the pocket. You you said, okay, we can give up Brad and maybe we'll pick off Pinner and Candace later. The rest of the moves that the the rest of the raw road makes from here on that now out, I'm like, this A is mess. on you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I feel and, and Jenny yeah. sees it too. In the next episode, she's like, I'm right. concerned that Candace is getting in with Adam and breaking up my five. Uh, I mean, they're basically making out together at this point. Um mm -hmm. and, uh, and she voiced that. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the fact and the fact that she voiced it made it worse for her because mm -hmm. then Adam was like She's concerned about me. Now I'm concerned about her. Um, and uh, and so like, like, oof, oof. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't get a lot from her perspective about like, I mean, we get a little bit at the end of this episode, but like, uh, eh, it seems like, yeah, Rebecca's not doing too well in the challenges. So <laughs> like, she's like your closest, I thought, ally, right? Like who else at this point? Sometimes I just wonder, I'm like, when did people truly give up? Like, when did they really realize, like, I have no chance in this game? And this, uh, like, a lot of people uh, gave up before they were actually out of the game. And I wonder if this was the place for for mm -mm. them. I mean, Jenny was was putting up some, right. I don't know, Rebecca, she... We she, don't know, but that, this, this is where we get it. Like in episode 10, immediately going into the challenge, Ginny says like, yeah, you know, we voted Brad out last night. It's fine because the Raro five, uh, which is me, Ginny, mm -hmm. Nate, Parv, Adam, and Rebecca, yes. we're strong. We're going to stick together. Um, and this is the first <laughs> time we hear of them. And it is the last. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. in the immediate next scene, it's Adam telling Candace, oh, Jenny is worried. Um, Jenny is worried that, you know, I'll pull, uh, I'll, you'll pull me away from her. But amongst all of this, we still get more Pinner is like, we don't trust Pinner, even among Candace right. and Adam. Candace says she just does not trust Pinner. Nate has been, was banging the Pinner drum. <laughs> <laughs> which of course um, um way in advance here so it's like this is why at episode 10 i lose all of my f's to give for jenny and rebecca because mm -hmm. why well, didn't you push for pinner to go like what was happening it here? seemed but like it was possible too yeah. it did um especially in the preview i mean the thing is i think they had more sway when it came to penner versus brad um, and I think that it seemed like yeah. Adam, who was initially on board to keep Penner, uh, after Candace comes back and says, no, nah, I hate Penner. He, he talked trash about you, Adam, was like, OK, Penner should go then. Um, mm -hmm. It seemed like at that point there was an opportunity there to actually take out Penner. Um, and if Brad flips, Brad flips. 
at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're still up 7-4 seven, four, seven, four after that one. Uh, if they mm-hmm. lose again, sure, you might be in trouble. But then you vote out Brad. Um, and at least now you've got Penner got Like, you know, there, there are a bunch of different ways that they could have gone about this. And it just... Uh, it's it's hard to criticize because I don't know exactly what the thought process was because we didn't sure. really hear from them too much. Uh, mm-hmm. But it definitely does not look great. And I think it well, was Nate, right? Nate was it, was, is. We'll see. Yeah. Nate Adam, was the one who Adam Brad. convinced Nate that 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 Penner should stay. Um, and yeah. then after was after he heard from Candace, he was like, actually, I want Penner to go. But Nate had already been convinced and was like, Nah, you were right. We need to we need to keep Penner. I wonder if this was a situation though where they saw the situation they saw that that Penner was distrusted that he wasn't really liked and they thought they really thought that mm. he could be picked off in that case and then you know by the time that Rebecca's voted out it's kind of well it's definitely too late for Jenny to <laughs> do anything at that point but yeah. I I'm just th- trying to put my myself in their shoes in that era of survivor and mm-hmm. I mean they you know we if we, there are people who are being picked off here throughout this season just because they're not really liked or because there's some tension based on the personalities. And so I wonder if that's what they were holding on to. Like, well, they like me more than they like Jonathan. And it's like, well, that's not enough in this, in this game. Yeah. And again, not only Jenny, I should also say Nate. I was mad at Nate for this episode too. Nate can get it as well because sir, uh, okay you got brad out again i will give you brad as a freebie but nate from this point on keep saying we Tell can't him. trust pinner i can't trust pinner pinner can't be trusted we should get rid of pinner oh but you guys want to vote out rebecca that's my home girl but yeah i think it's time what <laughs> What? He not, what he did not like any of those people he was bitter about this twist he didn't want anyone from his tribe around he just wanted to get <laughs> rid of hiki he was Uh-oh. like look the Uh-oh. way to solve this i didn't want to be here in the first place is just like get rid of all of them and maybe they'll forget maybe they'll just think i was the only hiki to, to not start you calling you know? nate a crab in a barrel not not you i mean not i'm you. just <laughs> saying it i'm seeing patterns and <laughs> nate's i'm sure he's great now yeah you know. uh, nate shout out to wherever you're at but our foot will remain on your <laughs> Could neck. not find him <laughs> um well so so this is this is an interesting interesting bit here uh the jury is going to start with brad uh going out um and they let the players know um and i it made me wonder i don't know if uh anybody knows this but it made me wonder did the players then anticipate that it might be a final three um because hmm. You know, I, I think we like to look back and be like, they never even knew the concept of a final three. It had never been right. done before. They didn't know it was a possibility. But like, it's not that hard to guess, right? Like, it's not that hard to conceptualize that maybe there's a final three. Okay, the jury starts now. Uh, if we go to a final two, that leaves 10 jury members, which leaves the possibility <laughs> for, for a tie, which is kind of weird. What if they do a final three? Now, that also leaves the ability for a tie, but um, but it's I would be, you know, watching Big Brother, the live feeds, there's a lot of speculation that never makes the episodes. People talk about all kinds of wild theories. I have to imagine that one of the theories that they talked about, why is the jury starting now, had to have been. What if there's a final three? And they're never going to show it in an episode because they don't want to see the people predict that there's a final three ahead of time. Um, But they didn't look that surprised at the end of the season when they said they were well, final three. Yeah. I mean, like again, they wouldn't know to look out for a fine. They didn't look that surprised, Taryn. That was that was notable, and that's one of the things I noticed. But like, uh, maybe they just didn't know that it was possible that there could be a final three. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I, with, I'm I with you. I think yeah. they probably stretched. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, they, I'm like yeah. that's a stretch. Like they they weren't shocked enough, you know. So at, like yeah, at like, least like some of them. Yeah, I mean the, the, <laughs> like you know, we know Yule. He's he's out there thinking right. through everything. He's talking Crunching about percentages. He's talking yes. about possible different things that could happen. I, I'm I would be surprised if Yule hadn't considered the possibility of there being a final three, given where the jury started. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. So message in a bottle. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, so yeah. So uh, first, I, I again, they continue to just dig into this underdog story. Um, I two wins their third challenge in a row. I'm telling you, go back and watch these challenges. Look at how many shots yeah. go to Parvati and and Raro as they're frustrated. Uh, I love this. They go. 
All together, one, two, two three. three. Candace, Candace goes to exile. Oh. Uh, it's just there's so much, uh, just like, uh, just like yes. Um, uh, Candace gets sent there. She's it's upsetting. Uh, hopefully, it's a character building experience. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a compass digging challenge, right? This one. Yeah, th this is like the I think the quiz is the, like the yeah like study up oh, for the mm -hmm. um for the both right. of the challenges involved yeah. like studying stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so yes, then we get a message in a bottle, a note containing significant information that the losing tribe will take with them to tribal and open. Then, um, this is this is an interesting one because obviously there are a lot of like conspiracy theories regarding this bottle right. twist. Um, I guess the conspiracy would be. Because I don't really read them, but uh, I guess the conspiracy would be that there were different bottles. Bottles, right? And <laughs> two that like, people get voted out. Like Jeff was Nobody holding two out. bottles behind his back, <laughs> and when uh, when I two wins, he's like, "All right, this is the bottle, Ferraro." <laughs> and if I two had lost, it would have been a bottle that was like, "Nobody gets voted out." Um, but uh, I mean, that's a little silly to me. Yeah. Well, I I also just I yeah I don't. I just don't really get the problem with the message in the bottle. It sped things up. It's it accelerated the pace of the mm -hmm. game. I I don't think that you know with everything we saw with the I two four like they were solid. They weren't going to tribal, so they wouldn't have ended up with that bottle just based on their challenge challenge performance alone. And so I I have no problem with the bottle. I, I, like I mean a, yeah, I like a good bottle. You know, <laughs> I think with I mean. Let's be honest. If the bottle doesn't exist, I two is still probably at least 75, 80% odds of winning that final challenge anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're mm -hmm. still going into the merge 5 4 or 4 5, uh, mm -hmm. probably. Doesn't really change all that much. Um, you know, Jenny says that if she had been given a little more time, she would have been able to stay. I don't know if that's true. Um, Maybe it yeah. is, but uh, that's very, very difficult to know for sure, obviously. And it, yeah, and again, like the challenge, the, the one thing that I hate with the challenge is they, they don't give them enough information to strategize around. They introduce tw twists that they can't strategize around. And that's the only one thing about that message in a bottle thing that I really did not like because they they vote somebody out and then he's like, oh, immediately you're gonna uh, vote somebody out now again. Uh, like again, if this happened in modern Survivor, then everybody would have gotten up and started, you know, chatting and stuff Well, that's like something that. to talk about. But yeah. but just, yes. just to, to finish off the speculation as well, like even if we say the bottle twist uh, doesn't happen, Jenny has more time, she manages to convince them to, to vote out Penner instead, Jenny's not willing to flip at the merge. Uh, they're still voting for Yule. He's still playing the idol. Somebody oh. from Raro is getting voted out, probably Adam. Um, oh, and man. then they're going to rocks. Or Jenny flips then, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's still, like, at, at worst, like, a 50-50 shot at that point. Right. Um, whether I2 or Raro moves forward. So it's not like Raro is, like, super, super definitely screwed by this twist. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and at that point, Jenny was so down for her Raro people, which I just... But she gets voted out. Yeah, and they're the ones that made that mistake. That they make the call to vote out Penner or, or vote out Jenny over Penner. Right. Um, yeah. Yes. And and yes. they treated it, Penner the way that they did to make it obvious to him that, that he was not very well respected. Right. So. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. They they hung that Penner versus Jenny vote on who will flip to the other side. The funny thing is, right. Jenny says that she would have stayed loyal to the soil, and then they like zits. <laughs> They like put that. emphasis that Pinner could never go back because of the mutiny. So they they hinged it on that. I, I will I will gladly say they hinged that hinged that more on that than you know their original tribe designations, aka their ethnicities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah. they yeah. really just thought uh, Jenny would would be able to flip. Maybe they based that off of her original tribe. But um, I just I feel like I I I feel sorry that Jenny goes out like this. But again, like I said, why did you let Rebecca go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I just think like the, the other thing that stands out to me about this vote in particular is just we get all, we're getting all of these emotions, you feel the emotion with I too, then you go over and it's like, okay, bye, Rebecca. Bye, Jenny. Yeah, good so knowing true. you. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's like we, we don't we don't 
care we them. enough mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. moment. And we didn't know them enough, right? And yeah. it, there mm -hmm. was there are definitely seeds there with with uh, with Jenny seeds, baby. Uh, yeah. But you know, we I just wish there would have uh, been some more weight there because it, it was kind of notable that we did get like brad rebecca jenny picked off after that we pushed get out the door off. that could be a much bigger mm -hmm. story but mm -hmm. there was not really a story there because the attention was somewhere else was I, yeah I, tribe, I think they really. were i think they were banking on you're hoping that candace goes it doesn't happen and you're kind of like <sighs> you kind of you kind i think what they were banking on was you don't want you don't want penner to go um because he's mm. he's a compelling character to this point he's clearly one of the main characters um, yeah. and, and I think that's yeah. a mistake. I think because because I don't think that everyone wanted Fenner to stay. Um, no. And also, uh, I think that uh, that's not enough. I think that I, I think that time has shown that the more invested you are in every character, the more exciting the whole show is uh, rather exactly. than hinging it on, on on just a few. But I mean, now that say, Matt like, mentions it, do you think yeah. that yada, 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 the whole it, Rebecca, <laughs> Jenny, Nate, <laughs> Brad, Rebecca, Jenny, Nate thing? That's what it like, felt like to me. To, like, yeah, so that you didn't you didn't think about where it was going. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Not, yeah. As, as we're talking, I'm like, wait. Well, actually, you know what? More more generally, like this one thing that this season definitely doesn't do is it doesn't it doesn't really make anything of the fact that like so many people of color are voted out or from the you know from those tribes are voted out. I think like the first seven votes are all from the oh, yeah. uh, like from those three tribes not from the original raro mm -hmm. um and so it's it's just a it's a mess uh and it, <laughs> it's weird that it didn't come up especially for a season that was about race or at least allegedly mm -hmm. about race i don't i you know now that i think about it, maybe the season it wasn't about race at all no, it, was, yeah. it was about, it was about making on. race very prominent and then sweeping it under Episode the rug. One. <laughs> that, yes. that was literally it. Let's make it race like, as prominent as possible and then yeah. be like, oh nope, there's no such thing as race. Yeah. And that was like the like the in, in a weird way, like their races took took place of the actual character development for a number of yeah. people for the yeah. editors. And so I, I, yeah, I, I think that I, what you will. I, yeah, I think this is a good point too, because I, I think what happened is they were like, okay, at the start. It's divided by a race, so on and so forth. Then they then in the middle when all the white people were voting everyone <laughs> so else out. Don't talk about it. They were like, <laughs> don't race what? Nope. And nope, then at the end, nope, after yeah, all nope. four of the white people were voted out back to back to back to back, they were like, race. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh man. And they they really so look. I we need we need sandwich. to call it. Yeah, a race sandwich. That's right. <laughs> The amazing race. Uh. <laughs> okay, Ooh, well, it's time. Story, it's time for the merge. It's time for the merge, um, and uh, and this is actually big news for Raro. This is actually like a very good thing because they were expecting that you know this this could have happened at eight. Uh, it would have made sense to go to eight and merge at eight. Uh, that's an even number. Um, but they did go to the merge with Raro having the numbers over I2. It should have spelled disaster for I2, but uh, not if Yule has anything to say about it. This is the classic. This is the, the move that everyone remembers Yule making. And um, it's it's kind of a complicated one because you, it's the logic by itself isn't 100% there. And you're right. you're looking at two very logical players in Yule and Penner, um, but uh, but the, the the logic doesn't always work. And there are a lot of questions I think about like why does Penner do this? Because because again the logic isn't a hundred percent there. So uh, I want to kind of examine this if if we can. Please. Um, yeah. So uh, so first of all, uh, before we get to the the actual flip, um, Penner is gonna say that these kids are getting faded. <laughs> I just yeah. needed to point that out. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't know what that was. I apologize <laughs> that Rob is not here to do the Penner impressions. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll the, have two more chances. It's, you uh, don't have a good Penner impression, Taryn. I mean, uh, I I don't, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, this for me, the impressions come from just like uh, immersion therapy of watching people on the mm -hmm. feed so much that I can't help but imitate them. Survivor doesn't have enough. Not um, at all. 
So uh, these kids are getting faded. Uh, and <laughs> we're here to win a million dollars. That's a one with six zeros next to it. Uh, mm -hmm. What are we doing? Yeah. Um, Nate talks about wanting to make relationships on the other side. He likes Ozzy. Mm -hmm. Ozzy likes him. Um, Adam starts flirting with Parvati, which is really weird. Uh, he says, great day. Best day since I've been here. <laughs> I yeah. don't, I don't think that that was, I'm, look, I don't really think that was like a flirt, flirt situation. Yeah. Candace was not threatened by that situation. Because well, a little know bit about later it on. Is the question. She right, they knew. were all drunk. She knew. Like, we, okay, later on, later on, we did see Candace and Adam and they were, Harvey yes. cuddling, yes. canoodling, uh, if you will. But it's one thing um, to be okay with a with a triple mm -hmm. canoodle, and another thing to be okay with a private canoodle that you weren't involved yeah. with. Yeah, was well, this the original but... throuple? Let me just know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, just gotta... this, was, this was amazing because we got to see people play Survivor drunk. Like, <laughs> immediately after they stepped off the boat, Nate is talking to us. He's like, yeah, um, they want, you guys are going to be picked off, uh, obviously, but I like you, Ozzy. It was like they were all drunk. Yeah. The, the young kids were drunk. They were faded. They were faded faded they were yeah. lit, whatever you want to call on that moonshine <laughs> yeah but it was kind of funny i was like oh my god these people should not be having these serious game times this is a great <laughs> merge episode i really love this merge episode it's one of my favorites between everyone getting faded uh <laughs> you explaining why elephants can't climb trees yes. um and the, the 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 flip with the idol um it's there's a lot of great stuff here so Yule comes up with the plan to flip Penner with the idol. He says he's rational. He will buy into a rational argument. So he needs to come up with as many rational reasons as he can. Ultimately, I think it's going to come down to an emotional component. But he needs the rational uh, like layer on top in order for it to, to go down for Penner, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. Penner tells him, at this point, there's no way that I would flip. You guys would never trust me. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and here's, here's, I think, the crux of this. I think Penner wants to flip. Uh, I think yeah. he always wanted to because he had a better relationship with Yule. He liked Yule more. He went back to Raro, and yes, they didn't vote him out, but they didn't talk to him like Yule talked to him. They didn't right. talk to him like an equal. He was never with them, really. And so I think he wanted to go back, but he knew that he couldn't. He was a rational player, and rationally, he couldn't justify it. And so basically, what he gave Yule was... You need to t you need to give me enough of a rational reason to do this, <laughs> and here's how you do that. If you have the idol, then you can threaten me, and then I will have to vote with you, uh -huh. and that's how I would do this. Um, and so Yule says, "Well, how do I know that?" And this is the question that usually gets asked: How do I know that you're not just telling me that you will vote with me so that we vote for somebody else? And then you can still vote for me. I have to play my idol and somebody else gets voted out instead of you. Um, and uh, and Penner is essentially just like, I, I, that's you're, we're just going to have to make that call, right? You're just going to have to trust me. Um, and uh, he said it would be a fantastic twist if I was forced to flip back. And again, I think that forced yeah. language is key here. Um, and Yule's going to talk a little bit more in the reunion uh, about this. Um, now, they skip ahead, or we're skipping ahead in the episode to get to the second half of this after Ozzy wins immunity. Um, Yule ends up showing Penner the idol. He says, uh, and I love this, he's, I'm asking you for both of our six to become my ally again. Um, <laughs> and uh, he says, I always... I, I want to go to the final two with you, Penner. I mean, you've made enemies. Uh, like, you'd yeah, be a great yeah. person to sit with. Um, and uh, and so ultimately, uh, Penner is going to come along with this. Now, in the reunion, Yule says that he, in addition to this, convinced Penner that uh, the only reason uh, original Raro hadn't voted him out yet was because they thought that he had the idol, which makes sense because right. Cowboy thought Penner had the idol. I think a lot of people thought that he might have the idol. And I think that's why Penner... One of the reasons why Penner is reluctant to tell the rest of Raro, don't vote Yule, because I know he has the idol. I think he's, okay. he's because he goes to them, he says, don't vote Yule, I think he has the idol. And they're like, he mm -hmm. doesn't have the idol. And he's like, listen to me, he has, I think he has the idol. Um, and my question is, why is he saying, he showed me the idol, I know he has the idol, yeah. let's not vote for him. 
Um, but, you know, one of the reasons why I think he's not doing that is because then they can go to Yule and be like, hey, he told us that you have the idol. Is that true? And then Yule knows that Penner has betrayed him. And now Yule's voting for Penner. And now he's yep, Penner might go. Voting for Penner, um, yeah. But in addition to that, I think he's also concerned, even if I do go to them and tell them that and we convince Yule or whatever it is, um, then uh, then now they now they know that I don't have the idol. Uh, and where is my position with them? Um, and then mm -hmm. final thing on this, I think, is in the next episode, uh, Penner is going to say in confessional, the truth is I'd rather play with the I2 people and I'd rather yep. see one of them win. One of them win. win. Um, yeah. And so I think when you combine all of these things, it really starts to make sense why this happened. And I think it's it's even more impressive from Yule's end, the, the, the logic that he's able to put forth to give uh penner the path to do so but the emotional mm -hmm. undercurrent the relationship that they had to make it happen i also believe that this didn't need to be a god idol to make this happen i think if you has a regular modern mm -hmm. idol i think the same thing happens because again i don't think the specifics mattered all that much i think he just needed enough of a rational push uh to to go in that direction um so i i do believe that whether this was a god, god idol or a regular idol if they get down to 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 nine uh with four v four with penner in the middle i think penner chooses yule's side every time as long as he has an idol and honestly even if he didn't i think there's a small chance he could have managed to make that flip happen but uh i think the idol definitely helped uh ease the, the pavement there um and uh and that is my rundown of the uh, the penner flip <laughs> Yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm still frustrated though that nobody, nobody took, nobody just said let's vote Yule out here. Like let's let's do, and it makes sense for all of the reasons you explained. But just at the bare bones, it's like we, if if I'm Jonathan, I I need to fl I want to flush that idol out so that Yule isn't this all powerful person going into that the end game. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm still I'm still frustrated frustrated by it. but it also i give credit to to yule for being able to make it work and kind of make make that argument uh fly and and you know i i think the bigger problem which totally makes sense but everyone is like too self-interested where it's like mm -hmm. well i would take you up but i don't want Yule to take me out next and it's like Later on, we do eventually, we do get some, a point where somebody, which we'll talk about, says, hey, just like vote Yule out. I'll end up going out anyway, but at least you'll mm -hmm. flush the idol. And like, I, I just wish they would have figured out a plan around that because it would be more fun. But it, I, yeah. again, I, I think that this is like the, the evolution of maybe this is the evolution of strategy. I don't know. Yeah. I, I will say, I do <laughs> think that Penner made the right call here if there is a yes. right call. I think that after the mutiny, he was basically drawing dead. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but that's what but, I was about to say. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. yeah. But I mean, I think ultimately, when it comes to which side did he have a better path with, it probably was the uh, the I two side. I think that there. Yeah. If let's say, you know, Adam isn't if he's able to manage the betrayal a little bit better and Adam doesn't make a deal with Yule that I'll vote for you in the end if you take out Penner before me, then you do start to look at, okay, Ozzy's definitely a way bigger threat than Penner. Let's take out Ozzy. They're never voting for Penner in the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Penner might make Final Four at that point and have a Oof. halfway decent chance of making Final Three. Uh, he's still probably never going to win the game, but uh, but I do think he has a better path forward with the I2 group than he does with the, uh, the Raro group. Yeah, and yeah, that's and exactly it, what I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say at that point, Pinner knew that he was on borrowed time. He he said it, I think, on the previous episode. Um, and he knew that at this point, he was going to be kingmaker, I think. I think he mm -hmm. knew he was going to be the kingmaker. And he said, point blank, period. I like I24 way better. Like, <laughs> I really yeah. do. And I want one of them to win if it's if it's not me. So, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. It was a logical explanation, but it was also an emotional one. So I love how yeah. you put that, Taryn. But Matt, also here, like I at first I thought the same thing. I was like, yo, just flush that idol, dog, like just flush it. But it's still it's still like better to kind of not know you're definitely going at this point, yeah. like with the nine, like it, it just it's just better to to hedge your bets and that's why uh jonathan was able to move to move the vote off of adam onto nate like why didn't why didn't pinner bring that up you know what i'm saying like in yeah. order to kind of mitigate 
uh, Adam's, Adam's like anger towards him because I was like, dang, that sucks. Nate gets taken out because he's the least. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think he should. I think he shouldn't. He said, I feel some, I feel like I need to reciprocate. Adam saved me uh, yes. on Raro. I don't, I mm -hmm. want to re reciprocate that a little bit here in the flip. Adam did not care at all. Uh, no. Right. Yeah. And so I think, I think that was a mistake from Penner. I think that he should have let them take out Adam. Um, Adam leaves and, uh, and like, is Nate going to be as mad as Adam? He'll be mad, but not the same level of vindictive, I don't think. And and, and Nate yeah. has that connection to Ozzy, which is a little bit threatening, and it causes a little bit more sort of like it's not as solid anymore. It's not Raro versus I2 as much anymore because Nate is gonna be trying to get with Ozzy. And Ozzy mm -hmm. and and you know, Yule and and Sundra and Becky don't have the best relationship. Uh yep. so I, I really feel like that was that was a mistake. Um, but uh, but again, one of the things that I think people think about is like, why didn't he go through with the plan to vote somebody else uh, or, or mm -hmm. get them to vote Nate? And then he votes. Oh, yeah. You will still flushes the idol or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the explanation there is um, I think he explained this a little bit later. Like, let's say that, that means he's siding with Raro. It's still going to rocks in the following tribal mm -hmm. which is not a great situation for him even if he does manage to land that and now he's pissed off that other side um, yeah and he's probably pissed off measure. his own side too because he made a sneaky mm -hmm. play to get the vote off of himself and onto somebody else without telling them um and so again it was kind of a no-win situation but i i do think he went with the right one yeah and that's yeah. where i was going like you cannot that's that's a half measure like you can't half step again candace and jonathan go over just Candace go over, you know, when you go back to the mutiny here, Jonathan has to plant that flag. So if he had flushed Yule's idol, voted for Yule, got the vote off of him, then again, like Taryn just said, that's a half measure that won him nothing. It didn't win I2's like complete loyalty because you still kind of exactly. screwed them. And, and Raro, like Taryn said, might still be mad at him anyway. So it was full, oh. it was all or nothing. It was full tilt. So again, this is why it wasn't too begrudging as like, just you flush that idol. You know, it's definitely yeah. further down the line where I'm like, I, like come on now <laughs> and he was he was really it was also at a point too where jonathan is just kind of at least on his in his own he he, he just pissed everyone off like <laughs> in a lot of ways he pissed he pissed his tribe off a lot of folks on his tribe and so it's like what do you do as jonathan and and i get the i get him going with the people that he actually mm -hmm. liked more because really he wasn't in there protecting anyone else uh on his tribe and i think that in large part was just because of like the 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 way that he went through the game and all and I mean actually before he even did anything proving himself not to be loyal I think if he had some of those stronger connections on his tribe like if he was closer to Candace and was committed to Candace mm -hmm. I wonder if that it, you know if that would have shifted things or even to, right. to that original Raro group of folks and, and one more point on Nate mm -hmm. well you know this is Nate's going out so again I can't feel bad for Nate because Nate had been banging that drum. Pinner is, cannot be trusted. Pinner is going to flip on us. And this is also mm -hmm. where I, I didn't feel bad for Nate. And I didn't feel bad for Adam, Candace, and Parvati because, yeah. again, um, they, they, they put too much emphasis that Pinner could not go back. What do you think? If you're merging five to four, those four people are going to do everything they can, including Welcome Back a Mutineer. Like, th that was a flimsy thought process when we're this close to the merge you need to be trusting who your numbers that's why you said you got out out brad but rebecca and jenny would have been loyal to you so it, it that's why the it's not adding up again there but also like i said nate goes here if pinner let them vote out adam not only do you not get that smoke from adam because adam's the one that's most incensed he incenses parvati him parvati and candace are the, you know they're the three at this point y'all know there are three so if you leave adam in there you get nate out all three people are mad at you pinner you should have seen this coming like I'm, you should have seen that coming if adam goes like like you said uh Nate uh, might go over yeah. to Ozzy. And then at this point, Candace and Parvati might come back to you, Pinner, depending on how it goes. You know what I'm saying? So I just, again, just Nate being so 
indispensable to them i was just like it's sad but nate put himself in that position and raro put themselves in that position and um, you saw it coming you could see you could see it coming too it's like oh okay next time you have to find a different route because this is a dead end for for nate and not a surprising one uh, (laughs) yes and again this is why we're all sitting there like nate why are you letting both rebecca and jenny get okay i'm sorry i'm just gonna i'm gonna bang that (laughs) well parvati definitely had some uh some heat herself uh she is so (laughs) disappointed she wanted to take penner's face and throw up all over it uh he's a filthy (laughs) miserable rat um and uh that uh this is uh this is no good uh and and the insults are being thrown all over the place um i i, I believe this is uh i i actually i didn't write it down who said this it was either penner or ozzy this is the only other person i could think of that said this parv is a lazy selfish girl she's never gutted a fish she's 28 days in um and yeah. Uh, yeah and then yeah. uh and then um uh, penner sucks at life makes us want to throw up uh, and that brings us to the auction, um, yeah. where, uh, mm-hmm. we're going to see Penner clean up here. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, my favorite comment from him. Jeff, uh, there are a couple, but, um, it's, uh, <laughs> Penner is, uh, bidding against Parvati for the bath. Uh, and Jeff is like, Penner, the guy nobody wants to see take a bath, um, uh, bidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i know when i heard that i was like wait what like it, meaning the, the stripping uh, into the yeah <laughs> well I, I yeah picked up on picked up on that eventually yeah. it's like oh well uh, maybe he smells really good already or also is he bidding to for it or does he want uh poverty to spend more money i was like dang jeff like <laughs> <laughs> get out of pinner's bag yo like get off of him yeah um <laughs> then uh becky and yule are gonna beat out adam and candace for the advantage in the game and uh then just immediately send candace to exile and get her money yes i that mean come so on rude. you see an advantage they tell you you can pull your money y'all should have bet a thousand a thousand like i don't yeah. understand like especially raro especially the, the raro tribe who has now just been blindsided and y'all give it y'all give up mostly because you probably wanted some more food or whatever but uh y'all let y'all let uh yule and, and becky yeah. win this advantage it's like becky read it oh you get to take their money and send them immediately to exile and it was <laughs> I'm sorry, Candace, but that I was, loved every second. Of it. That wasn't that, right. That was not I right. That was just yeah. not fair. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Okay. You could bid all of the money you could you could get together, and then you could take someone else's money. Keeping in mind that like <laughs> multiple people have all of their money. So true. I mean. I look, I think we just, I love the survivor auction, but that Candace just, they just love beating her up. I think that's what happened yes. with production. They're just like, what could we do to torture Candace more? That's the conspiracy. This, this is a great auction too. Cause this is where Yule is going to say, you know what? We can end the suspense. Yeah. I have the yes. idol. Oh, yes. um, and, and Jeff is like, uh, well, why don't you, why don't you whip it out then? Why don't you show us uh, oh. if you've got it? Um, and he does. And this is really funny to me. Uh, he brings it over to Parvati yes. to verify its authenticity. It's authentic. In the, she's in the bathtub with one hand holding, oh, eating her cake. chocolate yeah. shake. I mean, and she's really looking like, and you know what? I trust look, Parvati. Yeah, well, like, here's the thing. We know in the future that Parvati is an expert on immunity idols. Uh, yeah. But at the time, they didn't know that. Why is Parvati the verif- verification of authenticity for this idol? And she couldn't even put down her. Was amazing. She she couldn't put down her cake. Yeah, like that's the thing. And so I loved it. So here's the thing. Here's the thing that I think is part of what wins Yule the game, right? Um, he not only shows the idol, but he explains the move that he made to flip Penner. Um, and uh, and you'll notice that prior to this moment, nobody was like Yule is the puppet master. Yule is the mastermind. Yule is the godfather. Uh, it's not until he whips out the idol and says, I flipped Penner, this was the, how I did it, and it sounds very impressive, that people then go, oh, well, he's clearly the guy. Um, and being the guy is what wins him the game, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we talk about, you know, 
uh, and there are, I'm sure, plenty of other factors here. But when we talk about why Becky gets very little credit for moves that they likely made together, um, mm -hmm. Yule's literally standing in front of everyone, holding an idol, saying, this is what I'm doing, uh, while Becky is kind of uh, a little bit quieter in the background, right? Um, and yeah. so uh, that's something to take note of in terms of the jury management that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it really, it's interesting because on one hand, if we look ahead to the final three, you have Ozzy, who is so blatantly just this challenge beast. I, And I don't think we got to see this a ton, but you have to think contrasting him with Yule, like Yule's a likable guy. He's so respectable and he's just telling you like it is. And he's willing to admit how he's playing his game. And and so I, I just really... This was kind of a ballsy move, but I, I admire it from, from you in retrospect, because it could also be seen as a dumb move if it didn't work out for him. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what, like what ma magic he's, he's pulling. And I don't mean, uh, you know, uh, Ozzy's uh, magic number 420, but I do mean yeah. like what kind of magic uh, Yule was pulling, but wow, this, this guy, this guy, he belongs in a hall of fame if he's not in it already. Yeah, Ozzy, yeah. and Ozzy this bids 420 for the ice cream and it goes for the to the ice dolphin cream. boy. Like you, could, you yeah. probably could have the done 410. Boy. It would have been fine. So weird. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, so also like here with with Yule, I think it's his delivery as well. It, mm -hmm. It's it's yes. not braggadocious. It's yeah. not like, you know, it's not like oh, I did this. Like it it it's so Yule. It's just him calmly mm -hmm. explaining logic logistically logically all of this yes. whatever you want to say it's just like it. very even tempered just like yeah so this is what i figured this is what i have the idol you know blah 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 blah. and it's just it's just easily digestible that way you know because i feel like if if the shoe was on the other foot and it was ozzy i yeah. don't know if ozzy would have had the tact to be able to explain any of that or to you know just whip it out of immunity idol so you have to give your props here because it's a ballsy move it's a great move it's the move that he starts from here on out he starts to work in the jury to work in the jury mm -hmm. um and it, it's just great it, it was it was a great move one of many yeah yeah so uh penner cleans up uh he bids a hundred for a toothbrush uh and jeff is like do you even have a hundred dollars i just mm. bid didn't i <laughs> um and so uh the i24 are pretty annoyed with him after his behavior in the auction now uh they certainly played this up and he certainly was like they played the 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 belching right uh quite yeah. a bit yeah. um but was it i mean from what we saw was it that bad i mean uh like what Hot penner was doing slow? I mean, sure, but like, Ew. was Come it bad on. enough that you're like, oh, this guy, his behavior, <laughs> like, we need to vote him out. Um, but uh, the 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 Still Penner obnoxious, yes, uh, stuff here uh, is starting to be on the rise. Candace uh, misses Adam and needs a hug um, on uh, the uh, on Exile Island. She says emotionally, she's on the edge of <laughs> extinction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like candace no <laughs> no just stay on exile please be the exile queen do that don't no, please so yeah so this is where uh parvati says she'll feel like she's won if penner is out before her uh they're appealing to yule's sense of justice um yeah. yule tells them he can mm -hmm. predict what penner will do which makes him valuable in the game uh which they take to mean that they think that uh, that he thinks that penner is selfish, selfish. um and yeah. this, she's the candace is going to try and uh rat uh yule out uh, based on that so he's bad. like i said self-interested um so yeah selfish um and yeah. so uh they say we know you're the ringleader we know the decision comes down to you uh and uh and so this is what's eventually going to get them to vote penner out but it's not going to work this time Yule has an interesting conversation with becky saying i'm concerned about my jury votes if i continue to defy rara right uh, yeah and he discusses that I think if I take out Penner for them, then they then I'll have the votes to win. Um, and I was like, why is this conversation Becky, happening? Becky was kind of just like, yeah, uh, yep. That yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, <laughs> part of, like that was her rea not part of, a big reaction. Yeah, part, part of me wonders if because he doesn't end up voting for Penner here, part of me wonders if this converse in part that this conversation happened because he knew he wasn't going to do it. And so in a way it was sort of like and and this is this is what I would do if I was if I could win, but I'm not mm. going to end up doing it, um, which means I might not win 
hint hint mm. um yeah. and then when he does it later i'm he probably doesn't have the conversation with becky where he says yeah adam uh, promised me his vote uh right yeah so it sounded like the, ozzy didn't know i, I yeah. don't think becky knew so yeah i, I and to give becky a little credit we didn't see her answer <laughs> like the camera just she's just like nothing she, but, yeah she was like a, a look and then it was like I, a different <laughs> that <laughs> so, is her approval i think that was that was becky's version of approval so yeah. i mean we we don't know because they they didn't tell us in the edit so i really don't think i mean i would yeah oh rough but like just going back t- touching on the candace situation i loved that and watched back that interaction of candace yule and jonathan nobody likes you yeah and it's like uh John- jonathan knows exactly who he is and yule has clearly done a good job i mean i, I don't think it's a surprise that yule doesn't particularly love penner i mean we see that change uh a lot over time which is kind of nice about that dynamic I mean, honestly but, i think wow. i think yule didn't have a problem with Penner. I think that Yule told yeah. them that he didn't care for Penner just because to fit in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, but also I don't think that's how Yule was approaching the game where it's like Candace is yelling at, you know, Yule and Penner like, he doesn't like you. It's more personal from her perspective, yeah. from Yule's yeah. perspective and from Jonathan's perspective. It's like, that literally doesn't matter. But yeah. also, uh, like they, Yule does a good, Yule didn't lie Yule to tries. Jonathan in any way. <laughs> Yule tr- yeah, Yule, did, Yule's, Yule tries. He, he, he tries. tries to get Candace. He's like, Candace, don't speak for me. I did not yeah. say that. <laughs> it was like, in such Please do not calmest, put words in my mouth. Yeah, the calmest, the robotic voice. Uh, <laughs> and he's just, he's just like, I, I you know, I didn't really say that. And it, again, it's appealing emotionally to people who is just like, this is not an emotional game. And this is, this is where uh, the I-2-5 uh, with Pinner decide to eat the fish mm. that Pinner caught because Candace and Parvati and Adam were messing around in the shelter. And again, here is Ozzy. This is Ozzy's like first confessional in a long exactly. time. Somebody go and track it. And it's again, Ozzy saying like, I don't think we got to get this, give them fish. Like um, we shouldn't be giving them fish if they're going to keep winning stuff. I'm just saying, think about it. They, they did not let Ozzy talk for a good third of this season. And I think it's because they didn't want to undermine the underdog story because he was a little dickish. Ozzy is a little dickish in this. As as we saw in later seasons, I mean, uh, not just a little bit, but (laughs) yeah, look, the, the thing is that didn't even stick, which is the amazing thing. Cause I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that time that they, that they decided not to let the other people eat. And it's like, oh wait, never mind. We're gonna just erase that because it doesn't matter and it doesn't yeah. last. Yeah. So uh Candace is gonna be voted out here. Um we head into the next episode. And this this one, um uh it's 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 very sad in retrospect, uh obviously. Um we're gonna get the oh. family visit uh and Penner's wife Stacy is gonna come out. Um, and she unfortunately just this year uh, passed away from uh, ALS. Um, we know that uh, if you watched Winners of War, you saw probably the uh, the segment they did, and and you came back and, and wanted to uh, to raise awareness and help out uh, Penner. Um, it's 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 honestly devastating to to watch her uh, come out and and you know I couldn't remember if uh, if they had won that challenge, and I was really hoping that they would. Um, yeah. But and they came close too. Um, very but uh but not the case but uh you know and and seeing seeing uh his family at the reunion as well um was uh was was tough and you know i, I hope uh, i hope him and his family are doing very well yeah yeah in these in these tough times beautifully yeah. said yeah yeah yeah. Um, there was there was a, a a sort of twist to this uh, family visit that I did enjoy, which is that uh, Parvati wins and uh, Jeff has her dad choose who's going to go along with them on the yeah. reward. Uh, sight unseen, uh, no help from Parvati. Uh, you have to just pick, um, and uh, you could tell that Adam was there. Like, I'm I'm her friend. I promise. <laughs> trying to give him the eye um i thought that was kind of fun and it, i feel like if they did that more often it could lead to some funny situations but i get that they also want like the sort of like how dare you not choose my family so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, yeah. this i i don't it, it was such um it, i i love the loved ones visit i love to like to feel the emotions i felt so caught off guard by this point in the season because it was so late so many episodes into where i was just like well the season's almost over and then the yeah. loved ones come out and it is just this beautiful beautiful moment i'll say for um just with jonathan and stacy i loved how he went and just he's like well i'm gonna go kiss my wife because mm-hmm. i don't know what you're gonna tell me to do jeff uh, <laughs> and it's just it was it was beautiful um all of it's it was kind of nice to to see but we didn't get that many shenanigans with with the other loved ones which i like some i like a good loved one shenanigan here yeah and i forgot I, i'm with you matt i was like oh right <laughs> i forgot about about <laughs> the, the final loved tribals one, coming one up yes yeah, so yeah. yeah um i hope pinner is doing great you know um yeah. no you know uh, I think the foundation, he has a foundation in, in Stacy's name. So yeah. please go look that up. Please go support any way you can um, help be ALS. Uh, but this was, this was fun. I mean, the loved one rewards are always just like, it's the two seconds they get to put the game to the side and just, you know, relive being at home and poverty won after chopping her thumb in half. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah look at that. <laughs> I yeah, don't even I, know. Yeah. She, I, I, um, I was very concerned about her stitches. Yeah. I, I did not love that segment. Oh, uh, I, I personally loved it. Up. They went I wanted to see more. Okay, well. You know, oh I'm gosh. a medical medical background here. Like, mm. so. that, that doesn't work like that. Yeah. I like to it watch does. people get their fingers I, chopped off. I am off. on record. I am on record as to loving these types so you, of you just, you're like, you're like, you're like, oh, I can't wait to watch it get stitched back together. Yes. Like, uh, not. Not her you doing like... it. That was sad. I really, the way they were describing it, I was like, I All want right, to done. see it. I'm Is done. the finger hanging off the bone? No, like... we're good. No, we're yeah. Good. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I could, let's see, I get, I was looking at that. So I, like, I too have cut my finger before deep, you know, blood everywhere, Taryn. It's just not, not great. Well, you know, the thing is with this though, I, I wonder like, was there permanent damage? They just stitched that I thing did, up. Yeah. I thought I was thinking it, like, yeah, I deep. don't. I don't remember her ever talking about like a scar, like uh, or like, like her finger not working. Yeah, like I <laughs> yeah. wondered about that, um, but uh, who knows? Um, ultimately, Parvati this is, knows. Yeah, Parvati <laughs> does. Maybe we can ask her. Um, yeah. This is not going to be a great uh, episode here for Penner, as he feels some bad energy, and he says, "If it's me tonight, I've only got a couple hours and not much of a chance." Um, mm-hmm. And uh, this is also the episode mm-hmm. where they they go to hide food, and then they come back and they bring food, and oh, again. Never mind. We feel bad now, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, but Adam pitches to Yule, uh, take out Penner. Uh, we don't see this. This is weird because they bring it up in the reunion. They don't show the actual scene of them like handshaking on a deal. I'll vote for you if you take out Penner. Um, but uh, Penner uh, uh, is also going to pitch to Yule. Yule says, I feel like a godfather. Um, and uh, he's, he feels like Adam and Parver flashing those smiles and charming the I-24 into wanting to vote him out uh and which of course they do um yeah. and he would like his hat back at some point yeah so particular yeah mm-hmm. come on he has a good head of hair he didn't need the hat it was a nice hat though and i like i like that the the worst insults that he has for them in his like goodbye confessional is these people are terrible liars i saw this coming <laughs> 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 yes and and it was just apropos that he he was on exile and when he was on exile they were like oh man we get along great the vibe is great when he's gone it's yeah. just like it was it was inopportune and then adam you know uh took the the opportunity to jump on it and, and offer yule that that deal and i mean at this point again you can't fault yule for taking this deal they're already up you know you know uh what, what was it five to two at that point so you take out Jonathan, you still have your four, you still yeah. have just the two people in on a normal mm-hmm. season or, you know, normally I'd be like, don't leave two people from the opposing tribe in, but the division was just so deep and the I-24 yeah. had just gone through so much. And then at this point, even if one person jumped over, you're still looking at a 3-3. So I didn't see a downside here. It, this made 
again logical sense it also like for what it's worth i don't know if this was in the thought process at all but penner is a very very like uh tasty looking final to you know go right um yes. and yeah. so by taking penner out you're sort of de-incentivizing your allies from turning on you in the end for somebody that they think they can easily beat um exactly. so not not the mm-hmm. worst move. again I, I, he never mentioned that as incentive but um it's something that that i would be thinking about um yeah so uh, we get to the next episode. This is where, you know, again, I, I see hints from Parvati here. She says, we have to flip one of the four and we have to put it in a way that makes it seem like they're not betraying their their identity, essentially, right? Yeah. Like their tribe. Um, and like, that's the kind of thing that you expect from Parvati. Like, that's the sort of like, uh, that's not really what like the average player talks about in confessional like normally they're like we've got to find a crack we've got to find somebody that will flip we've got to whatever um but she, she there's always that sort of like tinge of like emotional intelligence from poverty that i really appreciate in these confessionals yeah um great yeah uh ozzy wins the mud reward and becky and sundra are not happy about it um but at least Yule got to go on the reward. It was uh, Ozzy, Yule, and, uh, and Parvati. <laughs> that, and, that was a moment. And this is, yeah. this. I mean, is this, this is definitely Parvati's episode of the yeah. season. Even, oh my gosh. She Ozzy's, put in so much work. He's a bit oh of a loner. So she has to turn up the charm and they go naked hot tubbing. The, the part yeah. about this that, that throws me off a little bit um is that later on the episode i believe kind of as uh, you know as things are fading out on her story she references the fact that she could have put it on laid it on a little <laughs> thicker in the hot tub and i just don't want to know i don't <laughs> i but oh my gosh like she yeah. she's just she, again uh, incredible player i don't know how people didn't see how much promise she had uh through this season clearly the 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 production did, saw yeah. it, it which is amazing but wow at this like parvity i my I, I wish i and i wanted to be well i was gonna say i wanted to be in that hot tub for <laughs> completely different reasons but um. my my favorite part of this is uh yule looking so uncomfortable very much so. yeah. <laughs> and then and like, jeff clearly not having any kind of read <laughs> in the reunion is like I couldn't tell if you were super excited to be in there or if you didn't want to be like, you couldn't tell Jeff. Um, and he was like, no, I didn't want to be there, uh, but I couldn't leave them alone. And I was like, that's exactly like, uh, I, I, again, I loved <laughs> Yule so much and I just felt like I could relate to him on so many levels. Um, and uh, I, I loved Yule it. Answer. Yeah. The and, most Terran and- answer and the most Yule answer. And they were so lucky. They were so lucky that Yule went instead of Adam. Because if it was Adam, <laughs> Ozzy, and Poverty in the hot tub, they probably couldn't have shown us. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, you, you might you might be onto something. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so so thankful for Yule. <laughs> Do we get a totally like, I'm not leaving season? this hot tub. Do yes. we get a totally different season if Yule isn't in the hot tub? I don't know. Yes, it's a totally different season mm. and maybe we won't see that mm. any of that that reward air. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately it doesn't work. Uh but uh the the I2 now 3 maybe uh are going to discuss Let's maybe take out Ozzy next. He's too much of a threat. He hasn't had to piss anybody off. Um, we should maybe think about taking him out first. Uh, and mm-hmm. Yule lets them know that uh, Parvati has been extra flirty with Ozzy. He definitely underestimated her. He did not realize how much of a game player she was. Um, and so uh, it's now just a question uh, of uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to take out Ozzy? It's going to be a moot point because he's going to win the immunity here. Now, I tend to believe, I think they would have taken the shot here at Ozzy if he mm. hadn't won. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, he was so much better than everyone else at Immunity Challenges. And he was... Uh, now, you do have to be very careful. Obviously, right. they are not sure that it's a final three. But uh, you let Parvati or Adam into the final four. And if and if one of them win that final immunity, they're winning the game for sure, right? So, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you do have to be very careful there. But without knowledge for sure that it's going to be a final three. I think it does make sense. Take the shot at Ozzy because you also don't want Ozzy in the final three uh, or final totally. two. Um, so it does make some sense there, but uh, but ultimately Ozzy's going to win. It's going to be a moot point. Uh, did they take out Adam or Parvati? 
Uh, again, they go to Yule to campaign. It seems like Yule is kind of the decision maker here. He feels like Parvati is the bigger threat after what he saw in the hot tub. Um, and, uh, and he decides that he's going to go and uh, they're going to take out Parvati. The fact that Yule would be threatened by Parvati in a hot tub is just <laughs> like jarring to me. Like of all things that Yule navigates in this season, but the one thing where he's like, I, I, I don't know if I could handle this. It's Parvati <laughs> in a hot tub. That's, <laughs> that's the thing that shuts down his game where he's like, got to get rid of her. Let's get her out. Uh, yeah. Uh, and mm. it, and at first I was like, what? Why don't you get rid of Adam? You know, so far it's yeah. it just been him and Ozzy winning the um, immunity challenges and stuff like that. But then I thought about it, like Adam is just, again, burying himself in a grave. He cannot, he has no social, he has no social game. Like he has no social connections. <laughs> right. Parvati does. You get rid of Adam, Parvati stays. You don't know what can happen because she can turn that, that charm mm -hmm. on. So I, I get it. I, again, this is another one of those moves. I don't even know if you needed to see it in retrospect, but no. that you're like, okay, you'll made a a good call here you yeah. get rid of her yeah mm -hmm. and it makes it makes sense too because you like you was i mean from from what he says because i kind of thought of it as well parvati is flirting with ozzy and yule even though she was definitely going trying to flip ozzy but you know that was just parvati putting her game on display for yule and yule the game bot that he is is just kind of like processing and processing like okay well got to take her out because clearly she's trying to flip ozzy so it was a smart it was a definitely a smart move and it it made a lot of sense and Parvati really put her cards out on the table. Not that I, I mean, she was, I think you kind of knew where she stood in the threat that she was beforehand. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a, there's a meta sort of story to this that I really enjoy, which is that, um, I mean, if, if you, if you think about it, I mean, in my opinion, for as much speculation as we can try to make, if Yule doesn't win the season, it's, probably Parvati that wins, right? If Yule doesn't flip Penner, if uh, Raro wins even one of those immunity challenges uh, and Raro has the numbers, I have to imagine that Parvati is the person who is most likely to win at that point with Adam and Candace being the big targets in front of her, Nate in mm -hmm. her back pocket um, and her great competition ability uh, plus great social connections. I think that she probably wins that season um, and... Uh, and and that's mm. interesting to note because I don't think people really look at that. They look at Ozzy could have won the season, but right. Ozzy was never really going to win the season. If he couldn't beat Yule, mm. it was never going to happen because Yule was always right. going to be there. Um, but uh, but it would happen, I think, with Parvati. And so this idea that like Yule and Parvati as titans of the game uh, are clashing and Yule wins this battle. Um, but Parvati gets further than she should have because Yule didn't recognize how how good she was but then does recognize how good she was, decides she's a bigger threat than Adam. Conventionally, most people, most players would not be smart enough to realize that and recognize mm -hmm. the threat that Parvati is. Yule does and takes her out earlier. Um, and and I just love that sort of like, it's it's not really present in the season, but you can look at the sort of like player that Parvati becomes and you can look at, you know, Yule in the season and you can kind of imagine this uh, clash of titans, even though it never really occurred in that moment. Um, in, in hindsight, it kind of did. Yeah. yeah. And this, this edit also did Parvati like a lot of favors going forward. I mean, maybe that goes without saying, but she wasn't truly presented as the, she was never presented as a threat to win the game, even though mm -hmm. she came pretty close um, in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, I, I think that this, this is like the ideal situation for Parvati, like, you know, establish yourself as a character that is flirty. Maybe people will read that as one dimensional, then you come back and dominate, which she has done. And I think to the point now where we look at winners at war and it's like, oh, okay, it's Parvati. We have to take her out, which is kind mm -hmm. of annoying because so many of us love her, but I mean, that's what happens when you kind of show what you're capable of multiple times out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Parvati is going to be voted out here. We head into the finale where, uh, it's pretty straightforward for the most part here up until yeah. the final tribal. Uh, Ozzy wins the final five immunity. They take out Adam. Adam does pitch for uh, them to flush Yule's idol, which should be 
a no-brainer. Uh, yes. It really, this, yeah. really <laughs> should be a no-brainer here. Um, but he can't get them to do it. He pitches to Ozzy and Sundra. Obviously, Becky's not going to be on board, or at least uh, it seems that way. Um, and I... We do not hear from Ozzy and Sundra really about why they're not doing it. We hear from Yule later that he's like, uh, I mean, I think there's a reason here. Because uh, because Jeff, by the way, I've refrained yes. from pointing this out before. Um, but he, uh, in the previous tribal, makes a point uh, of saying, oh, Yule, you brought back Penner's hat? That's a, the boldest move I've ever seen, pandering to the jury. Uh, okay. And then in this one, uh, is uh, like he's just constantly pointing out uh, in 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 tribal and stuff like uh, uh, you guys aren't flushing the idol. Like uh, like it's just like uh, he's constantly blowing up Yule's spot. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I didn't get what that was about. But Jeff was real. He was arguing harder than anyone for for them to to just like vote Yule out. Adam Lee whatever I, 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 that, that's not kosher that's, that's <laughs> not kosher well, but Yule, Yule says uh, look we've been loyal to each other uh, which of course gets like the, the eye rolls I and everything. Like but I, I think at the end of the day that that is that is part of it right um, mm -hmm. and it's also part of why I like I do genuinely think if this wasn't a god idol I think Yule I think the trajectory is the exact same I really do. Yeah. Um, I think he manages to flip Penner, whether it's a god idol or not. And I think that um, it, his idol doesn't get flushed um, in, in any way. Now, it being good till final four, uh, when there's a final three, that's certainly huge. But I would still say I think he makes it to final three anyway. Because mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think Becky turns on him at final four, which means he's at least going to fire. Who's he going to fire against? Sandra. <laughs> Sandra. So, so <laughs> Yule's in the final three. Uh, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so this is this is where I was like, I even wrote it down. I was like, good at Final Four or until Final Four? Because I was I I when I heard it, I thought he could use it up until the Final Four, like as in you can't use it at the Final Four. I didn't know it meant you the last time you can use it is Final Four to get into the final three. I was like, geez, that is completely yeah. overpowered. Because again, it has to be used until you know after the votes are read, but like that's a lot and again right here this was it adam is going home no matter what no matter what he's going home flush that idol because once jeff said uh, you know jeff spelled it out for them. Oh, <laughs> jeff's a hater he did. Jeff, he is. jeff wanted ozzy to win that's why conspiracy theory so i mean jeff he said says, i've never been more disappointed that somebody didn't win nothing against you yule but <laughs> Yeah. Jeff is uh... a hater. So Jeff spells it out. He's like, this, he said, this is the final five. Uh, Yule has the thing. It's good at the final four. So he, he lays it all he out. He did there. lay it out. He, he said, he said, okay, so if, if Yule, if you don't flush it here, Yule has it. That means Yule automatically goes to the final three. Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy here, he's been winning every immunity. So if, if Ozzy wins that next immunity at final four, then it'll come down to you and Sandra, Becky, uh, you, uh, Becky and Sandra. So, you yeah. know, you guys aren't going to flush it here. I was yeah. like, Oh, Jeff. So we're just giving everybody advice on how to play Survivor in the final five. Like what? Is and they happening? really, really cool. they really needed to, like even Becky yeah. kind of needed to, right? Because especially if she's not going to accept the idol at four, like, it doesn't need to exist then. You can flush yeah. it. Because the only reason Becky shouldn't flush it is that he's willing to give it to her, which is yeah. great. Uh, but if she's not going to accept it, then it doesn't need to exist anyway. And let's show that you have some agency and make a yes. move that is your, in your Yours. interests to uh -huh. prove that you have Yours. your own agency in the game. Um, but uh, but they don't. And, uh, and yeah. I think massive massive error here um from sundra first uh yes. and then and yes. then becky second uh in the final uh -huh. four which we'll talk about as well um but uh <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> just thought of that fire making <laughs> so <laughs> adam's voted out yule is very happy at this point that a minority will be winning the season um oh, he's yeah. pleased with the underdog story of yeah. their group um and that is again like now that we're here Oh, we're talking about race again. Yeah. Come. Yeah, um, there was a there was a moment where um like I cringed a little bit just because Sundra, Sundra. said uh, like black, brown, and brown, yellow yeah. power. And I was like, ooh. 
I don't I know mean, if she said power, but she's like, she said yeah, power. I don't remember the power part, she said but power. whatever. <laughs> she said power. Uh, it was like, <laughs> I, I was I, like, oh. They put the captions minute. down there and it, it just said black brown yellow. But anyway. <laughs> so maybe, maybe like, the <laughs> caption people were like, no. Nope. <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs> Like we don't need to stir thing, stir this up. But you know, I but did they appreciate. Made sure it was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this was this was interesting because we got comments. I think from Yule maybe about like the power of diverse teams, and so yeah, like it's coming back. We had, it, the conversations coming back out of nowhere. But mm-hmm. oh my gosh, like <laughs> yeah, this was, and this, this was messy. This is when they're told uh, it's time for rites of passage. It's happening before your final immunity challenge. Yeah. And again, it's like, oh, final immunity challenge. I wonder what that means. <laughs> like, <laughs> they had to have, they had to have considered this a possibility. Uh, yeah. Rites of passage was so. fun. The thing that really stood out stood out to me in rites of passage was Parvati saying, "You know, I kind of felt like I was running the show there for a while." Um, <laughs> and like, that's the kind of line that's like, it's easy to ch- just kind of like dismiss it. Like, okay, you thought you're running the show, but given what we see from Parvati later. I do, it, it makes me think, like, Parvati probably felt pretty good on that Raro tribe. Like, the position mm-hmm. that she got to, the alliance oh, yeah. that she was a part of, she was in, in the majority of that five. She was in between Adam and Nate. Uh, like, there probably was a really good spot for her. And again, I really do think that she was in a good position to win that game. And I think that she recognized it. Um, we just didn't get to see as much of it as we could have, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, here we go. For the first time ever, the final tribal council will have three people instead of two. Um, Ozzy's gonna win this final immunity. Not a lot of suspense here. Um, no, honestly, at even all. at the time, I was rooting for Ozzy to get there, uh, but I wasn't in a lot of suspense that he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I was very like, yeah, he'll, he'll make it. Yeah, Sandra um, did a great job here, too. She did, she did. Perch, she put up a great fight, but, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and that it was just like, I think Ozzy makes the comment, like. You know, it's good that I want. I wasn't expecting Sundra to do well at this at all. <laughs> so. Ozzy's a little condescending. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Ozzy thinks it's fair to have it come down to a tiebreaker between Becky and Sundra. Uh, Yule says he can't vote for Becky, which means that, uh, that Ozzy will be. Um, now, there's a part of me that's like, did Ozzy, is this just an excuse from Ozzy that he wanted to vote against Becky because he knows that you would vote with Becky. I don't think it is though. Mm-hmm. I think genuinely that like, this is how Ozzy thinks. Um, and it does make me wonder if this wasn't a final three, if it was a final two, let's say Ozzy wins the final three and it's uh, a choice between Becky and Yule. Um, what kind of situation is that? Who does Ozzy choose? Can Yule pull, uh, you know, some, some Tony, on him and be like yeah. do the honorable thing i'm the one that deserves it be, be the best uh i think that there's a chance that ozzy takes yule there i really don't know though yeah i can see that i mean I, I, this is one of the things i didn't really care for down the stretch but it was the whole we deserve to be here he doesn't deserve yeah. it you know with pinner and stuff like that blah 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 i just want to see good people blah 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 and this is where we get kind of like the old school survivor morality play come into that i'm just not a fan of especially because sorry to mm -hmm. interrupt but especially because the the sort of the value that he's placing on them is in regards to how well they do at challenges Uh, yeah and like how good they are making fire like that has that Mm -hmm. that really is like their their value as human beings Yes, exactly. So I I do agree with you. I I think there is a world where if Ozzy wins another immunity challenge, he takes Yule because he doesn't want to be seen as backing down. And honestly, you know, depending, it could have been a a move that garnered him um, another vote. So I I don't think. Yeah, so I don't think it would have, you know, been that bad. I mean, for him, but I I can see it happen. Although Becky would be on the jury, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> who knows? It might have been a tie. Um. All right. So, uh, this is this is where it gets a little wacky. Uh, Yule is gonna yeah. offer to give Becky his idol because he knows that if uh if Ozzy and Sundra vote both vote Becky, uh, and then Ozzy and Becky vote uh Sundra, uh, or so Yule and and Becky vote Sundra, then if Yule gives Becky his idol then she can play it for herself once the votes are read and Sundra will be gone. It's a risk for Yule because if they anticipate that he will do that, 
then they can just vote for Yule, which, quite mm. frankly, they probably should have anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> because there's no downside to it. Uh, if mm. Yule plays the idol, then okay, fine, it's, you know, it's it's, it's whatever. Um, at least, uh, you know, uh, so, um, but they don't do that. Uh, Yule is willing to uh, give his idol to Becky to guarantee her a spot here, and she chooses not to accept mm. the idol um, because she thinks that it will make her look weak to the jury. Um, and I'll just take take the idol. Just take the <laughs> idol. Here's, here, here's take the, the idol. thing. I do I do want to I want to make sure I point this out. I want to be sympathetic yeah. to some degree because I think that she has an uphill battle. Right. Uh, she is having to, she, you know, and I talked about this before. Yule is standing there telling everyone what he's doing. Um, I think that Becky would have a harder time implementing that same strategy. Uh, I think that she is going to have a harder time taking credit for those moves uh, just because of who she is um, and uh, and the, the preconceptions that people have of her versus somebody like Yule. Um, and I think that she's always going to uh, have a harder time claiming credit for those things. And so I mm -hmm. think that she is in more of a mindset of, I need to do something out of the ordinary, out of the box, uh, more so than Yule would have to do in order to win credit. I th So I understand, I think, her mindset in coming to this conclusion. I just think that she's wrong. Um, <laughs> I think that she read the situation wrong, and I think that she would have gotten more credit had she gotten the idol from Yule. Like, I yeah. talked this guy into risking his life for me at the final four just exactly. to guarantee myself a spot here. Um, I think that's I think that was the play. No, I'm I'm with you on that, Taryn. And that that was the that's the bigger thought because one, that's less risky to do to get the idol, but you could really position she could have really positioned it like I had Yule in my pocket this whole time. Yeah. He I like I not I dragged him, but like I made him carry me along the way. It's a tough argument to make, but um, I mean, again, hindsight being 2020, like you could either take the idol or you end up in fire making for an hour and a half plus. Uh, it, I think that you like, obviously from like, from that perspective, we mm -hmm. would say, let's go for, go for that idol, take it. But yeah, I, I kind of felt like she, she it felt weird for her to risk her game in this way and i could yeah. also see that like even if she was amazing at making fire <laughs> um i just don't think that it's a wise move or a respectable move ever to right risk your game unless you really really have to to make it through which we've seen in a few cases where that's that's worked out really yeah. recently with the mm -hmm. fire making twist yeah it was more of her banging that <clears throat> drum of banging that drum of this is what i i didn't do and it's like that yeah. girl that yeah. that wasn't smart like you're 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 yeah. you're shooting that horn and you we are essentially saying she could have been the original sophie clark like she could have tried mm -hmm. to spin it and be like i exactly. have it in my back pocket <laughs> yeah so. her, her argument is that she was with yule on every decision that she was yes. you know just as much of a power broker as yule was but in order to like people didn't see it that way in order to get people to see it that way she needs to do something to recontextualize how they saw the season and i think that getting the idol from yule is a great way of helping prove that recontextualization of what happened during the season i was at the very least equal partners with yule i got to use the idol at the end and he was the one that was that was uh you know not not safe right uh yeah. like th mm -hmm. that's something there and then obviously that's even before we look at the results the results show <laughs> that this is an even worse decision because she ends up looking the worst sh she could possibly look uh this is after jeff again blows up yule's spot unprovoked <laughs> saying you know guys you could give his idol to becky and save <laughs> becky if he wanted to are you gonna do that you well no i'm not gonna do that why would i do that well that's exactly what you would say if you were doing it though isn't it yule uh, <laughs> yeah, oh my god cool, cool it. please <laughs> more, more subtlety please no i think like the the, the other piece of this too is i don't really like i didn't get the sense that becky wanted to win i don't i didn't get the sense mm. that she perceived herself winning later in the game especially as the relationship with yule built and uh, we mentioned a great example of that where yule's like well you know like this is how i could get this vote in the end and she just kind of has that 
the look on her face reaction, not really a strong reaction. We don't cut to a confessional where she's up in arms. Like I need to take out Yule. I need to beat Yule. I came here to win. We didn't get that. And it's kind of sad. I don't, I don't know where that came from but it did kind of feel like the, her her drive the drive she might have had coming into the season if it was there was not there at the end it's it's yeah. definitely possible um you know I, I think it's definitely one way to read it again I, for me it's just it's so and hard it, because we so we know so little um you know, you know yeah and one other thing i would point to though and i mean it i'm i'm not the best person to talk about this but just even the gender dynamics in mm -hmm. in that final tribal the final three is something that's come up many times and i also wonder if between just some of those seeds that might have been planted with her thinking like okay yule like he's the guy he's taking this maybe some of the comments jeff makes about how awesome ozzy is or how awesome yule is kind of makes her feel less than but then you have mm -hmm. to also think about what's the way that the jury's talking to them? How are they perceiving them? Does she actually stand a chance with them? And these are all things that are worth considering. I can't blame her for the decisions that she made at the end of the day, but you know, it, it, like I just, it, there wasn't, yeah, there, there was no chance by that. I point. mean, uh, but yeah, by that point, the I24 were forced into a position where they had to take two very strong winner contenders to the final four. And then mm -hmm. Jeff says, surprise, it's the final three. So it was just like, I mean, that um, the mutiny really uh, took away a lot of uh, Becky's agency because she just didn't have the numbers to do and, anything. And really, other. Yeah. yeah, really all the way back to that decision we talked about with Yule um, between Cowboy and Flicka or Penner and Candace. You know, uh, mm -hmm. if they're in the end with Cowboy and Flicka, they have a lot more options in terms of who they can bring to the end yes. if that's the route they want to go. Um, yeah. So this is the infamous tiebreaker fire making in Cook oh. Islands. Uh, I went to watch this and I obviously remembered it. And uh, somehow not. every time I've watched this, it because it's been long enough. It surprises me every time uh, because <laughs> it immediately cut to a half hour later. And yeah. I was like, that was fast. I thought we were going to wait a little bit. Uh, OK, half hour later, everyone's looking kind of kind of bored. Uh, yeah. An hour later, I was like, an hour. Wow, this is going really fast. <laughs> Everybody um, head down. Everyone's like sweating <laughs> and they look super annoyed. And, yeah. uh, and Jeff goes, all Jeff. right, stop where you're at we're going to matches. And I was like, okay, wow, that went a lot quicker than I th than I remembered. I remembered it going a bit longer than this. Uh, they're already going to matches. It's going to be over. An hour and a half. Well, I was like, yes. I after forgot that it, I forgot that after <laughs> matches, they still couldn't do it. I was like, oh. <laughs> It's it's a it's a sight to see. It's, it's a sight. It's, Sundra it's a, runs ooh. out of matches. She burns every single match in the box. <laughs> Before getting the fight. Okay, this made no this made no sense at all. This made no sense. The wood, the wood, the wood had to be wet. It had to be no. some moist wood. <laughs> I don't I mean I don't know. I, it, 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 it really bad. you have a you have a little a little box of matches. You can't I, I this makes no sense. I could it's make a fire right now with matches. I have no wood in front of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that the lighters didn't come out, though. That would have been like, okay, let's see if you can do this. <laughs> they were probably I, like, look, guys, you've exhausted our fire making supplies. We've given you everything. I just don't get it. This was so matches. funny. This it was, was so matches. funny to watch. I just well, was yeah, like, wow. Sad. This is the least impressive. Like you said, it's the least impressive fire making challenge. This is, you know, before I mean, we got all of the fire making uh, yeah, challenges. Yeah, by far. <laughs> so this is hilarious. Any chance Becky has of getting any yeah. votes here. It's just, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, not gonna, Oof. not gonna be good. Uh, of course. I mean, that was a nice fire at the end. I mean, that yeah, she made. By, with the yeah, with the you know her fifty match later. or whatever. Um, <laughs> so she's very proud that she didn't give in to temptation and take the offer of the idol. Uh, not the takeaway I would have uh, taken. Um, yeah. 
And uh, this Ozzy thinks it was symbolic that him and Yule are the only two there when the feast comes on the beach, uh, because it's only him and Yule that will be getting votes, which fair, but uh, <laughs> also come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's a surfer up against two lawyers, um, and uh, it's actually not a terrible place to be in terms of perception, right? Um, and I think that definitely is going to help him when it comes to getting some of these votes. But um, we head into final no. tribal. And didn't uh, know Becky was a lawyer, by the way. Yeah. Oh, very true, because they didn't tell us. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> well, for, yeah. They didn't dive deep into it. Tara remembered no. when he went over all of the similarities between Becky and. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, final tribal, Yule opens with I didn't want to play an individual game. I've done more to influence this game than anyone else. I've brought my alliance to the final four. Uh, I've had to manipulate and deceive people, but I've been loyal to those that have been loyal to me um uh ozzy's speech is i was the underdog i tried as hard as i could i provided and i embraced every aspect of this game with my very soul uh Ooh. very different approaches to these final tribal uh speeches and questions um i'm gonna kind of skip over some of becky's unfortunately she is pretty relevant uh to the proceedings here um but uh nate really points this out immediately and this is the okay. sort of memorable part to me to this finale is yule you were the godfather. You were so smart. You were the strategic master of the season. Ozzy, you were the warrior, beast of challenges. You dominated the mm -hmm. competitions. And it really did feel like two players at the top of their game that had very different games. And it was the first time I'd ever really seen that. Um, and honestly, probably one of the reasons why they stuck with the final three format, because mm -hmm. up until this moment, the final twos have generally been really good player. Meh. Uh, <laughs> it's never really been like the two best players, potentially. And I wouldn't agree that they're the two best players of the season in this season. Mm -hmm. But I would say like it's never really been like two of the titans of this game mm -hmm. are head to head in the final tribal. Uh, because who, if one of them won, they wouldn't take the other most of the time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So they were probably very pleased with this result. Um, but, uh, but Becky does say, she says, I played conservatively. I avoided risks. Um, but I did make a big risk in denying the idol from Yule. Um, and it was just like the worst possible answer to yeah. say that she played conservatively. And the one time she didn't play conservatively was a really bad move. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, I hope that, uh, answered your question or something or, or you satisfied with that. And Nate was like, no <laughs> yeah like elaborate maybe to add i'm not satisfied and, and like honestly good. like kudos to nate for saying he's not satisfied he's no, right he's this honest. is for a million dollars yeah. like you want yeah. me to be honest right now because i'm not voting for you right now so i'm not satisfied uh give me more and there wasn't much more uh parvati was just like Parvati didn't have much of a presence here. I think she was just so in shock that Becky didn't take the idol that she was just like, I'm sorry, I'm just still on this whole idol thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Candice uh, has an interesting one. She says, Yule, you beat around the bush and you say what people want to hear. Yes, or I'm going to ask you a yes or no question. If you say anything other than yes or no, I'm not voting for you. I hate these questions. Um, I was just like, yeah. all right. The power has gone so far up your head <laughs> that uh, that you th you're like, no, you don't have the right to speak to me. <laughs> you, if you say anything other than the permitted words, then you don't get my vote. Um, and, yes uh, or no? Yeah. Yes. No. No. I don't want to hear anything else. Don't want to hear from you. Don't. <laughs> no. 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 No, ex no explanations. <laughs> I, I have to think about this. I don't know. You broke you broke my rules. You kind of broke my rules, Yule. Yeah, and that, and that showed it, right? So she's like, my impression is you've been shamelessly working this jury. Is this true? He's like, yes. I know that was hard for you. <laughs> well, I mean, shameless. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, but I already said the, oh, no, no, stop. <laughs> it's like i'm gonna have to think about that one because like here's the thing he broke her rules he still got her vote right so yeah. uh mm -hmm. it was fake power to begin with yeah i mean you need but you know what like power play i appreciate the power play on her part like if you're gonna go out and we see this with different people in the final tribal uh from the jury where it's like what like what's going on with you like you were a lot nicer or at least a lot more cordial uh before this point but you know what like get your make your mark take that moment i don't i, I don't think candace needed it but 
uh, I I appreciated the <laughs> her just kind of you know cracking the whip on on everyone. Yeah, right. Uh, this is this is definitely something that still is a problem to this day. Uh, sometimes uh, Brad says to Ozzy, "I've had like fifteen con- fifteen seconds of conversation with you in my entire life." Um, right. So what's the most challenging thing you've been through? And Ozzy opens up about his father. This is a really great answer showing his mm-hmm. emotion. Um, I think he definitely wins some points here. Um, I think Ozzy has a, a pretty good performance overall. Um, I think he blunders a few times here and there, but overall, I think a uh, very strong performance. I don't think Yule is the best final tribal performance uh, guy either. He, there's not a lot of passion to Yule. Um, he gives great answers uh, logically, but he, he doesn't have the same passion that Ozzy is able to bring and emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's again, it's very interesting watching the contrast. Uh, and then Penner, of course, says, uh, Yule, you could run for office. How does telling to have truth stay in line with your integrity? Uh, the answer is whatever. I know how to manipulate people, but I only would do it in the game. Um, yeah. And he says to yeah. Ozzy that he's found him arrogant and entitled. He has a problem giving a 25-year-old kid a million dollars, which honestly, fair. Uh, and, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and and it, this, this is another place too where I was like, okay, um, looking at this, like Ozzy, he's like 24, 25. Yule just has a little bit more life experience and more experience that puts him in a better position, even in his job as a management consultant. And it's like, Okay, how this is a, this is not a not an even match between these two at the end. I mean, it's it's fair that's the game, but I didn't think Ozzy. I think this is actually a place where Ozzy has had a lot of trouble every time he's played. Where it's just like you you need to be able to like articulate your ideas. You need the strategic sense, and Yule came ready with that. I think on day one he was ready for final tribal, basically, or he would have been knowing well, just how he played the game. And so this was a, a, it was a little rough watching back how Ozzy performed here. And I didn't I didn't I didn't remember it being that clunky for Ozzy, but this came off a little bit more clunky than I remembered. Particularly this question because Penner asks him, "How would you?" You know, how would doing how would giving you a million dollars make the world a better place? And Ozzy's answer is, well, I want to go back to school. Uh, and then after school, you know, I, I want to change the world for the better. Yeah, it doesn't say that's it. Why. That's all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do it. So, change the world. Yes. That's all you have to do is say it. Uh, we <laughs> see that Penner votes for Yule. He outplayed them all. Par votes for Ozzy, the ultimate competitor. Um, Jeff says it's one of the most enjoyable seasons ever. We get a very minimal, minimal, uh, transition. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're just mm-hmm. walking now. No more jet skis or anything. <laughs> um, and the votes are Yule, Ozzy, Yule, Yule, Ozzy, 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 Yule, oy, oy, and oy. Yule. Uh, uh, great, great way of reading the votes. Um, so Sundra votes for Yule, Adam votes for Yule, Penner votes for Yule, Candace votes for Yule, and Brad votes for you um so uh it's a very close vote um and uh it's 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 definitely interesting because uh so brad voted for you brad and you will start on the same time jenny votes for ozzy jenny yeah. had ozzy. no interaction with ozzy um in the game right i mean she, i mean he came to their tribe uh and hung out with them then right mm-hmm. uh but apart from that very little interaction with uh ozzy but still did vote for ozzy that was a potentially game losing vote uh, for Yule, but he managed to pick up Adam with that uh, deal that he made to vote out uh, Penner earlier than uh, than he would have otherwise. Um, so uh, definitely a very yeah. close vote. I loved how close the vote was. It's such a fitting end to the season uh, that the competition beast loses out to the strategic guy uh, by one vote because the strategic guy orchestrated that he would get a vote for a vote that was already happening uh <laughs> and got credit for it and uh mm-hmm. just uh a gr- I, I loved this finale it's such a great ending to the season and i do think it's fitting and i do think the right person won yeah um i i think it's again this is kind of the first time we see the whole nine person jury um th- final three and as you can see, most of the the people who went out so early, they voted for Ozzy because Ozzy showed up with tri- at tribal council with immunity after immunity after immunity. And then the people who actually worked against Yule or b- basically all worked against Yule, they voted for Yule because they could see his game. And then Brad got Yule's vote. And um, I mean, it, it would seem that because just like Jenny, 
he never um, saw Ozzy, that you would rely on your original, your tribal lines. But I don't know why Jenny felt like you should, she didn't want to be, especially with her question. I thought you answered her question really well. Uh, you didn't really touch on it, but like just the whole, she asked you, you know, um, what's more important, physical or the strategy? I thought you of course says strategy, but I thought that he, when, when he said that, he placed, he let Ozzy be a physical target ahead of him to kind of get the light off of him onto Ozzy, which I think is so true because we sit here and we say Yule is a great strategist, but Yule is actually really good at those competitions as well. Like he yeah. really, really was. And that's one of the reasons why I too I24 were able to win all of those challenges. And even so much so, I, I hate going back, you know, so much, but when he fell off the um, platform, at the final four there, when Yule fell off the platform, I I, I actually wrote down, did he throw that to about Yule? Um, just so he's not put in the position of like having the um, necklace and then also, you know, giving somebody the idol. Wow. But um, I mean, again, it, I'd say it, it probably doesn't not really matter. considering that he was willing yeah. to give his idol to Becky uh, anyway. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I don't, I don't think that was a thing, but I, I love that he said, I let Ozzy be the physical target in front of me so that it would kind of take the heat off of me. And I'm like, he's not wrong. He, he's really not wrong there. And yeah, and yeah. you know, just some of, some of the highlights from the reunion as well. Uh, Yule is one of the first people I remember ever hearing just verbalize this, uh, but it's so true. And it's something that like people know, but they don't really always like actually have in their head. But he says the key to the game is maximizing good luck and minimizing bad luck. Like that yeah. is the game um, because some people talk about the game like everything can be controlled, which is not the case. Some people talk yeah. about the game like it's all luck. Uh, what can you do? Um, mm -hmm. But it's 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 about controlling what you can and maximizing as much as you can and minimizing as much as you can. Um, and uh, and and I love you so much because he is the person that vo that verbalizes that. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, he also talks about um, the uh, uh, he talks about Becky being underappreciated. Uh, he says he didn't see himself as a puppet master, but trying to deny it only made him look sketchy. So he just ran with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th yeah, I thought that this was nice. And this is something I've always appreciated about Yule, which is that he like rather than just pumping himself up in his own game, which, you know, he'll point out like there's more that you didn't see to his game and the art of it. He has put in a lot of effort just to point to the fact that like Becky was making a lot of those decisions with me. Like she said, like Becky did a lot more in this game was more active. So it's nice to see him giving, <laughs> giving that credit, especially knowing how much work she put in, um, even though it clearly didn't translate to the jury. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't tra translate to Jeff again. <laughs> Jeff no. was like, I thought you were a tag along until I watched the, the uh, show back. And then, like Tan said earlier, <laughs> Jeff being like, Oh, I'm so sad Ozzy lost. <laughs> like, yeah. Jeff, like, Becky, what? who? Tell us how you really feel, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Adam says he promises vote to Yule to vote. If they voted out Penner, he would give him his vote. He would have voted for Ozzy otherwise, he says um and uh jenny regrets not pleading her case at tribal jeff says lesson learned speak up at tribal wow prof oh prophecy yeah. yeah yeah daggers um, <laughs> um and i just want to point out the best part of the reunion was uh seiku, seiku. uh wrote a <laughs> wrote a song about survivor and performed it but also yelled everybody sing <laughs> like you can't sing <laughs> oh, say cool. uh, <laughs> what a like this, it. Me so much. this was really interesting to me so instead of like an america's favorite or anything like that there's a vote for uh somebody to win a car um and the question is mm. who played the most clever game like that question is clearly intended to give Yule an edge, right? Uh, like it's not yeah. who's your favorite player, it's who played the most clever game. Clever. And the difference is less than 1% between Yule and Ozzy. This time Ozzy wins, which like, no, he didn't play a more clever so. game, but you know, <laughs> at least Ozzy gets something for That's his trouble, weird. right? Yeah, uh, that vote. Did, did they think Yule was gonna lose? Like it did feel rigged. Like did they think Yule was gonna lose, Ozzy's gonna win, then give Yule the, the car? I could just imagine a boardroom. What kind of car was it? 
I don't know. Oh, I don't but, know. But like whatever boardroom of executives is like, we need, we really want to come up with a good question. Like, no, not the best player, not the fan favorite. Like, let's go with the most clever one. That'll really spice things up for our brand. Like, I think that's, I feel like that might've been where the question started. Just like Sia determines the parameters of mm. Sia money. I think that the the automaker who shall not be named because we don't remember, they may or may not still exist. <laughs> They're not sponsored. Uh, is, it probably figured, <laughs> came up with that question because it did seem very particular and sh- also strange that Ozzy got so much of the vote. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm All sorry. Right. I'm still cracking up. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we do have uh, some questions here. Um, a lot of these uh, I did end up answering during the podcast, which is always a problem. Oh, man. We got ahead um, of the questions. We did. Um, but uh, there's definitely uh, some that we can do here. A um, uh, question from Nate, and this was a pretty popular question. Uh, if Nate Ozzie... from the season? No. Uh, <laughs> no. I, at least I don't think so. Uh, uh-huh. If Ozzy wins the season, how does he do on Winners at War? Is uh, well, we mm. assume Ozzy. We assume that Ozzy would be on Winners at War. Yes, that's the that assumption. Case. Yeah, I mean, that that would be a given. Um, mm. I mean, I again, these seasons go in one inner and out the other for me. But uh, I think Ozzy again, just like all of his subsequent seasons, have to has to rely on on winning more than more than anything yeah i mean that'd given, be my guess given ozzy's subsequent performances um yeah. i i personally have to imagine that he'd be a little bit sort of uh outclassed by some of these winners yeah that's yeah. a great way to I put mean, it i also wonder if we would have seen him come back all the times that he came back he probably doesn't return yeah he's oh, probably not a full-time oh, okay. player. yeah i mean like before yeah. winners at war right yeah. gotcha. and so i think that also would affect just how people would like perceive him maybe they wouldn't <gasps> see him as a threat if he's if he's going straight from cook islands to winners at war mm-hmm. maybe they wouldn't maybe th- maybe they wouldn't have asked him back because the Ozzy's answer at the reunion of saying like, he loved being out in nature and he almost mm. like was a little bit depressed getting back to regular the life. Concrete jungle. If, the concrete yes. jungle. Yes. If they would have asked him back as many times as a winner, I think he would have came. Yeah. Back. I think he would you know what I'm back. saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, he was, he, he tried for a while too. Like he went on American Ninja warrior. He did like mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like he was, he was down for, for, for anything. Um, yeah, so the question is, would the show have asked him back so many times if he had won? He pro- again, he's probably not a four time player, uh, yeah. but he's probably like a three time player. Right. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then uh, Robert uh, Charles also asked, um, how does Yule then perform on uh, like, say fans versus favorites? Um, and my answer to that would be, I don't think that Yule plays fans versus favorites in place of Ozzy. I don't think Yule comes back potentially ever. Uh, to be honest, right. um, I think oh, I think Yule yeah. is probably done with Survivor after uh, after Cook Islands if he doesn't win, because I think the only reason he came back was because of Winners at War. Winners at War, it's, yeah. It mm-hmm. seem it seems like it because just the fact that he was back and kind of getting back on on Twitter and getting engaged, you know, that was really notable. And I I just don't, yeah, I don't I don't see it either. But I I also don't think he would have done that well in. Well, in a, in a subsequent season, just because of the reputation that he built up, like as such a, a as an epic strategy, uh, a strategic player, you know. Uh, Anthony asks, how different is Ozzy's legacy if this is his only time playing? If this if he is a one time player and he wins this season after the immunity run run, um, I think it's probably like because Ozzy had a legendary reputation right away right uh for a mm-hmm. while then he came back and he was like uh and then he came back again and it was like uh um <laughs> and so if he if this is his only time i think he probably has a legendary reputation for a while then when we see a couple of other players go on immunity runs and win um you know worlds apart happens and you know a couple of other times uh i think i think that has also started to, to diminish the the immunity run wins uh i think eventually we look back and we're like yeah it was great but we've, we've seen it a couple times now um yeah. but it's still probably better than his current reputation yeah see i don't know i i again i personally don't know what ozzy's current reputation is i i tried my thought process and um in attacking this like rewatch was to 
uh, my, of course, my nostalgia of it being the first uh, Survivor season I watched live. I'm going to go off of that. I'm going to rewatch it. Then I wanted to kind of get more takes. I wanted to try and avoid as many hot takes <laughs> going in because I, I wanted to kind of form my own opinions. But again, just from the rewatch, I, I was like, wow, uh, Ozzy's actually kind of, this is kind of arrogant. This is a, a bad look. Um, and again, he was lucky that he was an underdog and went on that underdog run because um, I don't think if they would have given him more screen time, it would have been gone well for him. Again, like you guys pointed out, yeah as we see <laughs> so <laughs> i mean i don't i don't think he would have had a problem with that either i think that it was just again like you pointed out many times mari just like the the way that um it didn't fit the story to have yeah. you know ozzy be this jerk which yes. did fit the stories <laughs> for seasons after so <laughs> we go on to see that but i don't yeah i don't know where ozzy's reputation is now he has a lot of fans um, only fans shout out to Ozzy. Uh, you subscribe to that, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's a, Mari. That you didn't okay. know about this, Mari? No, no, I thought no. <laughs> well, now she does. That's you right. You're, you're probably better off for it. Too. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we will be. Uh, I will be doing the. I'll also be filling in for Rob on the uh, the feedback show, the patron feedback show. Uh, this weekend with Matt Stewart and Katie uh, Treganing. Uh, if uh, you guys uh, want uh, us to go into some more questions, uh, you can find it mm -hmm. there. Um, we're gonna go for uh, gonna answer some more of the questions that we got from this uh, feedback form. Um, but for now, let's go into the survey results. Yeah. Are you guys ready for some survey results? Yeah, um, yes. First question here: uh, Who in this season is your most valuable player? The MVP of the season what do you guys think who won the mvp award parvati right oh i mean duh. i'm gonna I'll, I'll go with yule matt is correct uh it is yule what 60 oh, 65 percent of the vote went to yule uh parvati actually only three percent she was in wow. fourth place That's there was rude. a tie for second below yule above parvati uh and pinner correct okay yeah ding, ding, ding. all right oh yeah okay okay all right for this okay yeah you're right mm -hmm. i i should have thought a little bit more <laughs> yeah and i think i think also you have to take into account like this it was season, for this season yeah Harvey. yes yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um which one-time player would you most like to see come back and play again in a future season so guessing what tough. the audience said and you can also give your own opinion as well. I mean, I for the record, I agree. Yule is my MVP for the season. Uh huh. Yeah. Agree. Yes. 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 Um, no. I'll actually. I don't think anyone said this, but I'll go with Becky. I would have liked to see Beck. I would like to see Becky. Uh -huh. I, maybe the time is coming on, but I would have liked to see Becky back just to see what that would look like and how mm -hmm. things would be different. Also, Jenny was really interesting. But yes, that's what I was about to say. I would like to see Jenny, but yeah. I'm a guess people said Adam. <laughs> no, I think if I had to guess, maybe guess Cowboy. What the people said. All Ooh, right. So first place with 36% of the vote, Nate. Oh, oh good for him. Like Nate, yeah. Um, wow. yeah. <laughs> Cowboy was in second place with 25% and Becky mm -hmm. was in third with 14%. Oh, um, look at that. I gotta say, I, I would also, Nate. I would definitely like to see Nate. I would like to see Cowboy. Mm -hmm. I would like to see Becky. I'd like to see all three. All of them. three of them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I see. Again, you have. There are so many people you could choose from. In seriously, this season, to be exactly. quite honest, I, I would like to see Seiku. I would like to see uh, <laughs> Stephanie. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be mad to see uh, Cece. <laughs> like, um, you know. All right. Brad. Um, Brad, yeah, Brad was fun. He just Ooh, disappeared. Brad would have been so good. Brad was a, like uh, a big presence yeah. in the first part of the season, then just disappeared from the show. Yeah. Um, all right. Which name in this list made you pause and think to yourself, wait, who's that? Uh, mm, I, my guess, my guess for this one would be CC. Right. Yeah. I'm a, didn't have yeah. a lot going on. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't get much. I'm gonna say Rebecca. Wow. With 38% yeah, of the vote, Cece. 
was the it, number Matt. one answer. Um, oh my god, am I Tarrant? Am I now like the the voice of the people? The voice of the almost? people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rebecca was in third place with nine percent of votes. Stephanie, uh, in second huh. place with twenty two percent of votes. Aww. Yeah. Matt's just glad he's finally winning something against me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right who was the most underrated player of the season i mean becky becky yeah i think you have to you must have with, with 34 percent of the vote becky was the most underrated player uh mm -hmm. followed by parvati and then penner yeah uh, okay the I think penner okay. is rated yeah, the, yeah so here, here we go. Rated. this one this one is interesting uh the kelly wentworth award for best pre-merge boot Ooh, best best pre uh, boot. Hmm. Uh, you know what i guess i'll go with billy garcia mm. i mean not in the same way as kelly wentworth but that's mm. you know, that's not the question i know yeah i guess uh jp oh okay uh with 51 percent of the vote landslide decision here cowboy Ooh, cowboy. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I forgot he was pre merge. Pre mm. ah. What a legacy. Dang, Billy, cowboy. Billy was like in second cowboy. place Yay. with uh with 24%. Um I um I think I I think I, I would say people. in terms of, if if we're judging best by like best character, yeah, it's probably cowboy. Um yeah. Jenny is actually in third with 10% of the vote. If we're doing the Kelly <laughs> Wentworth award, I think that goes to Jenny, right? Yes, yes, but Jenny was not pre-merge though. That's well, the... she was pre-merge. Well, that's a good point. She yeah, was on the, the jury, this... but she wasn't. On she was on the, the jury. She, she didn't make the merge. Yeah, it was a. Weird oh my merge. god! Yes, right. yes. Three people from the jury did not make them. Oh my god! <laughs> There's so much to remember. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of choices. <laughs> um, okay, so here's a big one. Out of the forty seasons, where would you rank the winner? Yule. Oh. Mm. Um, for me, I, th I definitely think he's top 10 for me personally, because I, there's a lot of survivor winners I do not like. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and again, this, I, I love this season. This season holds a very, very special place in my heart. So, uh, for me personally, I definitely top 10 easy, um, the survey it's easy because it's, it's weird because the season falls at 19 mm -hmm. um but i feel like you is such a better winner than that so let's i'm gonna just i i and again i didn't listen to all of the the, the 40 rankings sorry guys um so <laughs> i'm gonna say around 12. Hmm. matt what do you think okay we're gonna go with 11. Wow. Um, so, uh, so I would also say, I would say top 10 for myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Easy for you all. Um, Personally. The, uh, the audience said that uh, Yule Kwan um, is 11.42. Uh, Woo! Round down. <laughs> really, Let's Matt. go. Really? You oh. really just Oh my gosh, I had a vision. I it, it was the dreams. Booty. I saw the numbers. There was a one and another oh. one and Amex was there and that was it. Yeah. Soak this in, Matt. Soak this in. It's a six and five point four two uh that's to it. go together and that's mm -hmm. how you beat Rob Mariano. Uh, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how you do it. You Kwan second in the overall ongoing winner rankings based on average score. Uh, second only to Kim Spradlin right now. Um, oh, right. Kim Spradlin rated what, what, a 5.88. Uh -huh. uh, Yule in second place, 11.42. Rob uh, in third place, 11.55. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Just beats out Boston there you Rob. Go. There you Good go. placement so far. Yeah, oh, I like great it. placement. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah, love it mm -hmm. for you. All. Um, do you feel the season placed too low, too high, or just right? Could I? I just want to jump in and say just right. That I, my answer really? for this is always just right, only because the way that the voting worked, it kind of, like people voted the way that they did for this a reason. True. I will say just right. Um, at Mari, if you're mad. At that. <laughs> um again i'm i'm shocked where it's at 19 
but then I'm not going to be the type that's like, oh, what about this season? What about this season? What about that season? I just would have thought personally, when I did my rankings, yeah. this would have been easily in the top 10, but Same. that's just me. Same. Yeah. For me, so it, for me, high. it's, for me, it's too, uh, we all, yeah. You know what it's, what does it mean? Too low or too, if it's too low too high? or is it too high? Did it rank too low? Right. Because it's too low. It's too low in the sense that it's low on the rankings, but it's too high in the sense that it's too high a number. Oh, I think it's too low. Oh, 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 I think too low, low right, means low, that you think low. it should be yeah higher. Higher I mean, meaning yes. meaning better placement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, um, uh, Rob is twitching somewhere in that right now. <laughs> this is I rough. I for me this was always one of my favorite seasons. Um, but yeah. over time. Uh, having not watched it, I heard a lot of, you know, complaints about it. And I was kind of like, ah, okay, you know, there are other seasons that I like a, a, a lot as well. Uh, having gone back and, and rewatched it and gone through this experience, I did the same for Guatemala. Guatemala was always one of my, you know, sort of uh, dark horse underdogs, uh, favorite mm -hmm. seasons. Um, I, I feel like Guatemala stood up to me as well. Um, but I loved I loved going back and rewatching this. I enjoyed doing yeah. it. I looked forward to continuing to watch it. I I love the season just as much as I did when I first watched it. I really think yeah. this is a great season and it's one of my favorites. I, I would at least go top 10, if not top five, personally, that's, that's my own personal opinion. Um, yeah. it's, I just love, I just love the story. I love Yule. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's great. Yeah. You know, like that, the other piece of it too, I just, I want to, I'll, I'm sticking with just right, but to make an argument for too low, I think a lot of people just look at the twist, the initial twist, and I see yeah. a lot of comments, quote unquote, race wars mm -hmm. and talking yeah. about the race twist as something horrible and never should happen. And that definitely dragged the season mm -hmm. down when I don't think it had any business to drag it down the way it was executed. Could have been better, but the season was so good despite all of that. Yeah, I was. Definitely. I really think, like, honestly, again, it it there was no function for that that twist, and and re, if you rewatch it again, not nothing really problematic happened. Nothing problematic happened. Maybe again because they didn't give us a lot of backstory or anything like that. So, I don't know. I don't. I I. I'm just not again. I'm, I will never be incensed by this twist because to me it it represents more diversity. Yeah. Well, the audience said that it's placed just right. Uh, Thirty-seven percent said just that right. Uh, Thirty-six percent said it's too low. Um, so just a, uh, just one oh, percent below yeah. that, and then twenty-five percent said too high. So uh, pretty all over the place there. It's that's a yeah. decently <laughs> even split. Uh, <laughs> it's a very divisive season, I guess, uh, yeah, which is like, not super yeah. surprising. Um, okay. Big one here. Uh, prediction. Which season do you think is up next in the rankings? Mari? Uh, I, again, it's me and Survivor. It's I don't have it on the brain as much as I have Big Brother. But uh, I, I, a lot of people tweeted us suggestions like, how is this? You know, so maybe uh, Cal wrong. I don't know. Maybe Cal that wrong. one. Yeah. Mm, yes. That's a good one. Um, Philippines. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, well, the audience has predicted San Juan del Sur. Uh, they oh. think San Juan del Sur will be the next. Uh, only a percentage below that, 22% of the vote, uh, they did say Korong. They think Korong might be next. Um, and then in third place, uh, with 17% of the vote, uh, Palau. They think Palau might be next. Mm. Oh, um, mm. y'all haven't done Palau yet. <laughs> haven't done Palau yet. Um, all right, so uh, so let's let's do it. Let's reveal the 18th best season of Survivor as voted by the fans of Rob as a podcast. The 18th best season of Survivor is Survivor Palau. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Do, do, could be dinging. Right. I don't have a ding. Um, <laughs> ding. That was it. Yeah. There we go. That was, it was, I uh, couldn't even tell the difference. Uh, so uh, my good friend Lita, Lita Brillman and uh, yes, Chantel Lita. will be joining Rob yes. next week, oh. uh, next Wednesday to discuss everything awesome. Palau. Um, so uh, how do you guys feel about that? Where is, is Palau a good, uh, good place here at 18? I do not like that season. So I'm no, so, same. 
I am so surprised that it beat this one out. So that's awful. I, yeah, I probably had it lower. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I I mean, you're you're probably gonna get this from the people that wanted to do the Cook Islands podcast. Uh, but uh, but I did prefer right. Cook Islands to Palau. Yeah, um, I do think I do think there's something compelling about Palau in how unique it turned out to be uh given you know the just decimation of one tribe Mm -hmm. um but uh but you know for me that one never really survived the rewatch uh you know it was kind of fun the first time but then after i saw it once i was like yeah i got it which to be fair (laughs) some people have said is true about cook islands um but was not true for me I, i enjoyed it on the rewatch um so you know, uh, I think, you know, it's I, I can understand why it's here. Uh, number 18 in the middle ish area of the rankings. Um, yeah. But uh, I do remember that people really loved it at the time. I remember at the time, you know, I was pretty really? young, but I remember people being like, this is uh, the best season of Survivor. This is amazing. Um, Tom is amazing. And, you know, all of that. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm curious to see where Tom ranks as a winner. But yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I didn't. uh at the time, you know, this was Cook Islands was the most controversial season that's yeah. changed. So time things happen. Things, <laughs> things happen. Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> All right. So that's what we have for you about four and a half hours in. Uh, I hope this Wait. isn't too different than the normal. I uh, look, here's here's my problem is that I was like, I'll probably be quicker than Rob, and then people will be mad at me that I'm too quick, and now I'm gonna be worried that people are gonna be mad at me for being too long. Uh I'm just I'm very thorough and I can't help myself sometimes. Uh I think I think that's true of all of us here in this podcast. Yeah. I think we yeah. all three of us are like we love to be <laughs> thorough and we just couldn't couldn't leave anything on the table. Uh there are all sorts of details that we always I'm we very always detail like, for, oriented. For, yeah for us in the wrestling or half up it's like for me i'm like okay what are they wearing what's the look like let's break always. it all down all the little details along the way mari has we, she gets in all the history all of it so look we get it keep and but if anyone's still listening thank you for listening to our yeah. little three <laughs> yes. voices for so long yeah um and this is this is honestly pretty representative of the survivor podcast that uh that I, that I do the survivor updates that I did during winners at war um it's uh, I just I like to go through very very detailed uh and and just kind of comb through that's that's uh that's sort of my style hopefully you enjoyed this Hopefully you thought it was uh, it was a fun sort of uh, little a uh, little bit of variety to these rankings to have uh, me host one. Hopefully it wasn't too different or too uh, upsetting for anyone. Um, yeah, but, people are uh, people yeah. are probably upset about the lack of impressions here. But I do <laughs> I, I do apologize for the lack of impressions. It is. Yeah, it's uh, without again without the live feeds, it's uh, it's it's tough. My impressions are never uh, <laughs> never meant to be uh, you know accurate or anything they're just meant to be like rhythmic you know they're meant to be an impression of the person's essence um Mm -hmm. and i just can't get that through the through the regular show um so uh here's what we've got coming We've got Why Yule One with David Bloomberg and Jessica Lewis. Uh, make sure you tune in for that podcast if you want to know why Yule won. Uh, we've also got an Outwit, Outplay, Outlist with Mike Bloom, Shannon Gus, and Sasha Joseph uh, ranking the best merge tribe names. This one was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Aichu combined... Tonga. Aichu... It was Aichu Aichu Tonga. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have uh, the RHAP Rewind that I also did with Mari, uh, and oh. Chappelle joined us for that. We talked about the fantastic show on the Fox reality channel, Solitary, mm-hmm. um, so great. which uh, <laughs> a different Survivor JP uh, actually competed on right. in season two. Uh, Still don't remember which one he is. But... Yes. <laughs> nobody does <laughs> um so check that out that was a lot of fun it's a really fun show uh so make sure you don't miss that one uh we've got a 90 day fiance podcast happily ever after uh season six episode six recap with puya and liana and make sure you become a patron of rob as a podcast at rob as a podcast.com slash patron um at the this is the the beginning of the month it's the the perfect time to 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 join up 
because uh, you'll get the whole month um, and uh, you'll have access to the feedback show that I will be doing again over the weekend, answering more questions about Cook Islands, uh, going into all kinds of niche scenarios, I'm sure, uh, that, uh, that uh, are fun to go into. Um, and there's also a new buddy program, a buddy system. Um, <laughs> Come on, you, Boston Rob. Yes. If you refer <laughs> a patron, you both will get a gift from RHAP. So if they uh, sign up to be a patron um, and, uh, you know, they say, hey, this person sent me, uh, then uh, you'll both get a, a, a gift from RHAP. Uh, make sure you also follow us on social media at Rob as a podcast on Twitter or at uh, or and or at uh, RHAP Grams on Instagram. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren, uh, or on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taren Armstrong, where I also ramble about things and play video games. Um, Matt, where can people find you? You know where you could find me. You could find me at Matt Scott GW. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm also the co-host of a podcast. I don't know if either of you have heard of it, but it's called the wrestling wrap up and <laughs> we're kind of coming back soon for season That's two, right. season two, mm -hmm. uh, which maybe Mari knows something about. I don't know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, check that out at wrestling wrap up on Twitter, hashtag wrestling wrap up, uh, and other places where we'll pop up but yeah thanks for i'm glad that i could be here and mari i'll just hand it over to you where could we Please. find you uh you can find me on twitter at mari talks too much that's too like the number two and like matt uh so subtly put we're coming back Woo! we Woo! will no longer be on hiatus no more yadis uh, we are coming nice. back in about two weeks, so keep a lookout if you're in the Rob Has Awesome Patrons uh, Facebook group. Sam will post, or, you know, Sam, RHAP, they'll post the, the schedule for the week, and you will see us on the schedule in about two weeks. So we're, yeah. we're happy to get back, I talk about wrestling. Again, if you do not watch wrestling, you can still listen to us because we want to uh, cater and aim to anybody, uh, casual fans, lapsed fans. Uh, laps fans or people who are hardcore so come check check us out at the wrestling wrap up um podcast <laughs> yeah. all right well thank you guys so much for joining us here on this uh this this long journey uh going oh, so back long. over cook islands um again just such such a uh, an interesting season um that, that plays out so so fun in, in such a fun way um with with great characters uh i hope that you uh, maybe 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 you found a, a new way to enjoy the season through this podcast or maybe yes. you listened to this whole thing and you were like these people do not know what they're talking about because it sucks Fair. and they enjoyed it. And that means that they suck too. Um, so uh, uh, we are, uh, we'll look, we're on the, the Rob that sucks podcast. So um, it's, it's only fitting. Um, but thank you guys again so much for, uh, for sticking with us here. Uh, I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, we, we did Rob uh, justice and um, you know, let us know what you thought. Uh, and you'll be back with Rob next week. Bye. 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 Bye.